Hey, Dark Humility here. Today, we will be doing Barbarian Rags for Riches, Part 3. The bonus round for Advanced Tactics. What happens? How do you actually get some of those items that will transpire to you being able to farm Travancool and to farm bosses easier? And... Of course, we'll show those farms completely in action throughout most of the video. And then, the hope is that we can show you guys what setups, what early game setups are actually capable of farming the promised land. Travancool. If you guys didn't, of course, see Barbarian Rags for Riches 1 and 2, we have a level 76 Barbarian here. Oops. Oh yeah, I already made this game earlier. No problem. Alright, so level 76 Barbarian. These are our stats and of strength and decks to wear. Various pieces of gear. Of course, then we have Rest into Vitality. You know, almost 200 magic find, 63 FCR. So this is our magic find setup. It's kind of where we left off. We got all the way through the end of hell. We showed off all of the different spots you can farm. We're actually gonna do some of the actual farming now. Normally I don't actually do this on a rags to riches guide, but the barbarian has a lot of low mid tier options that really allow him to show off uh, really effective farming and a lot of people it, I think it's harder to visualize on the barbarian and maybe some classes how you actually can Do some of those things at a reasonable pace. So I'd like to actually see if we could do that here in part three Of course, uh, we're gonna be using a lot of magic find stuff and some basic FCR and just some other basic items to be farming here the end of act five Eldritch and Pindle for a while and we're going to farm them until we get to about level 80. And the main goal is to make sure the mercenary has maximum res with his current gear that he has found. Uh, we have found some pretty crazy things, as you can see here, um, already. Which is, you know, par for the course in one of these videos. We'll find some kinds of crazy things here and there. And then what we're going to be trying to do after we get to about 80 with these farms and um, possibly finding bases doing these. We're also gonna do the Hell Countess farm quite a bit to farm some of those runes for some of those key rune words. Once again, the goal here will actually be to transition to something like Whirlwind or Berserk for trap farming. If we do maintain a uh, War Cry, which we might if we get upgrades for it, we can of course continue to show you guys that as well. And also to show you guys some other tactics you can use for boss farming once you get a tiny bit more gear. And that will indeed be the goal of Barbarian Racks, which is part three. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the series, though, up until this point. All right, so let's resume the farm we ended off on in part two. Okay. Use the teleport staff to go directly in the middle of the mob packs. Go to town. And what we're going to actually be leveling up now until we hit 80. Another reason why we're leveling up is to get more points and a fine item here. As you can see, fine item is very, very effective. Wow, we have some pretty decent uh, rare items here. You can continue to sell them for gold, of course. That gold can continue to fund using the teleport staff for farms like Mephisto or Endorial. Just keeping your stuff alive in general. The mercenary is very tanky now, but... You might die when farming the Pendle, but... Helping in the middle of Pendle skin is never safe. This is definitely something I wouldn't recommend doing on Hardcore until you're a bit tankier, but if you're like me and you're on the Softcore, it's 
doing this should be pretty good. Um, I don't remember if you can actually make obedience in that. I don't think so. I don't think so. Let me let me actually just check real quick. You always want to make sure you check what bases are possible on any item. Uh, yeah, it's pull arms and spears. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it's. I think I was thinking about Project Diablo 2 there. Either way. Not necessary, not super important, either way. Good afternoon. Alright, anyway, we got some of those rares. Off to the races, yeah. So most of part three is gonna be farming. Showing off farms. Using the various techniques that become available to us as we advance. Jesus. As we advance our items. My goodness. Ugh. I really want this experience though. There's lugging Jews right now though. Not ideal. The thing to note is you always want to make sure you use find item on your swap with the most plus the skills until you get some items with magic find. I don't know what we're gonna find today. We have a decent amount of magic find. Gotta farm a lot of Countess, but the idea, of course, is to advance the barb further and hopefully show you guys more of those tactics here in a final part three. That is the idea. Um, do -do -do. What's up, Greg Wu? What's up, Brambles? Off to the races. What's up, man? Indeed, indeed. Can I help you? Like I said, technically, you could just stop at part. Too, because that's where we describe all of the farms you're going to want to do to get rich. Technically, we already found riches as well. And by that point, you know, typically that's where we end off. But it's nice to be able to visualize exactly how Barb advances from there. Um, Barb is just so underestimated for starting out. It's one of those things where you really need to show is capable of impossible. Yes, yeah, so you have so much gold we can get. Let's see, what level are we? Yeah, see, we're already already gaining on level 77 here. It's not a huge surprise. What's up, guys? How are we doing? What's up, Twitch chat? More barbarian content today. Don't even F for him, but it's close to something we can use. Very close indeed. So there's a lot of bases we're actually looking for, so as you do a farm like this, you know, things to look out for are runes that, you know, you make some of those insane rune words. Things like, uh, oh, this physical immunity. I think what we might get here at the end is, uh, maybe once we hit like 80 or 81 is some means to deal with that. Best way to deal with that would be to get Grim Ward at least early on. Salutations. Talked about that near the end of part two, of course, though. So... Of course, if you want to see my current skill tree, you should also check it out towards the end of part two as well. Yeah, things we should be looking for are bases for rewards, like a four-socketed bow, 
for harmony potentially that can actually speed us up a bit here um we can also look for a five socketed monothereal elite spear or pull on base And then of course you can also look for a four socketed or a thorial sword that can get four sockets for oath. We're also gonna be looking for various runes. Wow, 14 all res ring. That could be useful actually, uh, a little bit later. It's actually really cool. Good find. But there's also just a lot of other uniques that could potentially show up here. And, you know, obviously there's insane things we can get on top of what we found already, like Ariats, um, other IK pieces, uh, possibly Angelic Amulet, there's some sets of uniques. So we're kind of looking for all these things. And... I can't. I can't. Oops. Trying to do it as much as possible here. Ooh, here we go. As you can see though, there's a lot of potential things. We're gonna be a little more strict though in what we're keeping now. We actually have some decent items though. That's definitely gonna be here here. I don't see myself ever using that. That is a really cool item we found in part one though. Um, let me see if... Yeah, so we're going to demonstrate the use of some slow items, too. We're just going to do a few things um, didn't do in part two. So this is all about, like, advanced strats and getting to an advanced farming stage. What's up, Monster Wind? How you doing? Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. I think we have enough emeralds, actually. So yeah, we're, we're going to be doing quite a bit of farming here. The beginning of this part of three and it's pretty much all that's going on you know we've already advanced the game as much as we need to to get rich you do not have to do bail unless you absolutely want access to terror zones this early on i don't recommend it though because it's not going to get you rich as fast as the rest of these methods um and you don't yet need until you get to a much higher level to experience either really isn't going to be better what you're currently doing unless you enter someone else's like 96 terror zone game. But you're not going to be capable of doing that solo. And we'll do this of course. Continue talking about the talking through what we're doing here, talking here what we're finding. Some key stuff. Always going to be good. Always going to be good. Just eating dinner right now. Very nice, Monster Wind. Very nice. Glad to hear that, man. That's a nasty ring. That's just par for the course. For some reason, in this Rags to Riches guide, uh, rings just have not materialized whatsoever. Not rare rings, at least. Um, I found some decent blue ones. Yeah, give me something like better. Uh... Yeah. That is a multi-shot first. Yeah. That hurts a lot. That really hurts. I just use some of these temporarily, honestly, so you don't burn through our jubes. Always good to think about things like that. Try and do some working there. To no avail though, to no avail. Let's see. Um, that, that, that actually hurts quite a bit. Since we're ants, we either have to go like really deep in the corner. We have to stand right outside. Like this so we don't die behind that pillar. Interestingly enough, even if he's immune for the time being, because uh, we don't have a point into Grimward, we're not going to focus that yet. Interestingly enough, though, we could um, still get a lot of experience off of his minions, so it's still worth killing the minions no matter what. 
Transportation. Oh man. I'm gonna wanna at least get like two more levels so the Merc has max res. Max fire res at minimum is important for Travancore. But ideally you actually get the mercenary some stacked fire res. Uh, if you find a guardian angel, that'd be incredibly helpful for the mercenary specifically. Because you're building a good Travancore build. Since you already have Crown of Thieves on top of that, um, pretty much almost have all those good ingredients. What are you eating for dinner, monster one? Sounds like good food. Doesn't seem like he's stone skinned much of the time, maybe like 20% of the time. I don't know. It's definitely not ideal, but I think it'll be more important we actually get a percent chance to find items here. At least for the time being. Good afternoon. You're definitely gonna want Grim Ward though, at least by the time that you uh Maybe get to Travancool. You can sacrifice a body for that for Ismail if you want. I don't know if I recommend it though. I would just skip him if he's Fizzamine. We'll kind of throw off a bit here. By the way, Rags for Riches Part 1 is on YouTube now. Part 2 is finished being uploaded. And we'll be up on there probably by tonight or tomorrow morning. This will probably take another day though. Uh, so you can always tell when he's fizzling. Can you see those bases? Those are nice bases potentially. Yeah, look at that. Wow. It's a. Uh, Actually, pretty nuts. See, this is this would be riches right here, just by farming a Pindle or Eldritch or something similar. That would totally, totally be riches right there. Absolutely. Thurial, eight hundred defense lacquered plate, very high defense death armor. If you use the perfect topaz towel full recipe. Um, get three or four sockets, even two sockets early ladder. Um, those trade for a lot, so you know it's it's interesting to see just how many things you can find. Um, as long as you can make it to the I end of the game, already on the tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken game. As long as you can make it to the end of the game on the barbarian, there. That's a very high defense of the real armor. It's an elite armor. That's pretty much best in the slot. Works very well for Fortitude. And similar rewards. Archesis. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the Cult of Zen, Andrew C. Ah, oh, your friend owes you food, so he got it. Nice, nice. Glad you're there, man. Yeah, so I now have a Rags for Riches command. Uh, we have the full Rags for Riches series now on YouTube, at least part one of the barb, so. I, can I just put them all into tell that. I'll be your best friend Look in this for at camp. that! Wow! See, this is another thing. This is really strong, actually, for like a bit early game to Sorceress as well. We're gonna find a lot of stuff doing this farm. And then of course, you know, the idea is to farm certain items ideally, but uh, the truth being is that there's a number of different ways you can get them, so hopefully we can get them at a reasonable time frame. Do our best out here. Good afternoon. Dax TV, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the Colt Xander State. If this was for Warcry, that'd be insane. Close though. 
Look at this Eth Rager switch. That's really cool. Um, definitely really cool stuff. We could actually use it on our current setup, but then we'll lose some damage. Uh, we can gain some life and res though doing this if you wanted to. Lose damage and cannot be frozen though. But it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Yeah, we talked about some bases we want. Um, want some Lum runes, maybe some Aya runes. Uh, a pull rune and a Mal rune potentially as well to do some other rune words. We can already make obedience. I just need to find some kind of white elite spear uh, that can get five sockets or a pull rune. Or just a five socket and run straight up. Like I said, you know, you can definitely find bases here. This is a good spot to find them. Um, you can also find them like running an area like the pit, and you can even find them farming countess. So, uh, we might find them at any point here. Right now, the main goal is to level up while looking for some other items. Oh god. <laughs> okay, I used the tube there. Um, mana burn. Yeah, that's uh, that's painful. All right, so what we're gonna want now is increased find item chance. So, like I said, really want to make sure you get that decent find item level. If you haven't gotten it already, you could have gotten it before this for sure. Sacrifice some damage while pushing. I just want to show you guys like some max damage push there. There's a lot of things you can do. Or we still have two respects, so hopefully we can get to that berserk uh, whirlwind barb stage here. Um, show you guys some other things you can do as well. You can also find like a uh, six socketed sword. Six socketed sword potentially for unbending will. That's another thing we could potentially try to make. There's a lot of options, but all these options are going to take some serious farming. At any rate, we will get there as we can. Wow, that's pretty good. Um, you know, I I wonder if we should actually try to wear the Alder's boots, maybe? It's not like we need more health at this point. I just put points into strength so I can kind of wear everything. A coward's hiding place. Just in case. And I can make use of some of these points into strength here. Elder's boots are faster than walk boots. They will make things like farm and count us faster. And uh, might need to use like one of our items granting us strength to wear them, but it's okay. Yeah, there's a lot of good items here. Still picking up all the same items for the most part. Same items for gold. Pretty much all wear items now can be valuable though, so it's really easy to make gold. You're definitely at the point in the game where that's the case. One thing to note is that if you just want to increase your health and you want to help out your team or maybe yourself on hardcore, you can try to farm two Warcry sticks there in hell from Hell Mala or Anya by going in and out of the portals. And she sells those very frequently, including um, other three Warcry items, and you can get three to Warcry sticks. I'm not really going to focus that because that's not like super important for the Rax for Witches farm, but that is a very key farm you can do. I don't think I mentioned that at the end of part two. Very tanky. Could also use the blood tree stump though, so that's actually a pretty cool thing we can do. I've already found some things that hold some promise here. So 
So a little self found means that you found all the items yourself. So it means that, well, in the case of this barbarian, yeah, that also can mean that this barbarian um, started from nothing. So there's no items. This is a completely untwinked. That'd be the technical term, which means that you know you just go through the game and gear yourself up for whatever you find. But still, a soul found just means no trading. No free items and no items from other people. You could have a multiple character solo soul found if you want. There's a, there's a lot of different ways to do solo soul found. That's a pretty good uh, Highland Blade there. Good afternoon. Okay. Um, not here. Some uses of taunt again. I like taunt. Taunt's kind of cool. This is a six socketed champion X. But unfortunately, you can't make a unbending will on that. That'd be kind of cool if you could, though. Not quite. It's a lot of bases you're gonna find, but that's not what we're looking for. Not one of the ones we're looking for here. A coward's Even if it was five sockets, it wouldn't be a pull arm or spear for obedience. Oh man. Of course, remember, you know, if you're doing this for real, you can always uh, trade for a base. If you're just struggling to find one particular base. Um, since cows isn't really your forte, base finding Hello. slightly more difficult on the Barbarian than it is on some other classes. So you can take advantage of your strengths here and then you can also leverage them to trade uh, for these bases if you do have trouble of course. Not real content. Alright. Yeah, it just means you find all the items yourself, man. That's just all it means, but there's different types of it, though. A coward's What's up, bros? How you doing? So you can also work the other bodies too. Maybe find a you find a base that way. You have some decent item find percentage, but like I said, you kind of want to get closer to fifty percent if you can. I can't um, carry anymore. As I believe I mentioned at the end of I am overburdened. Part one, or at some point in part one, or sorry, not part one, part two. I'm a scene horker now. Yep. Pretty much a full fledged Afternoon. farmer now. But, there's other ways to farm too. Remember, you can also farm Shank if you're doing this. There are some frustrating aspects about Shink, but I mean, that's about it. 
That's kind of interesting there. I wonder how many sockets that has. It's a giant thresher. That base can totally work for obedience if it's a uh, five socket and on F. Or F even. Oh no, not F, sorry, we're using an outer cell. It's not a thrill. Now just needs to roll five sockets. Oh, I rolled one socket. Yeah, it's a pull arm. <laughs> Definitely something we were hoping to find at the here at the moment. Not doing trav yet. Um, we're trying to do these other farms here to kind of find more items for trav. Um, to make travel a little bit easier, or to give us more options for farming trap. And then we're gonna farm trap. That's the goal of part three here. We've already uh, we've already shown off all of the farms and things like that. So honestly, the standard rags to riches video is kind of already done at this point. It's a uh, really want to help maybe the viewers visualize how you can actually farm things on a barbarian and how you actually uh, how it actually looks once you get some of this like somewhat mid tier gear here. Um, it's going to take a whole nother session to do, though. <clears throat> Barb is, uh... Barb is underestimated, and Barb is not easy, but... Gonna get more levels, gonna get a fine item, gonna get a reward. Yeah, see that's the thing is you know, I was saying that if we found a dwarf star, right, or we found like a GA, there's a lot of things that can help us out here, but it's also about finding um various socket bases as well. I thought it saw a so Ogorax is a pull arm that actually cannot get five sockets. That's no good. Um, definitely look at that socket table though. If you want to know what can max out at five sockets. There's a few of them floating around. I think we have it in our base items resource on max roll as well. Uh, here we go. It's an items. Yeah, it's not bad. I can't carry anymore. Yeah, see, we're getting a lot of bases. The key is to get, like, particular kind of bases, though. D4 barb is greater than D2 barb. Good afternoon. I would, you know, be inclined to agree, agree in terms of uh, progression speed. Um, I played the D4 barb. It honestly didn't even feel that bad, and it felt um, pretty satisfying to start with. I think the only character that didn't feel very satisfying to start in the very beginning was Druid on D4. The D2 Druid definitely feels way more satisfying to start with than the D4 one currently. Um, <laughs> it's not even close. It, it, it's the end game that the Druid tends to struggle in when it comes to the uh, the Druid on. Can I help you? Uh, D2, so it's probably the opposite of D4. I think they also made the Druid more of a support character on D4 as well. So, like, doing it solo is... I liked Rogue. Rogue was pretty fun. I am overburdened. Rogue is pretty fun. Okay. And remember, if you're like throw barb or something, you know, you can definitely keep looking at those rare items. You know, we could even do something like throw barb if we happen to come across like a lacerator or something, but otherwise it's probably gonna be too slow compared to most methods here. There's definitely some options here. Once again, all these Rags for Riches videos are solo battle net. 
and the scripted do tend to uh, find a lot of really good things, but what we exactly encounter depends. If you're finding that you're lacking uniques in sets, it's still probably better to farm bosses than to do what we're doing here. Uh, but it's not bad, especially if you're playing hardcore. We'd probably want to do this over bosses, at least Elders and Shink. Because they're a little bit safer. You can kind of see where more of the monsters are that are actually going to kill you. Range Rogue sucked? Yeah, a little bit. I can see that. Melee Rogue was pretty awesome though, so on a D4, so that's not a problem. Such a strong support class, though. Kendall's still hitting us in the physical. It's gonna get the experience off the minions there. So we're already 77 and a half, so yeah, this is, as you can see, very easy way here to get leveled up. In all three difficulties. You know, I may have mentioned that before, but definitely the case now. Oh, really? That's a little unfortunate. You could, you could use a guardian angel. Oh, that's a five MS small term. I'll take it. IMS Small Charm is giving us some useful stats here. Uh, a coward's hiding place. We could get that bigger aura off of Harmony at some point. That'd be cool as well. And then you notice you can also hit up the armor racks and the weapon racks of Lower Cross as well for some basic. Uh, some basic weapons. It's another strat we can try here as well at some point. Edge bow. Isn't edge bow max out at four sockets? I believe so. We can maybe get our four socket of bow this way. How much dex does it require though? It's uh, 43 dex. Hmm. We still have some kind of a dex large charm, don't we? Yeah, we do. Okay. Not a big deal then. Maybe we'll make a harmony. It really doesn't take the most expensive room words. You can farm them all yourself, but it does take some extra time now. And the barb never was the fastest farmer in the universe, but it doesn't really matter. At this point, he's crushing it. He's doing what he needs to do. Ugh, a coward's hiding place. You had to get that mana sustain stuff, big bass. Big bass. You boss boy. Oh man, look at that. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna be uh, gonna get some more fine item here pretty soon. I think we'll have at least forty percent, which is definitely decent. I mean, that's what I was doing. You know, I was doing pulverize, and it was destroying stuff. It felt like you needed to get a little bit farther along in the game, though, for him to start doing that. Oh my god. Too many archers. Sometimes you gotta focus the archers, which isn't really your target, you know, when you're farming an Eldritch, but sometimes you gotta focus some of the other monsters. Ranged monsters are usually the problem. Whenever you're farming anything. 
just gotta keep that in mind. 26. Oh, man. I try both, you know, there, there's other things that work as well. It does seem like in the actual D4 game, though, it might be uh, objectively tougher to actually, like, find those legendaries. Which does spell some trouble when it comes to, like, civil leveling something like a druid, so, I don't know. You're right, though, once you get some of those items, they're actually really strong. I even made a video on it. I asked the question, I begged the question, is the druid weak? Or is the druid bad? And it's not, but, you know, you have to actually get some stuff. So that's not a bad item here. Um, we're not going to use it because we already have better items, but just want to show you guys. Oh, a cryptic axe. That's actually what we need. Perfect. I think we are already now capable of. Yeah, so a cryptic axe, fun fact about cryptic axe. Cryptic axe maxes out at five sockets, it's a pull arm. This means that you can make an obedience in it. It's an elite pull arm, so it's going to get a lot of damage. So this is actually what we were looking for in terms of a possible base. It would be better to find a five socketed one straight up. Um, easier said than done, though, for sure. No! So what that means is that in this video, no matter what, we'll be trying obedience whirlwind. Or at least showing off what it's capable of with some gear, and hopefully we can get some supplementary gear to help it out here. So that that's really nice, and we can use our last socket quest we still have to uh, to run that. Um, if we don't find anything better, we might just find a five socketed one straight up. That'd be ideal. I help you? But yeah, um, one thing to note is I was going to show this off. So this has res and it has life leech. It's actually a really good mercenary helm if you have like a armor with more res, like let's say smoke or um, maybe treachery for getting res, or just like a four socket armor, a tau full or a uh, rao. So like a 30 all res armor or something. And then you'd have life leech on the mercenary. So that's not a bad really early game solution. We just kind of skipped that step though because we just found Tal's mask and nightmare cows. So we don't need it. Good but just showing off a potentially useful item there. Not in town. Just to show off how you can really make use of these early items to uh, help you out. The fly, dude. Having a sub baby, man. That's nine months as a member of Zane's attack squad. Goes to the machine, the Arkham Disciples. And yeah, you can show off my pulverize uh, showcase where I get crazy crits too. Yeah, that's really strong. There's definitely good uh, potential of that build on D4. I don't want to confuse uh, the video people too much though. Yeah, I've been talking about D4 somewhat here. It's definitely on people's minds at the time of making this video. D4 is only uh, literally just a two months away. So, it's pretty awesome. Alright, anyway. Uh... I don't know, we'll see if we even need that. Maybe not. I'd like to offer... Yeah, right now we're doing a video. Yeah, um... How may I, be of help? I could do that, though, at some point. Um, is that one on softcore or hardcore? I will admit that my softcore ladder audience is probably pretty limited because I don't... 
do all the giveaways and stuff on softcore because I don't play softcore, but um, I can, uh, yeah, we, we can do that. If you play hard yeah, I, uh, if it's on hardcore, I'm sure there's some people in the stream that might, might want it. Then again, I don't know, maybe there's some softcore people. I don't know, is there anyone in the chat? The TDSC could, uh, message EOC. You wouldn't want that jaw rune? He's giving away a jaw rune. Yeah, I probably wouldn't do that on stream, but you can, um, you can give it away though. Oh, what's this? Oh dear. <laughs> oh, this is, this is interesting. We actually, uh, we fight him. We actually fight a uh, D clone. Hmm. We need a. Let me see here. Maybe we need an Oort range for that. No, that's not the right range. This is the. I think it's um. We'd have to be able to proc open wounds because I don't have malice at the moment. I'll need the open wounds recipe for a belt. It's a towel rune, okay. Interesting. I haven't spawned him yet though. <laughs> I don't know. Are they gonna do it? Hello. I mean, I could show off killing Uber Diablo in this garbage barb too. I mean, that is something we can do. Uh, D clone. That'd be interesting. Uh, you would need. <laughs> Would need certain things though. Pretty sure I have what it would take to do it. I just have to put on the right gear. I think we already have what we need. Mercenary can wear a tooth row, so. As long as I can keep the Merc alive. With two throw plus... Yeah, but he has no res. He's probably gonna die doing that. I don't know. Well, they're not spawning him, so... Let's just hope they don't spawn him the second I leave the game. Good afternoon. And maybe we can try to kill him. Malice Flail would be a nice thing to get though. I don't have Malice. I haven't farmed for that three stock and flail yet. I could make a Malice for you though. Let's make it like 10 times easier. Oop. Nice, Chris Frost. That's sick, man. Getting that enigma is, uh, you know, it's always the, always the dream. Look at that, mana gold find, you see. Oh, sweet. We just got an upgrade. Definitely, um, you can still look for those three socket, two socketed helms with war cry, other barb skills, honestly, but especially war cry if you're sticking with war cry. War cry can do everything though, as you can see. So there's no reason why you have to switch to any of these other types of things I'm gonna show, but. Um, they are good strats. There's advantages to them. I 
Yeah, there we go. See, we have a software player in the chat. Yeah, there's just not that many of them, you know. <laughs> not uh If I played more software, I'm sure we'd be good in that regard. You do not. Um, yeah. What's up? Oh. Salutations. Look at this thing here. Rare Mermaid on Greaves. Yes, you can find Shadow Dancers from uh, Pendleskin. Let's see, what's her MF right now? 203, okay. That's pretty standard stuff. I like how the Merc isn't dying at all. He is so crazy strong. <laughs> In part two, we just found so many items for them. It's crazy. Um, yeah, if you guys didn't see, this is from Hell Diablo. That was from Nightmare Cows. He's even wearing a pretty decent insight base. What do you need? Um, ideally, maybe we can find a better insight base, even, or we can find Reaper's Toll, which would be insane. It's definitely one of those things you can look for from like Hell Mephisto. Or from what I'm currently from. Yeah, you can always use like a teleport amulet or circlet or you know a staff like I have here in Rags to Riches. But I mean that takes up that takes up your your offhand slot, right? And so gotta think is that actually you know gonna be good in that regard you know what I could do I could do see this is decent don't get me wrong but I think we'll keep this four socketed armor in here this is what I was talking about about just chucking runes in here and getting 30 all resistance on the mercenary by the way those are pretty easy to find as you can see It's definitely one way to do it. Another thing you can do with it is you can stack fire res so that conviction from Travancore can't kill your Merc at least. He might still die relatively fast just because he has only 75 fire res, but what you but he won't die instantly with something like Warcry. And then you can just like stack Rao runes in there, and then he'll have so much fire res that conviction won't affect him, and he'll be able to kill them every time. That's a really cheap trick to uh, make your barb trav worthy right there. We'll, uh, we'll show off some of the jankiest approaches to show you guys you really don't need anything special. I think there's also uh, a lot of people I think also maybe falsely believe that need something like Grief to make a barbarian. Um, you don't need anything that strong, but obviously when you do get griefs on a barbarian, that's when you can really have fun. Yeah, Shadow Dancers is treasure class 87, so it's the highest treasure class of an item. Ah! Well, I had a feeling that might happen. One, he had. Less aim. Two, I was amplified damaged. Yeah, so... One, you don't farm Pindle in Hardcore at this point, as I've mentioned multiple times throughout both videos. But, two, if you ever see that, you might die if you teleport in the wrong spot. So there we should have teleported in the far left corner, like I suggested before. With, um, when we had amplified damage on us, and I made a mistake. And I teleported not in the far corner there, and then I just died. So, yeah, see all these P gems are very nice. You can craft a lot of things with them. So will be able to show that off. That was unfortunate. It happens though. Surprised it took so long to die from doing this farm, actually. I think that's the first death we've had doing that.
Unfortunately, there's no way to get that body back without dying again and possibly losing more experience. So just rejoin the game if that does happen. So we have Amp again on us. We're getting kind of unlucky with Eldritch here. So what you want to do a coward's place. is do that. There you go. Teleport to this corner right here. You could take the time to take it off of you. If you're on hardcore, you definitely want to do that. Even if you have gear, never go into Pendle Skin Amped on hardcore. That's uh, bad. I've seen the best play, uh, some of the best players in the game die to that in Pendle Skin. It doesn't matter how good you are at the game. Um, all it takes is one of those zombies to kind of like desync through, charge you, and kill you. It doesn't take a lot. Um, it doesn't even have to be a mistake necessarily just be a very small mispositioning or just an unlucky roll on one of the charger zombies or a combination of the two <laughs> maybe that's like a two war crammy with FCR or something that was a little too hopeful huh I can hit level 78 pretty soon. Uh, a coward's hiding place. As you can see it's pretty fast to get to like level 80 doing this. Even in players one. Remember, you can always turn up the player account if you want more experience, but your likelihood of dying at this point in the game goes higher. The barbarian. He's gotta get so close to the monsters. That is a hell rune. Interesting. Those can be good. Definitely can be good. Um, I think with the hell runes we have now, we're actually capable of making both obedience and an additional eye rune for double black. It's really good. Fired all that, of course, in part two and part one. I don't recommend watching the third video first unless you're only looking for advanced or uh, early mid-game farming strats, but it's because then you won't know how we got all this gear at this point. Should at least skip through the other videos first, I think. This other one here. And be like, how the heck do you even have all of what you have? There's no way you farmed all that in just like 16 hours roughly or less depending on what we're talking about here. Good afternoon. It's like, oh yeah, they gotta know what to do. I check those out. What's the best budget room for a bar to start trap? So that's what we were talking about earlier on in this video. There's a number of possibilities, not just one. You can berserk with something like Unbending Will, you can berserk with something like Oath. Um, you can Whirlwind with Oath. You can Whirlwind with Obedience. And we actually already have the capability to make Obedience, so that for sure is going to be happening in this video. We actually just acquired that ability upon finding that in um, <gasps> that White Cryptic Axe, because that maxes out at 5 sockets from Larzak. So, just acquired that capability. So the obedience will be a thing, 100%. Oh no, it's not that, I just tuned it out, man. You can, yeah, one thing to note is if, if this sound really bothers you on this particular skill. Oh no, maybe <laughs> die. Second. Need to be able to do this in peace. Okay, well we could sell that too. It's a Hellforge plate, but we're not going to. Alright, anyway, um let's get into there. Now if you wanted to, you can actually set like uh, sound effects from your skills. You can actually adjust this down specifically. 
Um, that is something you can do. You can actually turn it all the way down to zero, and then you don't hear, hear skills. It's kind of neat what they did in Resurrected. I can already so tell cool. that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken game. Um, they gave you a lot of cool options. I don't really care about that, honestly. I just like to hear all the sounds for the most part, but um, if that bothers you, when you're playing the Barbarian or any other class, like the Assassin, you know, you know, any of that stuff bothers you, you can definitely do it. Then turn it off or turn it way down, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, for sure. I, just for the purpose of this video, typically I just keep it, you know, as is, but it's always an option. So this is a man catcher. This would also get five sockets. Um, and it's fast attack speed, so that's kind of cool. What this fire is? Oh, it's got extra gold for it, too. Interesting. Um, probably not going to use this, to be honest, but you never know if we need the dexterity. I do gambling with that, so I'm holding on to it. My god, I really have way too much junk. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'll drop this Saigon's item as well. This is an interesting thing to note, is this would also get us obedience as well. Uh, notice how the base damage is a lot lo uh, lot, um, it's a lot, it's a lot lower though, so you do gotta keep that and take that into account. We do have some gloves and things with attack speed though, so I'm not super worried, but you can... At your service indeed do something like this or use something like this as well I think we'll get decent attacks we'll get higher damage on that thing cryptic axe is nice but frames are good too um oh yeah that's right It's online, solo cell found Barbarian from the start. Yeah, so this is a Barbarian start guided playthrough. We're actually making a guide called Rags to Riches. If you want to check out our other Rags to Riches guides on my YouTube, you can type exclamation R2R to pull up all the commands for those videos for every class. And we even have part one for the Barbarian, which you can start watching if you want to know how we got to this point. Part one is already on there. Part one is the most important video. You get progressively less important as you go along, however, these are very good things to see. I think they, uh, they definitely help people understand uh, how to advance. Right. Um, I started Throw Barb around the time you started this run, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, throw barb is um is pretty solid ever since they uh, changed it in patch 2.4. Before that point, I would have never recommended anyone play throw barb on D2 ever. Um, but yeah, like you know, it was just really brutal. You'd constantly run out of quantity. Um, yeah, I can talk about a lot of ways it was brutal, but yeah, it's it was just nasty straight up. Absolutely nasty. I may have turned down the monster sounds after some cow runs. Yeah, there you go. Hey, you can turn down or turn off any of the sounds you want. Diablo 2 Resurrected, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> I think a lot of people wish that that was an option in uh, some other mods as well. We can find a white monarch here. That's a, that's a kite shield, though. It's not the same thing. Yeah, so you have 40% fine item now. It's actually pretty big. So, after you get to a certain point in fine item, this is like something you have to worry about much later. 
Um, you actually start leveling up Find Potion to get more uh, percent chance faster. Because at some point on Find Item, you actually get 0% when you level it up. And you keep getting 1% by putting points into the synergy. That's an interesting thing to know. Currently, though, we're still getting 2% per level. Find item, so it's still better. If you see a dangerous orb by them, you should actually go to that corner. Kind of the same thing with uh, Cursed. But I think we kind of got lucky with the positioning here. He didn't actually get it off. The dangerous part there is he was even Cursed. Oh, look at that. There we go. Nice. So if you find another Korun... Yeah, so we just found a four socketed bow straight up, which means we can make the harmony for Vigor as well. Okay, yeah, so this is... One of the main reasons we're doing this is leveling, but it's also for base farming. It's very good for base farming. Um, you can also farm bases like through Lower Kuros, through Pit. I mentioned some other ways. Um, which we already showed off in part two a little bit But as you can see it's solid to just do it this way um, Why is so every Diablo game since Diablo 2 has always launched with five classes I'm assuming that's just because it's a good number and it's a lot to work on from the beginning anyway uh, and then every expansion has always increased it by one or two classes. So, you're probably going to see seven classes in D4 at minimum if they don't create more later on with additional expansions. Um, things like Paladin. Things that don't currently exist would probably exist. Uh, another four socket of the. Wow, you could trade them. So, yeah, we've already successfully been able to farm some nice bases here. So, this is an interesting thing here. Now, this would be sick for a summon Necro. And in the first few days of Ladder, this is actually something you can trade pretty well. Afternoon. Um, Necromancer is definitely looking for some decent. One, so that's a Karen shard that's pretty cool. It's not as good as Arm of King Leoric, but so you wouldn't be able to trade it like outside like the first week of ladder, but it's not bad. You're gonna find a lot of good items, of course, in the Barbarian. Just like in every class, once you actually start to get to the farming phase. Like I said. Video 3 here kind of is the beginning of the farming phase for the Barbarian because we're trying to get to a little bit further in the game so that we can um, show you guys some other strats and to show you guys a bit better farming and things like Travancool. Travancool is a little tough so Good afternoon. Yeah, you can make it a struggle and you can start farming Trav in the struggle if you want. You can just start farming it the second you get to it. As you saw, I didn't have too much difficulty killing them, but there's always like some other farms that can get you a little bit more efficient from the get-go. Make it a little less painful. See, that's, uh, uh that's, what is that? Oh, that's Wow Witch String. Wow. Dang, that's really cool, actually. Um, what, one thing you could do is, uh, I wouldn't recommend this against Trap, but this can actually give you some amplified damage here um, if you use an Act 1 Mercenary, so that's actually really neat. Um, I'm not going to demo that because most of the time it's going to die, but just to show you that is something that could be used on this character. That's kind of neat. What's up, Sagacious? How you doing? What's up, King Jerix? We're making my final part of my final series for Rags to Riches. All seven classes will now be 2 patch 2.4 or beyond, which is pretty much, you know, the big patch when it came to updating everything. So they'll all be updated and they'll all be good. I'll show people these awesome strats, which is good. One thing to note is that if you can get to Terror Zones eventually and kill Bale and all that fun stuff, um, 
Wow, that's uh, interesting. It's not good, but it's interesting. That's a thrill. That is a kind of a sad plus two amy there. Claws do have plus skills in hell mode, so you can get skills off that. Yeah, what's up, man? How you doing? Good afternoon. Yeah, like I said, you can sell almost anything. You can generate gold in hell mode. All this gold is very useful, of course. We lost a lot of gold randomly there, didn't we? Yeah, that's because we died. That yeah, wasn't good. And remember to put your gold not in uh, your personal stash, but in your shared stash if you're playing softcore. Um, almost all your gold, so you don't lose that much when you're dying. You'll only lose gold from your personal stash. Kind of just like on a hardcore, you only lose items in your personal stash. Your shared stashes will never be lost ever. Basically like a mule, you know, used to be. It's a mule. That's not bad. It's weird, but it's not bad. Ugh, a coward's hiding place. Probably not. Um, even if they end up updating some early game uniques and a lot of late game uniques, uh, uniques in general aren't the key to my racks for riches run, Sagacious, so. I don't even see, at this point, I don't see myself having to redo these videos. These videos should stand the test of time, at least for a very long time, when it comes to game updates. I'd be surprised if that's not the case, um, since they're all 2.4, 2.5, and 2.6 now. Like I said, um, they are, yeah, it's pretty, they're pretty updated. Yeah, getting Bone Break from Terror Zones at some point would be nice. I think I mentioned that, though. Yeah, no. Okay, I think... Yeah, we can... We can find one of those. I think that'll be fun. If they update late game uniques, that'll actually be really cool. Yeah, for my Rags for Riches series, though, um, I think that's safe from any more updates they would do. They already said 2.4 is the last, like, really big Passover heavy mechanical change patch, so... Honestly, most of Rags for Riches is just mechanics and skill changes. So, unless they do, like, heavy early game skill modifications at this point, which I don't see them doing uh, after D4 comes out. I mean, they might do things like uh, give a pass on those late game uniques. I hope they do, and I hope uh, my efforts and other people's efforts are successful in Good doing afternoon. that. Because um, I think that's something they're very much underestimating. But yeah, we'll see though. And Pin will be terrorized, yes. Um, if he's terrorized, he can drop every item in the game, and he can even drop a rat as much. Yeah, the, the scale of their updates are not likely to be quite as high as they used to be, but it'd be nice to get, like, a... I would take it over a Rune Word update, you know, like, a... Those ultra-rare uniques, like Storm Spire and Terriel's Might, Ghost Flame... You know the ones, you know. Even things like Demon Horn's Edge, you know, Earth, uh... Cranium Basher, Grandfather, they could really use some buffs. Um, because they're so rare and yet they're completely useless, pretty much. It's actually one of the more tragic things that some of the most rare, unique items in the game aren't very useful anymore, and that's just because um, after they did the Rune Word update a long time ago, they just never caught up the, uh, the uniques of those Rune Words. They can just be buffed a little bit, you know. I think if you buff them all up a bit, um, you're gonna see more healthy use potentially there.
Kill everything. That's right. So if I remember right, these areas here in the beginning of Act 5 are like early 80 area levels. Which is why like in Players 1 you can pretty comfortably get to 80 doing this. Pendleskin though is an 86 monster, so if you only focus Pendleskin you can actually, uh, rather than Eldritch or Shank or both, you can actually uh, get to a higher level than that. We're not going to worry about that, though. That's going to take way too long for the purposes of this. You don't want to make a part four. There are no rags to riches series with four parts, so we're going to avoid that. <clears throat> well, what's more important is that we all can present this to Blizzard. Yeah, it, it would even be ideal if someone like, you know, as much as I would like to present it, you know, someone like Mr. Llama does, because, you know, he has a very good relationship with them. And, um, you know, present it as a community effort. He's a better relationship with them than I do, so... I, I wouldn't know. But we're definitely working with, uh... It's awesome to see that, uh, you know, Cooley and we have a lot of other people as well. Making solid contributions to that, and we'll come up with a united front of what we think would be best to do. What a lot of players would like, like almost every player would like to be seen done. Like no one would complain if those ultra rare unique uh, uniques were buffed. You know, there's some people that would complain about a lot of things, you know, because it's changing the game too much. But like things like that, like no one would complain about. It's like a, it's a unanimous want in the community. There's no way they could get flack for that, so. It's not like, you know, maybe adding a charm inventory and then some people are like, well, this doesn't feel like D2 anymore. Because now you can just put charms in my inventory with no penalty and it makes the early game too easy, you know? You know, people could complain about that, and they do, in, uh, in mods, so. Like, there, there are things other people can complain about, but that, that's something like no one can complain about at all. So... Of course, they're not gonna do that anyway. They've already said they're not doing that thing. <laughs> of course, they, uh... I think they understand that's... too much of a modification to the game, and that would require a lot of other changes as well. Is he having... Are they having their babies soon? I don't know, that's cool. I don't even know what the, what the timeline is for that, so... Yeah, it's possible, though. And talk about a perfect timing if uh, that's when they're actually having the baby, like... Right after the beta... For D4, and then right before D4 launches. <laughs> like, how do you time something like that? <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty good. Oh yeah, there's definitely people that do, which is why they prefer to play the mods oftentimes. Yeah, we'll have something of a vote, right? A vote system. I think I think there needs to be a discussion first, of course, so... We'll, uh... Yeah, we'll need to discuss everyone's contribution, and then we'll vote on what the best solution is. And then we're gonna present... United Front there. I already know how to deal with that, don't worry man, we're good. We just gotta make sure we get everyone on board and everyone contributes too. We got some major players in on it. And then, 
in. We can give them a very professional looking update. Because that's what they tend to like in this in D2R. They like these very professional, kind of conservative type changes. And uh, that's kind of what we're going to want to do. For uniques to maintain their identity, that's what you're going to need. You're going to need some kind of conservative set of changes there. Good afternoon. Because um, I think that's their big concern with uniques as far as uniques are concerned. So is like them maintaining those that identity and that's a that's why you have to be careful what you do but there's a lot of things you can do while doing that so. Live that time, Pendle Skin. It's all good. Salutation. Wait, what? What are you? What are you talking about? SDSS. Mm. You talking about that person in the news? I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> it's so stupid. Okay, um... So I think I know what you're trying to get me to say, or to, to do here. I'm on to you. How about a unique bow that fires Zack 2 mercs instead of arrows? <laughs> you're pretty insane. You know in Project Diablo 2 they are coming out with Act 4 mercenaries. It's kind of a cool thing, huh? care about news. What about D2 news? I care about D2 news, right? Everyone cares about the news. It just depends on what news they care about. <laughs> Not everyone cares about every news equally. I don't know. People... There's always some stupid drama. That, I don't know. People waste their lives over, I guess. Otherwise, news wouldn't cover it all the time. Media and shit. I, I don't care for it. I don't care. It's done. News is garbage. A lot of it is for sure. You, you gotta, you gotta comb the, you gotta comb the haystack for the needle. That gem every once in a while. Gaming news? Yeah, there you go, Sam. I mean, I already know my audience is much more interested in gaming news, and you know, it's, of course, if that's the case, of course, of course. But you know, some people like all news. I mean, the garbage is what it is. See, that's a that's a four slot. One. That's pretty solid. Oh, we. Good afternoon. Right, right. Yeah, it's pretty cool, right? That's good. I think I already saw the demo for that on P2, yeah. That's pretty neat. P2 might look a little bit more uh, solid this time around. But I still don't think... After looking at that, I, I know what you're talking about now, I didn't realize that's what you were talking about, but I don't think it's um, enough to for people to play it that, you know, can't get used to the old graphics again. I don't think that's enough of a upgrade. A coward's hiding it is cool looking, though. And for someone like me that doesn't care about the graphics as much, I think that's just cool to see in general. It enhances the old graphics a bit more. is actually a really cool thing. I think that's neat. I think that's neat that they're thinking of ways to enhance the old graphics and more still. 
Yeah, it can only have single player mods with the detour graphics, unfortunately. Salutations. It would be nice. Alright, so at this point, yeah, I'm just gonna put points in the strength. Hopefully. Put some points in the strength. I can wear, I can wear some more things here. I don't need life anymore. Die them, not them. That's the thing is you can always put more points in a strength or dex to prepare for using different items. Yeah, I get that, but it looks nice. I mean, it does. It, and I like the you know I like the old D two graphics still. So like seeing that and how it enhances it further is actually pretty sick. I, 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 I do agree. So. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Do you plan on playing D4 when it comes out? Yes. I will be playing Diablo 4 for at least a month when it comes out. Um, I've already set a, that month aside. That month we are totally no life in Diablo 4. Now I like the beta enough to play Diablo 4, so we will be playing um, be a significant amount of Diablo 4 content at some point here. And hopefully that's hype for people and uh, we will support my stream while we play it. Because I know I'm not going to be towards the top of that section. <laughs> I'm going to need you guys. But if you guys don't like Diablo 4 at all, that's fine. Um, it's not like we're just going to Diablo 4 permanently, so if you don't like that, you know, we'll return to other content as well, so. That is a Lawbringer base. That's an option. Let's see, Lawbringer bases are often tough to find. Often tough. I don't even know why I still have that. I have laying of hands. Why is that in there? I have no bloody clue sometimes why. Okay, I know I have that. Can I help you? It's 100% worth $70 if you can afford it. Um, I can understand it, you know, if you can't afford something like that. It's a reasonably sized expenditure, especially in certain countries. But if you can, uh, it's worth it. Looks like they're going to go really hard on this game. And they actually put some effort into making a what I consider to be a good game. It's a really good game, from the looks of it. I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty uh, hard critic to please in that regard, so... I'd be doing a pretty good job from what we can see so far. What is this one? Yeah, in your country it's $120. Yeah, so that's what I mean, like... That's a reasonably sized expenditure. So, I understand if you can't afford it, or, you know, you don't want to spend it, but if you can't afford it, it's a good game, so. And of course, like almost all game, good games, sometimes they become shit later. So, you might want to experience it at least in the beginning while it's semi-decent. There's definitely a risk of that, so. You know, as they continue to pile stuff into the game. Yeah, you can, you know, I don't know if you have access to the real-life trade forum on uh, JSP. 
Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Which reminds me, I actually have a guide for how to trade on both Tradery and D2 GSP on YouTube as well for D2. Uh, it's a guide for how to become a pro trader and a bunch of really solid tips for improving your trading game. In case, uh, you know, a lot of people often just seem lost when it comes to trading. You can just see it in the forums and see it on the websites. Um, made a guide, I don't know, is it like 30, 40 minutes long where I just pretty much detail all these different ways you can really up your trading game, so you can check that out as course at any time in the ladder. Um, yeah, it's faster just to spam click it. I don't feel like doing the uh, belt lifting thing once you have four slots. Um, well, it's not just that website, like any trading that's outside of the game that isn't like a Blizzard website. You know, it's intimidating because it's like something that's just totally different. Um, but I break it down pretty good in that video, though. I think it's, uh, what's the command for it? Uh, trading. Yeah, become a pro trader on Detour. Yeah, and it's, it's nothing... It basically gives you a good framework for what to do, you know, when you find items. And of course, if you don't even know it's valuable to begin with, um, we only have one guide right now. Uh, for unique and set items, but I actually have two more guides about to come out for valuable magic items, which is an insanely huge guide with about 300 types of magic items that you're going to want to look for in Diablo 2. And then there's also um, uh, Rune Value, which is very stable. It's about, it basically goes over relative Rune Value. It's a yellow monarch. Interesting. Where's that godly unique item? I feel like we could find it already, you know. I don't know if we will though. Maybe maybe we got a little bit luckier in part two. I don't know. That does happen sometimes. Afternoon. Yeah, so relative value of items is actually very important to know. Because it gives you kind of an idea of like what might be worth keeping. And so I'm coming out with a whole suite of guides for every type of item in the game. We already have that one there, the valuable unique and set items guide published on Maxwell. Which will give you a very solid idea of relative item value for unique and set items. Which ones are also not really worth anything but can be useful and then much under trash. And uh, we have two more guides that I've already completed, but they're not published yet. Hopefully we'll get them to you guys ASAP, which have to do with rune value and magic item value. I also want to do one for rare item value, craft item value, and um, so valuable rare items, valuable craft items, and for valuable base, uh, valuable rune word bases. Those are all very important things to know when you're trying to get rich. In addition, of course, to just how to trade. I got a lot of I have a lot of knowledge in these areas because I've I did it for a very I can long already time. tell that I'll be so, your best friend in this I can, uh, camp. I can impart onto the community all of this incredible wealth of knowledge here. And you guys can do what you want with it. Unfortunately, exact prices for things like that are impossible because they always change, but uh, relative value is very important to know. Oh god, we almost died again. I have like negative three light rays, don't I? Uh, don't do it. Okay, so we're actually almost to 79, which means we have one more level of doing this. And then what I'm going to start farming is Nightmare Countess. Oh, hello. It's not bad. Uh, it's not good either, but it's not bad. Um, I think I'd rather have the circlet, though, that I already have. Just so goes to show you, though, there's many ways to get some more plus skills. <laughs> 
Wait, you were denied for getting that weekend off for Diablo 4 release? Didn't you like put in time for like literally up two months away? It's two months away. Your bosses denied you time off two months away? Like they have plenty of time to fill for it. Are they like short people or something? Is that like a time when you're getting like tons of business and you ever want to deck? What the heck, man? It's the only thing I could possibly see it being reasonable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't show. Well, yeah, of course. That's how it always goes, slip out, man. Oh yeah, and then botting has become more prevalent. Yeah. But you know, it used to be way worse in old battle. In old battle net, there was duping on top of botting, and duping made. Hyrule is worthless on pretty much day one of a ladder. It was really sad, actually. Oh yeah, it used to be really bad. Um, basically, at one point, you know, you were either a bot or you couldn't get any value out of anything. Yeah, duping destroys the economy. I mean, so does botting, but most people don't care about items becoming cheaper over time with botting because it's a lot slower and you know people typically a month in just want to be able to afford and trade for um you know high level items anyway at that point so they don't really care as much they don't want to just, like spend a, an ass load of in-game items or foreign currency or whatever it is whatever it is but, you know... Oh, wow, that's unlucky. He's also taking that week off? What is he doing? Is he also playing Diablo 4? I mean, I guess the release date of Diablo 4 has been known for a while. Is your boss also playing Diablo 4? Oh god, and you're second in command? Oh dear. I guess the ship might sink without a leader here. Cowards hide in place. That's not good. Whoa! Hashtag riches incoming. Check that out. Alright, there we go. We're gonna go get one more level here though. 42%, nice. Um, yeah, so now we have almost decent, you know, find item. It's getting there. Yeah, so look at look at this, uh, look at this amulet here, actually. So this is a really good amulet. Not for this build. I mean, it'd be insane if it was Warcry, but, um, two fire skills, 10 faster cast rate, 27 strength, 39 poison res. Imagine finding this early game. Anyone that starts, like, fire stork of any kind for, like, farming in Dariel or something... It's like a dream amulet right there. Absolute dream. Look at that. More riches coming in in this Rags for Riches series for the Barbarian. They come in pretty regularly, don't they? <sighs> Always put in some more things. I'm waiting for that insane unique drop. I mean, we are farming the... Uh, some bosses that can drop like all kinds of things. You could get like a Shaco. I don't know if that would happen, but you never know. Yeah. That's a pretty cool find, honestly. If I had two to work, right? That'd be insane. I would totally use that. Notice there that I tried to get in this corner because I was amped. That is the safest corner right here. If you can get in that corner, if he's got deadly aura, if his amp prevent some deaths, some annoyance. Definitely can be a little frustrating sometimes. The higher fine item you get though, the more efficient these, this item finding will get. So like I said, you could have already respect earlier if you wanted to. If you plan to stay war cry especially. And you can just continue to um 
Yeah, I mean, you can just uh, get like 50 fine item. That's what I recommend early on. Once you get more plus skills, it makes sense to go for higher than 50. But you can go for like 50 plus. You can go for like 50 to 55 early on. And then put the rest of your skills into damage. No. Good. <clears throat> uh, a coward's hiding place. Yeah, that would kind of suck not to be able to play D4 launch, but then again, um, I hope you can figure that out. Now, stuff happens sometimes, you know, you just can't do it, but. It is a pretty cool event, you know, it doesn't happen often that a new Diablo game comes out. Definitely some, uh, definitely some solid entertainment. Wish it had, uh, it only comes around once a decade about, as a matter of fact. Salutations. No one knows if they'll live long enough to see the next one, of course, but... Hey, if you do, you know? I thought they were actually going to wait a couple of months after launch to start a ladder, but I could be wrong. I thought they were going to try to, like, fix some balance issues. Maybe I'm wrong, though. And they're going to launch a ladder later on. Well, sure I do, which is why uh, we're trying to... Uh, we're getting to the point now where we can start doing some other things as well. Hmm, almost Haws. It's not bad. Well, we already have Angelic Ring. We need Angelic Amulet at this point if we wanted anything to help with that. I'm glad with D4 though, I think uh, we would get the typical expansion tiers, maybe here down there, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, look at that, a crystal sword. Six sockets! If you uh, want to keep that for later on, you can, for putting in like six Is or six Lembrans. Um, great way to farm Trav, boost your magic fund, boost your uh, gold fund there. Yeah, exactly, Jig uh, Jigsaw. A coward's hiding place. <laughs> I don't know. Always check those uh, rare and magic barbarian helms. You never know when you can get like a plus five skill one. Like look at that. This is two to war cries and this is actually four to shout. Imagine if that was also like three to war cry itself. You could get like a five war cry helm right there. Um, it's not far off, right? And it doesn't take much to actually find that. So don't ignore those things. As the barbarian, those things can help. Definitely, definitely, definitely.
Two weeks definitely seems kind of silly. I don't think they're gonna do two weeks after a launch. They're gonna launch the ladder. I don't think that's what they said, but I don't know. Maybe they did. Uh, insight pull arms, huh? Or is that like a Thuriel CV or something? It's pretty difficult to find now. Thuriel Colossus Volge. It's auto four sockets from Larzak, but also. Dang, we just can't seem to catch a break for FCR rings at all. Doesn't really matter though. I'd say at this point. We have everything we need, and what we're really looking for is just some weapons and some more bases we can use. But, you know, there's always these small upgrades that can, you know, make some things feel a little easier. I think I think we can definitely expect an expansion within the two years, yeah. I need mana. Yeah, so you notice how many items we get. This is why we keep finding so many uniques and even sets. Um, eventually you're going to find some crazy things if you continue to do this, of course. But as you can see, there's no guarantee. Sometimes it takes a while. Um, and ideally, you'd want to get even more magic fine than this. You know, you can get something like uh, wealth. Like Warwind with Obedience. Definitely things you can do here. That's what we're going to want to show off here in this part here. I think we're going to end up with two, at least seven characters in D4. Whether it's in the first expansion or second or whatever, we'll end up with the at least seven. I think D4 will get seven characters or something. Um, it'll be like a paladin type character. We already have an assassin type thing. It's even possible they bring one of the uh, D3 classes in or even create a new class. You know, they can. Uh, I don't know, they can create something a little bit different. I don't know. Good afternoon. Notice that they've brought in a lot of things from Diablo 2 in D4, like a lot of skills, a lot of uh, themed characters. It's kind of neat. I mean, the skill tree somewhat resembles how the D2 one works, which uh, I think some of you guys may have observed. By the way, if you're ever short a gem, you can always take that flawless uh, gem, put it in your inventory, and then find a gem shrine. Make sure there's no other gems in your inventory. Then the gem shrine will pull that gem and it'll upgrade it to a perfect gem, which you can pick up off the ground. It's actually a really good strat. Oh, we already found two six-socketed crystal swords. Yeah, bases are definitely pretty, uh, pretty easy to get here. I don't know, I like that class. I thought it was a cool class. Thing. Taking a lot of damage there. My resistances aren't great with this setup. It's all about magic find. Of course, uh, once we start farming Countess, you don't have to focus magic find as hard. Actually, I think gonna focus more of a uh, damage just so we can 
build them ASAP and get as many runes as possible. Take off most of the magic find stuff. Also, if we're still looking for bases, we're not farming these super unique monsters pinned on Eldritch. We're gonna want to take off magic find anyway to increase our chances of that. Magic find is not good for finding base items. Something we've already talked before about in this guide and in other guides. There's a gem shrine, by the way. Let's actually show that off. So, let's say I want to take my flawless topaz. Turn it into a perfect one. Easy. It's actually really good to do. Um, topazes, rubies, and amethysts are usually going to be the most valuable gems for what you need to do. So if you ever want another one. interesting. Hmm. I think that would be better than this potentially. Yeah, not by a lot, but be nice. Like 21 fire is. 19 strength. I guess it really doesn't matter, huh? I guess that's hit recovery. I don't know. Got a few different options. Bonus round! That's right, man. What's up, man? At your service. You're now uh, trying to farm up obedience and stuff for uh, going some different setups. Something that you can show on the barb. It's not necessary, though. more of a Project Diablo 2 thing, but I mean, Faux Holy Bolt is a thing on D2R, and including in the early game. So technically, yes. This is not like pure Holy Bolt, I guess. <laughs> That's not a thing. Oh no, they'll probably be doing that next for sure, Papa Dill. Well, maybe they have an even better idea than that, but... We'll have to see. Uh... No, I don't. I don't play that mod. You're playing it though, have fun. I don't know, in my opinion, PD2 is just so much better than it that there's no reason to touch any other D2 mods anymore. And I'm not. I, I normally focus more on the standard releases anyway, not the mods, so. But if I play that, if I play a mod, I'm playing that mod. But if they're coming out with it, have fun with it, man. Definitely have fun with it. So it's looking like we're about to hit level 80 here, which is pretty cool. This will have 44%. Good afternoon. Actually, if we only have 43%, I might just want to put one point into. Yeah, I'll get the I'll get the Grim Ward to start showing it off. And then we'll respec once. We get some of this gear. It is a lot more challenging. Oh, no, they didn't. They did not copy it. <laughs> not here. Uh, 
They enhanced everything, man. It was not... How could you say it was a copy of it? They changed so much shit. Yeah, you know, it's... I wouldn't say it's entirely different, right? So they're both... There's a clear lineage there, right? You know, it's like if you look at a family tree. It's very obvious that PD2 is an offspring from, you know, the pod mod on Diablo 2. It's an offspring, right? You know? Good afternoon. And if um, mods bud asexually, then there's only one parent in this case. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, there is more people that worked on Pond. I don't want to go into it too much though. Right now. What's up, Kaiser? How you doing? Yeah, we will be playing Diablo 4 though. Um, if you didn't see, we played like 74 hours of both early access beta and open beta, so. We've done our homework on D4. We'll do more homework, of course. I hope to be able to put together a team with some of you guys, and we're just gonna push content and just mess around. Seems to be good. They go hard, baby! We'll be doing that, yes. We also will be playing PD2 Season 7. Most likely here, uh, whenever it comes out. Still hasn't been a season I've skipped out on, so. See, this is one to war cry, but it's one socket. If I had two sockets, you can make a lore in it. If I had more than one to war cry, you can make a really good lore. That's really close there. That's almost what you're looking for. Probably starting softcore on D4, to be honest. Um, most likely, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I kind of want to learn the game first. <laughs> Before I just start dying and having to remake my character and never getting to the end game. I mean, I, I died enough in the beta to learn that there's going to be dying, so it's best to just learn the game first. Start mastering some of the aspects that would make sense in hardcore. Yeah, I mean, I don't know when Ladder's coming out, right, on D4. I think it's going to be several months after. I think they've already said that. But it's possible that I learn enough at launch playing softcore that we could play a hardcore Ladder. I don't know. Yeah, of course. You know, softcore's, a, softcore's always been my training ground on D2 as well, so... It's a great training ground for hardcore. Um, and some people just only want to play software, which is fine. You know, maybe their internet connection is good, maybe they just want to relax when they play games. Um, so software is always the option, but... For me, I usually, uh... These days, I use software as a training ground, so... It's, it, it's good training. You train faster in software because you can make mistakes. Making mistakes allows you to learn. and allows you to adjust and get better at the game faster. Um... You know, that's how it works for anything in life. Anything that allows you to fail, to learn, and then get right back up on your feet immediately, that's uh, generally a lot more effective, so. Or cry stick. One of Barbarian skill levels. No, they did really good. Um, the fact that they even have, like, D2 veterans like myself liking the game is a good thing. That means they've done a good job. And that means they've also done a good job bringing over Diablo 3 people as well. And 
I think they, they really thought about a lot of their systems and it should be very interesting. I don't even have as many criticisms as a lot of people do because I think a lot of those criticisms make things worse in some ways. Yeah, I've talked about this before. I think they've done a good job. There's definitely some things they can still do better, um, which I've talked about in my video, exclamation D4 thoughts, in addition to all the things I think they do well, but yeah, there's it's a good game. I have a good impression of the game. Way better than I ever had with D3. And... Should be good to see. And continue to have honestly with that game. Just not quite the same thing. Really, FedEx? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing is. Hardcore is going to be pretty painful, I think, in general. I think it'll be very good to see kind of like what you can get away with and what you can't. Yeah, it's kind of rough. You have to have this a solid way to like, um, definitely have to have like a solid way to maintain. Uh, your distance from the boss or sustain while under him. You have to be right on top of him. Either way, you have to be able to do it. From what I can see. You have to min-max a lot. Wow, oh, look at this. There's another spectral shard. Wow. Salutations. Ended up finding another mini wood spike. So if we really wanted to, we could uh, we go pretty hard on this uh, this approach here. Yeah. It's two, two spectral shards to go two mini wizard spikes, but I don't think we're gonna actually demo that, so it's fun. Yeah, exactly, FedEx. Like, D4 is like a true successor, and it actually feels like a Diablo game, and it's what a lot of people I think might have been expecting from Diablo 3. I think that's true, including me, so. Uh, it's good to see that they've really taken a lot of feedback into account. They've tried to make things more interesting. They've tried to layer on top systems that are interesting from other games in some ways. Of course, doing it their own way a bit. I know, I'm a... Like I said, I like D4. I'm a D3 hater. I love Diablo 2. That's... That's impressive, they could get me to like it. I, I was expecting to criticize most of it, you know. And don't get me wrong, I don't like every aspect of it. Some things are just kind of dumb, but it's like... It doesn't ruin the game experience. The game experience feels good. They got the game experience down, 100%. So what's left to see is like, is it a game that's worth grinding a lot? Really good. That's a good thing, you know. I know, I know. Man. He's a, what, what, what is this crap? Oh. I am overburdened. You get maybe a little bit more bases, maybe one godly unique before we move to Countess farming, and then we start showing you guys some other strats for farming uh, in the early game on the barb. That's pretty much the progression of this video. So right now I've got. Mercenary's got max res. Nice, he does. He's ready to go. <laughs> oh man, it could have been a lot worse. Well, as much as I think some people don't want to give Blizzard Entertainment uh, Activision, Activision Blizzard credit, you really gotta admit that 
D2R, I was, you know, I had a totally different vision of Blizzard and the Diablo series a year and a half ago. Um, well, not a year and a half ago, more like almost two years ago before uh, D2R came out. And I was thinking, man, this is scary, you know? Um, actually, over two years ago. You know, it'd be scary. What I was thinking like two and a half years ago was that it would be really terrifying if Blizzard tried to remaster D2R because I didn't trust them. I was like, look at Warcraft remastered. It's uh, a shit show. I mean, they're just gonna fuck up the game. You know, that's literally what I was thinking, you know? Um. I was like, no, I don't, I don't care for a remaster of this game, and they, they really proved me wrong. Like, this is a great remaster. Like, it's really good. And then, <laughs> sounds good. What's up, McCall? Thank you so much for launching a Zane attack on the stream. Hope you had a great stream, man. I don't know what you were doing, but I could crush it. I don't know if it was speed run or some kind of playthrough or something or some kind of test, but. You're always a beast, man. Thank you, sir. Uh, so what we're doing here is we started from nothing on a Barbarian. We're doing a solo B-Net guided playthrough of the Barbarian from nothing to getting rich. That's basically the idea, is to get to the point where we can start farming the nice riches. And we've pretty much gotten everywhere now. We're kind of just trying to get some final build approaches that you can use in the early game and use this. By the way, is Uber Diablo it's still at approaches, really? Why? I don't understand. Guess they're not going to actually pull the trigger on it, huh? Yeah, yeah, D2 R D4 you know, I don't know too much about Dragonflight on WoW, but it seems to be received a lot better than the previous WoW expansions have been. Um, I I think that Activision Blizzard in general is starting to invest a bit more in the game experience. And they're not being as lazy with, you know, actually trying to make a good game experience. And I think that's good. Um, if so, that will maintain their reputation or restore it a bit. And they don't have to worry about losing out to their competitors, so. Good on them, you know. And then, you know, as long as they continue with this trajectory in D4, you know, I'll buy Diablo 5 if they come out with one, you know. I have said on stream before, though, if Diablo 4 is a complete flop, that I wouldn't even touch Diablo 5. I was like, nah, I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> so they, uh. I think they're out of that danger territory, but you know, is what it is. Yeah, I think that's a. It's more of a clowny marketing strategy. I think it's more of an. Exp wouldn't wouldn't you say that Overwatch Two is better to call it like an Overwatch expansion as opposed to a new game? They should have just sold it as an expansion. <laughs> People would have bought it. Yeah, it's an expansion. That's like an expansion of the game. Like a revitalization. It's like a small remaster, basically. These show current gear. Uh, I'm making up videos, so I'm not always going to show my gear, but I show it throughout all of the videos. Uh, part one is on YouTube, so you can see how we get a lot of this gear. Already. Uh, part two, our barb, which is what you just pulled up there. It'll be a part two and part three as well, though. I mean, part two is, just needs to uh, add a little more time on that there. But yeah, anyway. Um... Yeah, no, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. You know, they've they've done a lot of solid projects lately. Now we can't forget about you know Diablo Immortal, but I don't know. 
you can almost excuse that because no one makes a phone game that isn't a predatory slot machine, so... <laughs> I don't know why. I guess they just just a lot of greed for the mobile game market, and I guess the mobile gamers are willing to pay for all of their progression in a game. So... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. That market's screwed. Yeah, Blizzard continues on this trajectory though. They're doing a lot better. They're looking a lot better than they did like three to five years ago, so I think they have they have better people. Maybe they hired better talent after letting go of some of those uh, clowns that were um, causing them lawsuits and uh, their liabilities to their company. <laughs> Maybe they had to shed some shed some of those people to get the right people in. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Predatory slot machine. You can't even win! I mean, I know all about predatory slot machines. Remember, you know, I'm in, I live in Nevada, okay? You know, it's... Slot machines are fully legal even at the smallest gas station. It doesn't matter. But, like... At least in those predatory slot machines, you have a chance of winning money. <laughs> it's like, um... <laughs> at least there's there's a chance, right? You know, there's a chance you can win money. Can't even do that in a moral, man. See, I'd like to think I know... Did Microsoft buy them? The purchase hasn't been approved by the uh, FCC yet. Or FTC or whatever. Federal Trade Commission, I don't know. And they're, they're, I'm not sure if it was denied yet, but there's this thinking that it could be. <laughs> because Microsoft might be deemed to becoming too big of a monopoly. They might deny that. They might deny that murder. They might deny it. They might deny it. They might deny the buyout, man. I am overburdened. They might do it. Alright, um, okay, only two more bars, and then we're gonna actually change up, switch up our farm here. You got all the bases I absolutely needed to get here. Um, I don't know if we're gonna find the youth base, I really don't. We might not. The real problem with Oath really isn't the runes. Like, Hell Countess is pretty easy to get those from, but we might not find that. But to be able to do okay. to some extent. No, no, no. They all have phones, right? At your service. Wrong. None of us have phones. I don't have a phone. Do you have a phone? A coward's hiding place. Predatory slot machine. Really, nothing else to call a Diablo Immortal but a predatory slot machine. Truly, uh, truly nothing else to do. Only thing you can call it. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Feels like they rarely and selectively enforce antitrust laws, but 
might actually enforce it against Microsoft here. Oh wow, that's kind of nice actually. That can be good. You know, that is probably better than this. Let's see. Uh, I mean, this has res. It's got crushing blow, though. Uh, I don't know. This has deadly strike, though. It's not gonna happen. I'm not gonna use that, there's no way. Let's get rid of some of this stuff, taking out unnecessary space here. Yeah. Oh, uh, we have goblin toes. We have goblin toes, so yeah. We we got a we got a pretty solid boots we can use. No gores yet. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, all right. That'd be nice to have already. Good luck though. I'm surprised we haven't found like a something like a guardian angel though. Then again, that can be tougher to find than you might think. <laughs> oh man. I mean, I'm sure some people like to play Diablo Immortal. I mean, it's still a thing, so. But their predatory gambling was so bad that China just banned the game outright. <laughs> After they probably created it for the Chinese market to begin with. That's how bad it was. It's upsetting. Dad. Ah, oh, what? One so. Oh, man. That's such a joke. Even just two sockets there would have given us access to an insane uh, um, smoke base there. Nephilim. Cowards hiding place. Immortals funding Diablo 4. That's one way to look at it, I guess. Technically, it came out first. I think they have plenty of things to fund Diablo 4, though. <laughs> So we get to 80, we're gonna do a lot of Hell Countess, and we're gonna try to look for some of those runes that are going to get us a couple of easy upgrades for that trap farm. And maybe we find some more bases that could be useful in addition to the ones we found doing this farm. Hard to say. Bases can take a while sometimes. Like I said though, if you're only looking for bases in the end, you can also like farm racks and lower crossed. And if you're doing a single player, in a certain map seed, uh, approaching a rack from a certain angle uh, with a certain number of monsters around it can produce consistent bases. So that's one thing that you can do in single player, of course.
If you play the new season of P2, I probably will. I'll probably go Necromancer, honestly. Hello. Uh, it depends on what they're doing, though. I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't have a... That's a tough class to do, too, so we'll see what's up with that. I'm probably going to play it though, don't worry about it, man. Um, didn't see why I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I still have these throwing spears in here in here as well. Can I help you? Keep some more base options here. And that dagger just got a lot of ED. A coward's hiding place. You can turn the sound off if you don't want to hear him say that every time, or you could just kill Nolothok, but that's totally unnecessary. Killing Nolothok, I wouldn't say, is one of the barbarian's greatest strengths, and that's because he um, doesn't really get much from it. Like, unless it's terror keys, it's kind of rough for him to farm other keys in the game. He can't hork Nilothok. So, like, there's just so many other things that you can farm that are, like, more efficient in the board. Which is why we didn't show that farm in part two. We can kill Nilothok really quick, though. Level 80, oh yeah. Mm. Okay. Good stuff. Yeah, see that's only 43%. Let's go Grimboard actually. Yeah, we can, uh... Remord can actually boost her damage a bit here. Of course, uh, if you look at the skill tree, Fine Potion will actually, uh also increase its effectiveness, and this can of course also break immunities to physical. Used on top of a Bone Break Sender Charm. Sword, four sockets. See, the problem with the champion sword, though, is this is just a random haphazard fast base. Alright, so what we're gonna do real quick, we're gonna go kill Nilothok. I mean, it's not hard to kill Nilothok, it's just more like it's a. It's not what we'd call an efficient farm on this character. It's not as bad as cows, though. I mean, cows, there's literally no point to doing that. Mm. It's not inherently better than this, though, unfortunately. There's a white CB, but too much strength requirement, most likely. Look 
how dangerous this area is too. Like it's kind of nuts. Hitting flares is really good. That's the one thing like a Warcry Barbarian would do extremely well against at all times, but like, eh, yeah, it's it's rough. Wanna make an F Oath on a Conquest Sword to practice budget Zerg Barb in case I ever play letter. Yeah, Oath is better than F3 old base though, because it's indestructible. But you can always put it in like a, a janky base if you wanted to. The problem with Oath is the base though, getting a four socketed F sword or something or other. Yeah, it'd be a little tough. Honestly, Highland would be the best, but Balrog's okay, and Cryptic is better than Conquest, but those bases you mentioned aren't bad, those are just not the best ones. You can do it in a Champion Sword, but it's not ideal. Oh god. Oh shit. Those dudes are never gonna die. Eesh. They have so much armor. So much physical resistance. Yeah, like I said, this area is kind of tough for this. It's not like the he's he's not quite like the assassin either, where he can just kind of like blind things. So th this area would be a pretty tough farm. I didn't address this farm directly in part two, but it's not a very good farm though. Not for the barb. Not until later. We need more gear. Even then. It's not really his forte. Cows is never good though. <laughs> Just don't do that. Well, there we go. That's that can happen. He was cursed. That's unfortunate. Good afternoon. Well, let's see. Yeah, I saw he was cursed. I didn't think he'd actually Get it on me, that's okay. Nice, okay. Try again. <laughs> this is why this is why I didn't show this off anyway, because this farm's very difficult on the barb early on. You would need to get like an oath at the very least. You need something to berserk him down. Berserk is Berserk and Howl are actually solid for Illithok, but you'd have to get to that point. <laughs> You don't have anything to do that with at the moment. I tried not exploding. I tried. I really did, man. A coward's hiding place. Harder than it looks. I should have made a backup there just in case. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this, but we'll see. <laughs> it work right is terrible for this because what happens is you end up killing his minions before you can kill him, and then every once in a while he can get in a corpse explosion. Yeah, it's uh not ideal. But yeah. Yeah, leap attack can work against him as well. We're gonna need some kind of weapon to actually do those things though, for sure. But the thing about the Barbarian though is it's not even like... If you're trying to go from rags to riches, you don't have to do another talk at all. 
Not on this character. I kinda wanna just do it. Just for fun here, just do it once. I just realized something. There's a reason why we're dying a lot here. We are actually using terrible gear for this. Using our MF gear. Uh oh. Yeah, we want to go back to our damage gear for uh, Countess in a second anyway. Yeah, that's not good. Also, with that fire, is uh, of course Nilothox going to kill us in one shot. And that would explain some things. Doesn't explain everything, but it explains enough. It's pretty painful stuff there. Uh, right, okay, so we'll do that. Actually, go. We could go Alders for now. But I won't do it for this. Wait, how much fire is do we have? Uh, I could have fire res. Could have 50 fire res though. Let's actually use that for now, yeah. What do you need? Use uh use Alders Advance. Alders booties. Is this our actual setup? Yeah, this is the setup we were using. No cold res. No lightning res. Max fire res. That's how we kill Nilla Thaw. There we go. I wasn't even thinking about my build. I was just like, oh, I'm gonna kill Nilothok. Not a good idea, honestly. If I'm being real. Pretty dangerous. Oh, now we actually do damage again. What do you know? Damage, got fire resistance. This should be a bit better. This should be a bit better. What you just saw there is what not to do. Use your MF gear this early in the game to try to kill the Warthog. So there's three locations where the waypoint can be, and cause a pain. That location means that. Holes is here. I want to find Nilothok. It's the one with two paintings. One here and one here. See, this one only has one on this wall, but not on that wall. So you see the one with two. Let's go. There we go. And he's not cruise. As you can see, not insanely dangerous, as long as he's not cursed. He's cursed, you're gonna need Berserk, and you're gonna need to make sure that you uh, howl everything else away. Actually, can I... Let's see, is my howl any good for this, or...? Uh, I don't know, actually. Let's see. I could actually check it out. Yeah. Okay, I guess you could have used Howl as well. Yeah, see, Howl's another good way to deal with things like that as well. Especially when you're not looking to, like, actually kill the other monsters. 
So you would use Howl and then Berserk ideally, that's the ideal configuration to go kill him, but once again, um, at this point in the game when you have this level of items, you're, you're not doing that yet. Aram Delvik, is this hardcore? No. Uh, this is a guided playthrough. Don't make my guides on hardcore because you can just die in the middle of it and then you can't upload it to YouTube and that sucks. Mithrinward. Could do that, but then I'll lose my faster cast rate, so I'm probably not making Mithrinward. That's probably not happening. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go do... Oh, look at that HP. That's beautiful. 3,000 HP. Merc is a bit leveled up. Our level's actually pretty good now. And that also means that our level's a bit closer to the level of the monsters in Travancool. Which means our attack rating penalty won't be as bad either. In case we get some more gear for that. Um, I think we're going to put some other ones though. We're going to show a whole bunch of gear upgrades and different gear configurations. After we do a pretty heavy hell countess farm here and try to farm some more bases and runes. And then we'll talk about what kinds of other things we can make here pretty early on in the game. You never know. God tier RNG is still possible as well, but you don't need it to do any of the things that I'm going to be showing you here in this video. If you get any of that God tier RNG, though, well. I'm gonna start making that grief, start making whatever. Berserk plus grief is really strong. And that bad orders is a synergy for Berserk as well, and so is Hal. Make Berserk and so much wrong. I might be feeling pretty safe oftentimes with that 3000 HP, but. That engagement there was a reminder of how bad it can be sometimes. So notice I have all my faster run walk gear on. I have my teleport staff. And then I have faster run walk boots. Like the whole goal here, you don't even need elders. You could just get 40 faster run walk res boots from Nightmare. You remember from part two? Yeah, part two, yeah. Towards the beginning, but yeah. And then you can do that as well. But we found Aller's Boots, I think from, what was it? Fisto? Maybe. You can still kill Elite Packs along the way if you want to. And especially since you have Quirk, it's definitely not a terrible idea to do that. But you don't have to, you can just go straight to Countess. Talked about this farm already though. We already showed it off quite a bit. Now we're actually doing a heavy countess, hell countess farm. Remember, countess can drop up to S reliably, which means Malrun can very easily be within our grasp here. I think Mal is easier to get though than the base for Oath, and that's the problem with Oath. Maybe try to make it like a non-ethereal sword, just to uh, show you guys a lot of oaths damage and potential, but won't be able to see all of it. Maybe. I do have a force socketed two-handed sword, though. Put that one point work cry in though for sure. Let's see though. Stun length. You ever go storm lash with a barb? Um uh, no, but I imagine the static field would be pretty good. It's an extremely rare item though, so I guess you're just asking me for, you know, randomness purposes. You would we would never have a storm lash at this point, I don't think. If we were just playing solo like this. But I imagine the uh, static field would be pretty cool. Oh my gosh! 
Wow, look at that. Look at that. That is a uh, that's riches right there. You're not a uh, Javazon, but if you were, I just found a javelin skill juicy there. Can't give it to you, Rose. It's all good. See, the problem is, you can hork everything, but you can't hork bosses like that. The only boss in the game you can hork is the Cow King. Fun fact, with the uh, find item skill. Also, I just realized you have 48% find item now, so... It's actually looking pretty nice. Yeah, see, the Countess is off-limits. Is she not gonna she not gonna drop it man that's crazy man that's crazy that's really crazy mm -mm -mm. I need that ring I don't think so but you never know. Normally you'd want to like trade that or something, or use it for gold find yourself, but I'm gonna make some room here. That's a cool item. At this point, you can keep cubing rings if you want. I'm probably not gonna bother anymore though. One thing to know is, yeah, I think we're good there. I can also remove some charms with this setup. I should be able to remove a, uh, maybe not, I don't know. I like my fast room lock. Oh, why are we in act five? <laughs> you didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, a lot of people don't actually, so strangely enough, you can actually get double Cow King drops, which means you can get like 10 items from him. It's the only monster in the game you can do that to, though. Uh, besides that, it's only the monsters that drop two items at maximum you can do. Which are the, uh... For the super unique monsters, the ones with the set names. Always fun. You may as well kill some elites here and there while you're doing this. Might get some bases you're looking for. Since we have uh, almost 50% fine item now on the War Cry damage setup. We have 10% MF now. What? That's relevant. It'd be nice if you could uh if you could just find item on the Countess corpse though, huh? You're still looking for certain runeward bases, like for uh, Oathor Obedience. Make sure to always check those racks. Like, uh, getting that Ethereal Force Socketed Sword for Oath is definitely ideal. Non Ethereal Sword is just not the same. But I think even a non Ethereal Oath is better than an uh, Unbending Will. Not sure about that, but I think so. Oh, I bet you were blown away. I can't. F Highland Blade is actually the best base because of attack speed and damage, but yeah, Balrog Blade is also good. 
At any rate, it's gonna be tough to find it. Obedient space is a lot easier to find. Keep those uh, mean to physical monsters stunned. News. I don't even know if we need like half this crap, but you never know, right? Never hurts to be somewhat prepared, I suppose. Um, that's a good item, though. You have four piece Saigons, though. At this point in the game, we don't necessarily need chip gems. Like, we never use the chip gems to repair teleport staff, but you definitely can. Where's this one, though? Uh, I don't know. Honestly. I don't think I'd want to make that on the mercenary anyway, but I could go for other three socketed things though. I might try to roll a five socketed base for obedience. That would work. Welcomes you. A Thresher will also get maximum five sockets. It's also an elite base. It's actually a bit of a faster base too. Attack speed does matter for Whirlwind unless you're playing Project Diablo 2 and then that's the only skill it doesn't matter for. It's the only physical damage skill. Happy accidents! You feeling Rose? That's Faust. Yeah, so. I haven't seen any of those, like, Hell Countess runes yet, though. Even when I was farming her earlier on. In the guide here. That's the thing, though. It'd be kind of sad if we can't make uh, some of these rune words, but it also wouldn't be the end of the world. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Remember to keep selling items, keep up your charges. Are you gonna be burning art runes and chip gems to repair your teleport staff? And that's maybe not preferred because those runes are actually useful. We're gonna keep going though. You don't have to constantly teleport. I try to use it for the walls though. We do have faster run walk speed now. We got really good fast run walk. Even got some charms helping out. In addition to increased speed on everything. So we're actually running pretty fast, which is nice. Run speed plus teleport doesn't hurt. Come on, Lum Rune, come on, Pull Rune, come on, Mal Rune. I don't know, man. We'll see what we can get here. This is definitely a worthy farm to start preparing for Travancore. Hopefully, it doesn't take longer than what we have here. The goal is to be able to farm these things comfortably, so this farm might be alone. Soul Rune. Um, honestly, I don't think we need another Soul Rune. We have plenty of it. At this point, you would just trade it. Not so. Dex. Can, if you wanted to, with 50% find item, you can work all these bodies 
The fun fact about, uh, if you're in Players 1, one way to kind of make up for that is the fact that the fine item doesn't care about the player count. You? And your chance of actually finding an item from a regular monster is higher if you use fine item than just from killing it. Yes. It's a very strange thing. You can maybe like find uh, high runes doing that. Just uh, sitting there and horking all the bodies. Yes. You could do that if you want. It's not a terrible strat. Waste a little bit of time there at the end. It's the reason why like if you were just following like you know your friends killing everything, getting a really high fine item with fine item and fine potion is just really insane. Just double down on all the drops. One thing that makes the Barb stronger than other classes when it comes to late game farming, even mid game to a degree, is that fine item skill. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Get rock and need you. What? You go all the way to like Stony Field for that nonsense. And if you want, I'd rather farm uh, Hell Eldritch though, because he actually has a better drop table. Or Pendle, or even Shank, really. I guess you have to go to Act Five for that. Longer load times. Okay. Superstitious thinking is very common in D2, right, Rose? This game will mess with your head. Start doing things you never thought you'd want to do. See, with like 3,000 health, it's actually a. Uh, it really doesn't feel that dangerous. Anymore. One thing I could have done is instead of socketing the Umrun, even though that's a really smart thing to do, you're desperate for that Mal for some reason for Oath. You might want to hold on to it because two Ums can make a Mal. Now, that's not economically effective either, but. Um, if you do happen to get another um rune, you can get that mal rune. The mal rune is the toughest rune to get for oath, so. Depending on RNG, of course, but typically that is the case. It's kind of like saving up vex runes for an ohm rune. And of course, these strats on single player can really make a big difference. Pump them into the range. Just do it. <laughs> oh man, Tediaki. That's rank. OP though. Oh, okay. 
That actually helps there. That actually helps. There we go. Got an IR rune. This can be quite useful, actually. There's a useful rune. Thank you, Countess. Countess might be useful here. It might just take a while. Good day. Patience is the game, though. She's still your, our best shot for any of those runes we're looking for. I liked my arcane farm guide for barbs. <laughs> what, what, what did I do in that? <laughs> I didn't make an arcane farm guide for barbs, did I? Or can't farm arcane? Or just leaping around. Yeah. like you made that up. I mean, I guess you can farm arcane on a barb on Project Diablo 2 with some efficacy, but... <laughs> That's right, it wasn't for barbs, but it worked. <laughs> There you go. I think you were testing me or something. Why would I do that? We got hardcore items, yeah, man. It's going good, man. What? Okay, that's a problem, actually. <laughs> See, this is this is what we needed a long time ago. Three Amruns! Remember when we were farming like Nightmare Countess and uh, it took like 40 runs to get one Amrun? Yeah, I remember. I, I remember that. I, I do. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I distinctly remember that. And we just got three Amruns. One drop. Yeah, I'll take Io runes though. Let's see. Those are easier to get from Hell Countess than Nightmare Countess. So the Hell rune drops. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's about the same. Arcane's OP, but not for barbs. <laughs> it might help you make your barb, though. That is true. Just because you want to play a barb doesn't mean you have to start a barb. But if you want to start a barb, I'm detailing all kinds of helpful tips throughout these uh, Rack Searches Barbarian journey here.
You know, I posted Barbed Rags for Riches Part 1 earlier, and I've never seen so much excitement in my comment section on a YouTube, like, for an anticipated video, like, ever. Like, oh my god, the barb one, it's here! You know, the barb has a lot of love, I'll give him that. <laughs> I think it's because... I think a lot of the people that play Diablo 2 really are hipsters, and they really enjoy, like, trying to do something difficult. And this character really does have a, a tough progression in the early game. So it's like... Another Saigon's beast. It's like the third one. They really are, man. They love Barbarian. They've been looking for Barb to start, man. I've never seen so much excitement, though. It's like, it's like, not just from like one person, it's like multiple people. Like, oh my god, oh my god. It's the Barb one. It's only part one up right now, but... Well, people like Rags for Riches, period, but everyone's been asking for the barb one. It's like, when are you going to do the barb one? When are you going to do the barb one? And, you know, we're finally finishing it up here. And we, we did the barb one. It's just incredible to see how many people really wanted to see Barbarian Rags for Riches, though. I like, I think it's good, though. That's good. Why? I love how Barb is advertised as the starter class. Uh, I mean, it's simple. Yes. But it's also insanely tough, so just because it's just, you know, he doesn't do as much damage, man. Ads, yeah, ads happen for sure. I think it's time I start like rolling some bases and crafting some things so I can empty my uh, inventory a bit here. I plan to do that after Countess, but it's gonna be tough to do. I'm running out of room constantly. Normally you just create mules to solve this problem, but I've never done that for rags to riches. Don't plan on doing it now. You only play barbs? Sweet! Glad to hear that, man. <laughs> Is that it, meaty portions? Wow, that, I've never heard it described like that. No, I think what it is is people do like to cheer for the underdog, you know, they like to cheer for the tough one. They want to see the challenge playthrough, you know. And I do challenge playthroughs on my stream, but, you know, I also like to make solid meta guides, too, you know. I don't consider this a challenge playthrough, I consider this a guide. I can already but, tell that I'll be your best friend in this fight. No, I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean. Like, people... People do like to cheer for the underdog, you know. The Barb, at least to start, is the underdog, you know. He's, uh... He's tough. In the beginning. He's really tough, genuinely so. Barb... Alright, so there's just a lot of runes at this point we don't need that I'm just not gonna bother picking up. 
What can I do for you? If they were still worth something at this point, you know, when you get to this point, you should definitely just pick them all up and trade them in bulk or whatever. But I'm not gonna bother. We're on a mission right now. Try to see if we can farm out some of these last runes and bases so that I can make a bunch of rune words for you guys and I can show you guys how to crush it even more. I'm Barbarian Ragster, which will show you guys some more strats. Yoshino ya 888 thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the Cult of Xanander's Day. I already can show you guys more strats though, based on what we already have though, so that's a good sign. I mean, it's the best class in the game for elite target magic finding in the late game, yeah. But I think in the early game he's the underdog, and, you know, it's a class a lot of people think is not good. But after I showed, you know, Devil Throw, you know, I showed, like, other things, I showed this skill. You can see the barb's really not that bad. I think a lot of people just don't know what to do on him. That's what this guide is all about. So if you just want to make Barb for his character, you'll see kind of a nice early, very early mid, early game progression. So maybe a little bit into mid game here. And then you can kind of see how to go from there. Lightning Immunes, yeah, so there's a couple things about Lightning Immunes. One, you can just skip them in a lot of cases. Two, once you get a higher damage weapon like a Titans, you can use Jab to kill them. Um, three, you're going to want at the very beginning, if you want to kill the Lightning Immunes, uh, obviously you can get like a Crack of the Heavens Lightning Cinder term once you start farming Terror Zones. And you're going to want that, but on top of that, you're also going to want other negative enemy res, and... I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken game. You can get Conviction Aura, but you're going to want to farm a lower resistance wand, so a lower resistance charge wand. Um, the best way to do this is to go into Nightmare and farm Drognan. Get a map where the town entrance is right next to him and just run in and out of the town. And, uh, wow, Shaco. I just run in and out of the town there. On the Javazon. And then farm for a lower resist charge wand. So it needs to say lower resistance charges. Keep that on your offhand or swap it with your teleport staff, your teleport charge staff if you have one. And then cast lower resist on the enemies with lightning immunity. And then with charge strike you should be able, or, uh, or lightning fury, you should be able to do damage to them. More sources of negative res, like facets and griffins and infinity, you'll do a lot more. Um, Crack of the heavens helps even more. It's having that charm in your inventory. Um, but until you get to that point, get that lower resistance charm. Drognan Act 2, you need to farm a lower resist charge wand. It's the skill on the Necromancer, but it's charges. Now you're going to have to use gold or or runes and chip gems to repair the charges on it. Um, but if you absolutely have to fight the lightning immunes, you can use that. Like, let's say in Chaos, you're going to need that, right? Uh, to get past the Stormcasters. But you also don't need to fight every light immune you come across. So you can just pass them up, you can skip them. Ah, it's a mage plate, that could be good. Vizier. Vizier! Vizier! Two socketed mage plate. You know, I like that actually. 
That might be what we want here. Um, yeah, it's better than this for sure. Use that for smoke. Resock and Mage Plate would be really good for like treachery or wealth. Problem is, Countess isn't dropping any of those big boy runes yet, and that's kind of how it is with uh, Hell Countess, unfortunately. It can take a while to start getting some of these runes. Um, longer than Nightmare Countess takes to drop her highest runes because they're just worse odds. This is why I was going to save all this farming for part 3 so that I can make them as strong as possible, at least for this video. Because I already knew this is going to take a lot of farming. But, you know, we're comfortably farming hell, so for all the work that we did in part 2. We got a couple of upgrades already today, but not much. We already did the big, big work, you know. I like how that we have Alder's Boots, so that's really cool. Okay, why do we have this? Not, I don't need the fire or something. Maybe I should get a map, actually. Enough so I don't mess up the bases. Well, what we can also do get 50 MF off Saigon's boots. Right. Ah, so you haven't been doing any farming at all. Yeah, that's it's not ideal. Um I mean you can play that way, but it's the game eventually becomes really tough, you know, anyone can tell you that. But if you do it like that, the game is gonna eventually become really challenging. Come on, Countess. Be nice to us here. I don't even think she's dropped the terror key yet. What a boob. Alright, I've got a... Yeah, so... Basically... Okay, basically... Wait, why do I have all these? I don't understand. Oh god, so many gems are not cubed up. That's part of the problem here too. This stash is just a tornado, but you guys can see that. Oh my goodness, okay. Um, yeah, how about we actually try keeping some of this crap up? That might be nice. A little bit. Just a little bit, you know. Doesn't need to be much. I mean, I do realize I'm trying to keep these for crafting and whatnot, but my goodness. Doesn't have to be this bad. Um, yeah, I'm going to show off some basic crafting recipes and things like that. Well, I might have done that in part two, but eh, it's okay. Greetings. It's worse than a woman's purse. Oh man, I gotta do something about that then. <laughs> Yikes, that's a that's a telling statement. <clears throat> The dreaded moment. The dreaded moment when your girl asks you to uh, look for an item in her purse. Do you know it's never gonna happen? It's like a black hole. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. They might know where it is, though. Just by virtue of, a, you know, having an exact map out of where things could be. <laughs> I can't find everything in my purse. Kanasaka? Yeah, see, that's what I mean, but you ask a guy to find him? Forget about it. You know what I'm gonna do, actually? I'm gonna maintain 40 faster run walk, but I'm actually gonna put on... I'm just gonna put on my MF here. Yeah, because I don't actually need anything. I have at least, like, 32 MF. That might help a bit here. You don't have to kill these other monsters, but... I might just start skipping them, honestly. I'll hork the, uh... I'll hork the bodies around Countess. And I'll use the bonus MF for Countess. There we go. You love these rags for riches runs? Awesome, man. See, we got part one Barbarian on YouTube. People are so excited for the Barb one, man. He's the toughest one, and they're excited for it. But, you know, I guess that's the point. It's the tough one. It's a goal at this moment. Trying to get runes, so... You know, I've explained it a few times, but Countess can drop up to Is, right? And she's the highest probability drop any of those runes up to Is in the game. And for the Barb, that's especially true. So, getting a rune like uh, Mal, Lum, or Pull would be insanely good. I mean, Lem could be nice, too. There's a lot of things that could be nice, really, but... I haven't seen her drop a rune, not a single one though, that um, Nightmare Countess can't drop yet though. Actually, no. Did she drop Ko when I farmed her the first time? I can already tell that I'll be your have. best friend in this forsaken no, Wait, we found a Ko from Nightmare Forge. No, that's not what that was. Which is good, because we need Ko runes, but I don't think she dropped that. Romeo, Mr. Decido. Lots of follows tonight. Thanks guys, hope you guys are having a great night. Some nice uh, Hellbarb farming. Some early game Hellbarb farming here. You didn't know already, before you can get any kind of weapons whatsoever, you should probably be Warcry, at least uh, mostly Warcry. As you know, as you probably already know, I'm also capable of farming bosses very well on the same build. But this way, we're gonna find a job before I find a, a Malrune. Look how long they're stunned for with Warcry. They can't do anything to you unless you want them to. It's too many Rao runes. We're not gonna need those. What's the skill tree look like? Like this, you got the one pointers into masteries. You got concentrate, you got leap. You could also do leap attack as some people have mentioned. And then you can do uh, Warcry, just Warcry synergies and find item in Grimward. Hello. Should actually use some more Grimward, but the problem with Grimward is that Grimward um, it fears the monsters. Yeah, that's no good. Yeah, I'm not gonna care as much about blue amulets and rings anymore. We're kind of past that a little bit. We still have the crappiest 10 of Seer Rings. Just need a rare one, really. You're pointless. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Someone knows the joke. 
I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what did the triangle say to the circle? So now you're level 80, you should also keep in mind that you're not going to get experience by killing monsters out here. In the tower, you'll still get some experience, but yeah, like killing monsters out here really won't give you experience anymore. It could give you items, but... I am not pointless, I'm a circle. Last, I have no points. Oh, look at that. That, that could be an upgrade to our three socketed helm, but it's not a big one though. So I'm probably not gonna use it. But just a note, something like a fine item is good. I mean, obviously, Warcry would be good if you're using it. And then you can put perfect topaz in this for more MF. So, fine item is good because then you get more fine item percentage. That's one way to boost it while you're just finding that. It's better than any three socket helm any other class can use, so. Already, just by having that. Well, I guess a druid could use one, but. It's not gonna be a. Uh... Can't be lied down, man. That's also a free point to find item in case you don't want to put points down there. But usually you're going to want to, so wouldn't recommend that. Now we're going to start running faster here. My hotkeys. I'm gonna die. Okay. Thought I was gonna die after I did that swing, but I guess the Merc is just insanely tanky at this point. Merc's like, I have Shaft Stop on. Like, how am I gonna die? It's like, yeah. That sounds about right. How are you gonna die, Mr. Mercenary? How is it gonna happen? One thing to note about the tower is that there's a lot of these like clickable objects, like these bodies, these open graves, they can drop a lot of really good things. Um, you might see that here. I've seen it in rags for riches before though. There's a co-rune finally. Ah. Well, that's a good sign, because that means no matter what now, we can make both obedience and harmony. Very nice. That is finally a room that Nightmare Countess cannot drop. It's a very useful rune at that. Nice. Okay. Keep it coming, Countess. Keep it coming. Any more runes like that. That's really the key to getting to the next level. Or I'm at a small term. Or it's. I've already found three uh, minor MF small terms here. 36 MF? Yeah, I'll take it. Never know. I'll get lucky here. You know, I actually am, uh, Reese. You should see some of the items we have. <laughs> but, uh, we have quite a few items that are actually really, uh, surprising. 
Oh yeah. We're not like super rich though. To get to those super riches, we're, we're trying to make our way to Travical, so... That's the, uh, that's the goal behind this here. No command to see the gear it changes too often. Yep, that's correct. The, the gear is... It, the gear and the approaches are flexible in this guide. But that's why we have the YouTube videos. If you guys, you know, watch Barb Rags to Riches Part 1, which is on the YouTube already, you can actually see most of the gear that we need to actually do this. So, it's already up. Part 1's already up. Um, the gear, of course, is shown at the end of Part 1, so you can see where we were at. It's not all the fun stuff that we found in Part 2, but... Hey, you know, it's pretty solid. Trying to get runes for my Barb's weapons? Yeah, pretty much. Various weapons, you know, race. Um, yeah. Various weapons. Various weapons. While we like try to get to level 80, 82, I think, while we do this. That'll help us uh, be able to wear everything else we still can't wear. Not just weapons though, like armors as well, things like that. There's more strats we want to show off in Rags to Riches Part 3, so that's what we're doing. At least ideally. Takes more farming though, this is elective farming. We've already, we're, we're already capable of doing some very uh, cool things, so that's good. We can do trap. Um, it's just slower, and I can only show off the work I strat right now. Yeah, we'll show off the work I strat, you know, with whatever we have, and then we'll kind of show people like some other weapons you can use and ways to do it. Trav is wide open. There's a lot of ways to do trap on the barb, but you do want to do trap on the barb, and that's the important thing. No, at least not in multiplayer. Kind of surprised, honestly. I would have thought maybe they would have tried to come out with those at some point. I don't even know if they're still going to do them. We'll see. TZ Trav in single player. Ooh, nice. Oh, the TZ was Trav. Wow. Well, that's not the order I wanted to do things, though. What the heck? We found a Jab GC. That was kind of nuts. There's a lot of nutty things you're going to find, though, playing any character, including the Barb. Once you can start from the hill. Elrin, okay. Workable. Whoa! What is this? Dang. Look at this ring. AR, mana. Light res, life leech. Hmm. I need that later. I doubt we're gonna use this either, honestly, but I guess I'll keep one of them just in case. Not gonna use that anymore either. 
I really need to start like doing some crafting now. That'll unload like a whole stash tab. Not super small res, it's decent. Oh. Shoot, right of teleports. A barb is that a lot of people I think also appreciate a slower grind, you know. Feels a bit more chill as well. It's safe and yet relatively safe anyway. It's a grind I think a lot of people can appreciate. find a good example of something I can kind of kill by using Grimoire, by the way. See, now I can damage the ghost. It's no longer physical, I mean, because of Grimoire. And notice that I still don't have, like, Decrepify or something from Lawbringer, so it still takes a really long time to kill it. So it's not like you want to do that most of the time, most of the time you just want to pass them up as you've been doing throughout the guide, but like if you want to engage them, Grimward breaks physical immunity, it really does, and it's the easiest way to get physical break at this point in the game. Pretty crazy uh, how long it takes to kill them, though. You can also use this just to lower physical resistance in general. You don't have to break immunities only with it. It's usually not necessary, but and you're, you're never gonna find a use for this against bosses because it requires a corpse nearby and things like that. There's a lot of other good uses though. Also, typically before you kill like Eldritch or Pendle, you've already killed most of the minions anyway, around him. But... So there we go. Look at that. Look at that fast kill. There's an Elrin. More useful runes. This could all drop from Nightmare Countess, though. That Korun was nice, though. I don't want more Korun's. You also found them on Aya Rune. And as you can see, these runes of this caliber are a lot easier than farming Nightmare Countess. At the Barb, you can. It's not even super insanely dangerous like it would be with a lot of other characters and classes. That's the thing. Where are the co runes? Though? That's the thing. Uh, I don't know. Oh, no, there's one co rune. I thought I had another one too. Am I tripping? I know I had another one somewhere. I think I did. Oh, there's another one. Oh, okay. I gotta say. Yeah, those are good. Hello. And these uh these upper mid runes here are very key to the barbarian being able to move 
and more confidently farm some of these hill farms. I mean, we're already farming everything with reasonable confidence at the end of Braxter, which is part two. But like, there's just some of these basic things, man. I have all the Korins gone. That's where all the cowboys went, man. Same place. I have too many runes. Need to use them. If we want to do Terrazins anyway, we have to kill Bale. But it is interesting to note that Terrorize Trav is probably like the one reason like you, why at some point you do want to kill Bale. But it's not... It's not really key to Barbarian Rags or Riches at all. Her eyes trap is insanely good though. Of course, uh, we're not even a high enough level to make use of the Terror Zone, so it's another reason why we don't do this in this guide. We can't even get the council members a higher level than they would be otherwise. Be, uh, it's 82 versus their current level, which is 85, so even once we hit 82, they'll be pretty much right on par, which won't do any good. Fortunately, that is not something we'll be showing off, but that's okay. Hell Ancients wouldn't actually be too bad. Especially if you use your crushing blue builds. Key is to isolate them and then to just use like concentrate or double swing with the uh, crushing blow gear. We've already shown that, but you can also use Warwind as well. Just gotta be careful though, they do a lot of damage. Leeching and ouching and oofing and. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken game. There's another Hellrun. You can see Hellruns from Hell Countess are way more common than they are from Hell Countess. Dang it, man, he died. Rip. Mr. Anderson, thanks so much for the follow. Welcome to Cole's Anderson. <laughs> Corins are OP, yeah, true. How many jewels do we have? Not enough. <laughs> Goodness. Do we even use that at this point? Probably not. It's an option, but don't think you can use that. Probably. Yeah, you can definitely thin down our holdings on some of those as well. The order welcomes you. Well, the thing about Hell Countess is if you can kill her as easily as I can, right? Is that not only can you get all those runes that the Nightmare Countess drops, and they're more common, the higher runes that Nightmare Countess can drop become more common from Hell Countess. You can also get the really high ones, right? Now that's gonna take some luck, right? But watch us get Ist instead of Mal, and then that's okay. We don't need to show Oath necessarily. It would be nice to though. Mal Mal is sufficiently rare though that it might be out of the range of a Rags to Riches guide, but. We don't need Mel. We can use all the other runes. Rowl is... I mean, we can get lucky, obviously, but... Or we can get better luck. We have a nice Oath base. Not really a nice one. That's the other thing, is like... Oath isn't really the only deal, but the thing about Berserk, though, is that Berserk 
allows you to stack even more magic find because all you need really is a good weapon and then pretty much the rest of your gear can just be magic find. You can really abuse that for things like Travancool. I mean besides you know fire res and things like that. That's one of the reasons why like Oath and Berserk is so good. We'll talk about that more and you know hopefully we can demo it but if we can't it's okay. We'll demo what we can at the end of this farm. Easy. That was a nice one. Multi shot archer. Ah, phase blade. That could be interesting. So phase blade. If you use the uh, Raoul Am Perfect Amethyst recipe, you can get a random number of sockets up to maximum in the phase blade, kind of like Armor's Tal Full Perfect Topaz. There we go, lower her physical res a bit with the uh, Grimward. Damn. Grimward is so sick, I'm glad they actually made it useful in the uh, D2R. It's really cool. Save up that money for repair costs, yep. That's something we talk about quite a bit here. I don't know if some of you guys have just come in part 3, but... Oh yeah, this has been a, been a thing in the making here. Okay. Oh, got an F. Nice. Just gotta find the jaw on the burr now. So phase blade's interesting because if you can get six sockets in a phase blade, you can actually make a decent unbending will, which is the new rune word. That one's actually halfway decent for berserk as well. Uh, if you get five sockets, if you ever get that low rune from like you know super chest and OK or maybe super chest and arcane. Wherever, even Travancool, then you can make grief if you get low and mal. And so, there's a lot of good things you can do with uh, that particular base there. Lots of tantalizing options. Tasty options. Um, I guess we'll keep this base though. I am keeping way too many things, and we need to like. You crafting, I think. I think you're gonna run out of things you can safely throw out until. One thing we could do actually is we can actually cube up some hell runes real quick. Let's see, hell, hell, hell. Isn't that a. Isn't that chipped ruby? No, it's not. I think that's chipped diamond. Yeah, chip diamond. There you go. Yeah, I just remembered it slightly wrong. That's all. Okay. Cool. Not in town. Yeah, always there. Those Faraja cube recipes are your best friend if you can't tell already. One thing we'll do actually real quick here. Show you guys. Uh, so we can use a chipped ruby. Use the teleport staff, and this is one way to save your gold. So we've never shown this one yet. That's how you repair your charges without using gold. So you're gonna need to do that. I've talked about it many times that I actually did it there. You never know when you're gonna have to do it. Um, we actually need more iron runes potentially, so you may as well just cube up some of those hell runes you've been finding. I think that's a pretty solid approach. I'm gonna have to start doing some more crafting too though. All these all this garbage in my stash has a potential use at this point. They spawn declone, I'm ready for that too. I have like open wounds and I can uh, 
I have my crushing blow. Should be able to kill him. Good chance, anyway. I think if I switch to Whirlwind, though, I have a better chance, honestly. Speedrun strats. Yeah, it's a lot of these types of things that you'll um, observe in a speedrun as well. Of course, the goal here is to go from naked to being capable of getting rich, not a speedrun. Speedrun's only goal is to complete the game. Um, so it's a little different, but you're right. You use a lot of the same strats. A lot of the same knowledge carries over, and uh, that's something that's very important. However, in a Rags to Riches farm, you really want to make sure that you get all of your foundational items so that farming isn't painful. The key is to make farming as li as not painful as possible so you can efficiently farm. It's not just to complete the game. Completing the game, believe it or not, doesn't take as much. You just have to be uh, more methodical about it and you will kill things eventually. But yeah, the point of this guide is a little different from a speedrun. This is not a speedrun. I mean, you can probably tell. I'm farming Hell Countess. You never farm Hell Countess in a speedrun. Um, that's, uh, that's absurd. I'll we'll never do that. Speedrun, you do the bare minimum farms that are going to give you really the biggest bang for your buck at every point. But if you're doing a lot of sustained farming, you need to gear up your Barbarian more than that, because otherwise you're going to be farming very inefficiently. That's very different. But the goal is just to complete the game. Hey, you can always, uh, you can make it work with almost nothing. He is, uh, how patient you want to be. Obviously, it's better to have gear in a speedrun because then you can uh, do things faster, but never guaranteed, and it's never necessary. Alright, so that is a dual rune. Okay. I don't know. Why haven't I seen a single lum rune yet? I've seen two Ko's and no lums. I feel like that's kind of unlucky. But if we have to, we'll use up all these Iron runes that I'm going to be queuing, cubing up here. And then we'll uh, cube up some Lum runes, maybe. In addition to the ones that we use on the second Black Foil. <clears throat> Barb speedrun day. Yeah, no. Believe it or not, a barbs. I think the fastest time for a barb speedrun is like six hours or something now, all the way through hell. That's really fast. Just shows just how bare minimum everything can be. I wouldn't mind doing barb speedruns. Just uh, because it's not a speedrun. It's like a, it's a fast slow run. RNG would totally destroy you, though, on a barb run, though. You need so much RNG. Uh, sorry for this, you need almost nothing, but on a barb, it's a bit different. Like, if you don't get your black flail, like your toast, <laughs> run's dead. Slow black flail, rip. No spirit sword for uh, war cry. That's probably a dead run. Not even one spirit sword. Oh yeah, I know. McCall blows the barbarian. I think maybe that's why he raided me, actually, because he knows I'm playing barb. Yeah, Barb is Barb's a small degree of torture and a speedrunner for sure. Does McCall currently have the record for uh, 
Hell barb in any category, like detour or anything. It's uh, it's impressive if he does. It's like minus one though. <laughs> yeah, I haven't really kept up with it honestly. There's a time when uh, Ryu had like what four or five or even six of the seven hell uh, records, all of them except for Sorceress, basically. Which even then, Indra had. <laughs> Times have come so much further down since then, and now there's like different categories for classic D2 and for uh, D2R. D2R is basically a whole new like speedrun set. And I know they do like times without loads too, because loading in D2R is uh, insanely bad and very hardware dependent. Wow. You know, I don't I don't hate this actually. Don't hate this. You know what's interesting is if I Well I if I can get my hands on a lem now, which is easier than a mal or a pole, <laughs> I could actually make wealth too. That'd be pretty sick. Yes. Um, I already have a foul actually, so I can already go obedience. Yeah, I got a foul from Nightmare Forge. I think that's the only foul I've found, but I can already do obedience, so I'm already capable of doing um, five socketed non-if pole arm obedience, which is what we're going to be showing here in this video and some other things. I think it's really cool that we can actually demo obedience at the very least, even if we can't get Oath in a Rag Services run. Oath is tougher for sure. Like Oath, Oath does take a bit more farming. See, one thing you might want to do is just get obedience and then farm Trav, and you probably get Malrun faster from Trav if Countess is being a being a turd. That's the other thing too. I mean, there's always more strats you can do. I try to mention and demo as many as I can every time I make a rags to riches uh, guide. But yeah, it's very it's very important though. For the time being though, Countess is definitely our best bet though until we uh, switch to that. I'm not switching to obedience yet though because uh, Warcry. I I consider Warcry to be more consistent. When we're doing these kinds of farms here, so like, it'd be a bit different though. But yeah, we can already make obedience mirage. I have a, I have a non if cryptic axe mirage. I also have a non if thresher. Which one do you think would be better, chat? Non if thresher or cryptic axe? What should we do? The faster one with slightly less damage, or the slower one with more damage? Well, that's that's an F obedience. You can't make an F obedience for your barbarian whirlwind unless you want it to break. To the best of my knowledge, obedience does not have the indestructible set. You can make a. Um... No, we're not making it for the mercenary, even though. I'm sure he can use that too, potentially. Okay, we're actually gonna level up here. Again. If we get two more levels, I have a pretty easy path here to just using this and String of Ears, which I'll actually be switching to in a second. So I'll be even tankier in a moment. Get my string of ears and alders for faster and walk endless. Oh god, what the f- Holy crap! 
Archers. <sighs> man. Archers. Blood goats. Oh man. There's everything in there. One thing to note is if you're still looking for better weapons, that's an elite uh, throwing weapon there. You get one with high AD still. If you're going throw barb. Keep looking for those. Totally do that kind of run. Another coat. What? Okay, well, we don't need any codes anymore. As a matter of fact, I could even make hustle armor. <laughs> All right, and we'll find a base for that. I can make hustle weapon too, but I don't think that's good actually. Not for the Merc, anyway. Ooh. We can make all the code words now, like all of them, dude. We can make Wealth, if we get Limb. We can already make Harmony. We can make... We can make Hustle. We can make... Obedience. Make all the co rune words. And there's a lot of co rune words that uh, the barb can make that can help him out with various farms. We're gonna show that off, of course, once I actually start using all these runes, putting them together. Uh, what is with only co runes, though? I don't understand. Where are the other runes? I can't work with only co runes. I mean, I can to some extent, but. Where are my lum runes? What the heck? I have four coes and not a single lum. What a joke. I want to make smoke if possible. You know, I'd like to make things like... Oath requires a lum too, even. Yikes, dude. This is rough. This is where trading comes, into, comes handy, you know? If, th if this happens to you, you're able to trade and you're not playing single player, when you're like, all right, all right, trying to... Co runes are worth a lot, believe it or not. They're worth a lot more than most mid runes because of Hustle in patch 2.6. So it's actually really easy to, like, even get limb runes with co runes, oddly enough. So you can really, uh... You, you can be just fine finding only co runes if that's what you're finding. And remember, Nightmare Countess can't drop those, so... You're actually going to be in pretty good shape if you just keep finding co runes if you can trade. If this is single player though, this is just annoying. And unfortunately, of course, for rags to riches, we don't do any trading for the most part. I think on one of my rags to riches guides, I was given like a flawless gem or something at one point. Just to like speed it up slightly. But for the most part, nothing though. Absolutely nothing. So you're making Sanctuary instead of Earth. You can use the Mal rune that we find for a Sanctuary shield. I'm not gonna advise that. Raj be clowning in the chat right now. Man. Clowning. Heck no. Dull. If you're just trying to increase your battle orders level, you can make myth too. Which requires the runes Neph, Yam, and Hell. Got all those already. I heard Barb sucks in D2R, true. It's actually not true. People that think it sucks don't know how to play Barb or start Barb or play it or make it or anything. Um, I actually probably will Mirage to some extent, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll focus on the rune words and then we'll uh, make a bunch of uh, other stuff as well. But yeah, I will. 
Coco for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> yeah. I like how you put four runes in that there. Four four co's in, in that sentence. It's perfect. Exactly what we have. Imagine only finding co runes. Like I said, not bad though for playing multiplayer because um, they're really worth a lot actually. Hustle plus obedience plus being a component in Kodo plus uh, wealth plus uh, you know harmony. All these rune words that are really good require co runes, so it's. Yeah, there's just a lot of runes that require a co at this point. So co almost has like a disproportionate value. It's pretty good. Contacting me again. Tail talk to me. It's alright. Hello. Good day. Okay. Hustle weapon, pretty much junk. Um, no, it's actually quite good, but it's not like... It's not like insane unless you're using it like on something that, like an early game summoner, typically. You wouldn't want to use it on an early game bard, pretty much. But there's not really much of a point to that. I need 
There's a lot of things you can use it on that actually make it pretty good. That's a good question, actually. Twenty-two life. Hmm. It's interesting. Uh, I'm surprised I haven't found any like attack rating, attack rating GCs or something. Any kind of attack rating would be nice. But as you guys know, as long as you have the power of battle cry, you don't necessarily need attack rating, or at least not much of it. Mamma mia. Hey, oi, oi, oi. Countess is, I don't know, go runes, I guess. And we can make a hustle armor, though. That's the thing. We could also do that. And hustle armor is actually kind of cool for farming something like Trav, because you can just run down and just farm it even faster. There's actually some kind of interesting things you can do. Oh yeah, well, you know how Countess is. She has another name, too. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I'm actually... Wait, isn't... Has she dropped a single terror key? I just realized that. Wow, I don't think she's dropped a single terror key. I haven't seen one. Uh, she's just being stingy across the border right now. Hmm. Well, we've prepared for this uh, eventually. A saying during a YouTube guide, I know. Talking to someone on Discord here and there. <laughs> I mean, it's a super long guided playthrough, so it's okay. I'm just farming Countess right now. 
We're not really at the part where I need to start talking about, like, these other strats I've been pulling yet. I I'm just farming- I'm just farming the death out of Hell Countess, and, uh... Hoping she farm gives me some of those runes that we need. Or other possible things. Already, though... That towel, if towel if is no good though. The order welcomes you. Come on, Bobby Bell. Come on, Bobby Bell. Come on, Countess. You know you want to cooperate at least a tiny bit. Honestly, I I don't think I'm gonna keep that. I my my other my other charms. Say no. It's true. I mean, it's not like she needs to drop things at this point. Like, we can already make obedience, which is awesome. I just love to see some things like maybe some lems, maybe some lums, because those things can help and... In general, can just I can show off some more rune words and... Show off what they can do for us here, but like... Yeah, you know how it is though, you know. I do love when she drops those things, though. Absolutely. It's not like I'm expecting a Vex from her standard table or something. Like, I don't... We don't need that. Hell Countess. I feel like typically she drops at least like one limb or higher by this point. <laughs> and one terror heal. Like, what the heck? Yeah, this isn't the uh, this isn't the best RNG I've ever seen already at this point. Definitely seen better. I guess the co runes came easy though. There's a lot of those we can use. Hmm. Remember to keep it in players one if you're farming runes, which we are primarily. If you're playing single player, if you're farming keys, you want at least players three up to player seven if you can handle it without getting wrecked, and while being able to kill her quickly. Terror keys are often quite valuable. Theoretically, she does drop them. I mean, in players one though. I I am totally aware though that she uh, she might very rarely drop them. So that's just how this is going. Wow, Max 
axe of Fetchmar. That's not very useful, but that is interesting. I can already tell that I'll be it's your best friend you know. in this forsaken camp. Obviously, you know, this Rags for Riches, all my Rags for Riches videos end at that point where it feels like I've demonstrated all of the strats. And obviously, you know, this is no exception. So, you know, at this point, you would keep farming. I can already it's up to tell you to really I'll grind be your best out. friend in this forsaken camp. Oh, that was an ist for a second. I was like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. What? Oh man, that was close actually. I get a 5 or 4 work right home right now, I'll use it. See that that's the thing is you can keep going work right, you can change to these other strats we're gonna show. But ultimately, it's up to you to actually complete the grind to you know get things like your griefs going and get everything else that you can get from these farm areas. Travancol is one of the best high rune farms in the game, and it's the best one for the Barbarian. It's really good at dropping and and sets, amazing for jewelry. And the Barb has fine item. So ultimately that's kind of where you want to go to finish your farming. But if you want to make trav farming easier, you can do these other farms as well. That's kind of what it's all about. And you can do this once again without any trading or anything. It just takes, just takes grinding. But you could do trading, and trading will make it even easier. Well, the big item for trav farming, right, would be a low rune. That would also be a big item for like lo lower cross chest farming, which you can also do with the barbarian. You could even find a low rune from Pendle, though, to be honest. There's a lot of places you can find it. You know, Eldritch can drop it as well. Um, obviously, this will all take a lot of grinding, but you can get these things. So. It sounds like you said Singer Barb phase is practically necessary. If you want it to be as little painful as possible for actually getting those riches in the Barb, yes. Um. You could get some insane RNG and you might be able to circumvent that, but yeah, normally not. What's your end game build on this skill wise? Oh god. No! What the heck, man? <laughs> I can't believe I survived that actually. That was actually funny. It's because I have the wrong skill on, but yeah, that was that was fun. Just concentrate. Well, ideally, what happens is you, once you get grief, you can start using berserk or something in uh, Travancore. You can also use whirlwind in Travancore as well, though. And you can also use frenzy. Get like uh, one grief, you know. One grief, one uh, oath. There's a lot of things you can do once you actually start building up your barbarian, but um, you know, as always, end game builds are beyond the scope of Rex to riches. To be expected. Um, it's just it takes more farming, you know. Maybe it takes higher player account for more efficiency, depending on the build. Maybe it takes, um, yeah, whatever. 
Well, at least higher player count could help, you know. It's possible that it helps. It's never necessary, but it could help out. Um, it's some fire is, yeah. Oof. Not doing it. Oh. That's right. I need to put my five points into strength so I can wear uh, elders and so I can wear a string of yours again. Notice how that boss farming was really good. So, like, if you really want more items like this and you feel like you just want to get stronger, like I said, boss farming is still good on the bar. It's slower, but it wasn't that slow. If you do exactly what I do there, and you can see that it's uh, it's totally doable. Totally doable. This is a good belt, but it's also not like an I need it belt. Not really. It's kind of good though. Greetings. It's a very good belt, though. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like with String of Ears, it's just... Once we move to that phase, it's not gonna matter. We're either only gonna want to use that, or three-piece Saigons, and that's it. Anyway. What's up, Ken? How you doing? Catching the last segment of Barbarian Rags to Riches here. We go over some of these uh, in-game farming strats after doing some actual in-game farming. Summon. Well, the thing is, is you'll actually get to the point where you can farm the riches before you settle on a final build, yes. And when the riches start coming in, you can either trade or um, can determine what your best build is based on what you found at any time. And if you're out of respect tokens at some point, you're going to have to either farm them or, uh, or just trade for them, but yeah. Those are expensive, so... It's always it's always fun to try to trade this. Really, I remember that man. Dang. I don't. Why don't you have D two R? You know you can port your files to D two R. You can also have no respects on D two R with a command. Just play it on D two R, man. Tour's got some uh, cool new shit. Guess you don't have to. Though. It's really easy. You just copy. You just you you drag your mouse across the files. You copy them. And then you paste them into the D2 save folder. There's like one video. So you had to do it. You won't you don't mess up anything if you don't if you don't delete them. I'm really scared of computers, huh? Well, it's okay. I'm not building them. I mean, my mom's scared of computers, so... something to it. <laughs> For some people, it's a phobia. <laughs> Truly is. Yeah, full Saigons looks very nice, potentially. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more, um, I might honestly just do another, like, hour and 40 minutes of this, and then we'll see where we're at, strat-wise, I don't know. See where we're at, Hell Countess farm. Like, honestly, I already knew today it was gonna be some heavy farms, and then we're gonna show off some other strats we didn't show off in part two. 
So I already prepared for this mentally. Canvas needs to start giving us some GG RNG though. I mean, did you try out D4 during the beta? Like, it's actually good. And it's me saying that, Ken, and I hate Diablo 3. It's actually good. Like, no joke, Diablo 4 is actually good. It's a good game. You can play it if you want. Ah, uh, no Diablo 4 is always fresh. Poor print now, peace. I wish I was getting paid to say that. No, I genuinely believe, uh, genuinely believe that D2 Remastered and D4 and some of their most recent projects have actually been really good. Now don't get me wrong, you know, some things they've done that are pretty dumb still recently, but from a financial standpoint, I guess uh, Diablo Immortal makes some sense, at least they tried to make it make sense. Aren't you the one that makes a lot of money? You have all this money, and you're using an ancient PC. You spend all your money on it. I guess you don't prioritize it as much as some, huh? Come on, man. I'll give you a hard time a little bit here. You can literally make a... Even if you don't know crap about PCs, you can just get a pre-built, and those are pretty solid. Of course, you can also, uh, five sockets, wow. Interesting. I can make a CTA, it's a good CTA base, you can hold on to that if you want to trade it. It's a classic joke. You sure you don't spend it on that stuff, man? I'm just what about um? What about cam girls? You spend all your money on cam girls. There's this uh. There's this show on like True Crime that was about someone that spent two hundred. $50,000 of their parents' retirement fund on a single cam girl. So, you know. That could be you. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Homeless looking D2 streamers? Me? You didn't spend all your money on me, I hope. Oh god. Oh no. Well, the problem is that, you know, the modern world is very confusing to the human brain. For a lot of people, it's very easy to get duped, you know, visually, with all the stimuli that you receive, into thinking you're actually in a relationship with these people when you're not. And it's just, it's just hard on the brain, man. And then they end up spending all their money on it. It's crazy. I mean, you know, it, it's gotten to that point apparently, so. I personally don't think it's ever as good as the real thing, but. Hey man, people invest in it currently. I guess some people only want a relationship, you know, with the screen in between them. They don't want to deal with all the other messy relationship stuff. You, right? You just want all the attention stuff. $50,000 
$50,000. Holy moly. Yeah, and then this guy not only took all his parents' money, but then ended up killing them because he, uh, yeah, he wanted some more money. And then, uh, was afraid they might kill him if he kept taking their money. Like, he was totally next level. Like, I, I just can't fathom that. Like, what, what kind of mind state do you have to be in? It's nuts. Unreal. Those Seraph rods. Sweet. I have a string of yours. I'm gonna stop picking up rare, rare belts. I mean, for sure, but you know. Dang! <laughs> yeah, but see, people like to feel like they have, like, a personal relationship, you know? Like, they, I don't know, it's like a... It's not the same as, like, going to, you know, your standard, you know pornography site I guess it's just not the same really they, they want more from it but the more is still insufficient they want it so what do they do oh spend on more yeah we do the order welcomes you. it's on some level yes I have the biggest potato in the world. I was still able to play it. There's no excuse. Actually, I don't know. Ken sounds like he really has a potato. Like a, he's probably still using um, a Windows XP. <laughs> he's like, I'm afraid of computers. I bought this Windows XP laptop like 15 years ago, like 20 years ago. He'll run it right. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Please insert floppy number 15 to install Windows 95. Oh yeah. The original OS installation process. They don't even have discs anymore, man. It's crazy. It's just all auto installs now. It's awesome. I can't carry anymore. Yep, I remember that. Please insert disc number two. Click OK. <laughs> The bar would like stop halfway waiting for it. Feed me the other disc. Do it now. <laughs> uh, what we're doing now would seem pretty primitive, I think, to people 50 years from now. Everyone will have like an advanced personal AI assistant. It's like. Go do this for me. Write an essay about Christopher Columbus. All right. I'll go clean my hard. Go clean my hard drive. But make sure you don't remove these files. Where are the T keys? Like, I'm actually confused by that. Did she drop those? What the heck? Well, suffice it to say, you can get lucky with Countess for sure. Oh yeah, what's your job? Is that, is that gonna be it? Hello. <laughs> Let's get a little sad. 
Well, you know, AI is a, it's not very good. I mean, it, it's getting better, but it's, it's still a lot of problems. Gotta babysit it, you know. Oh, yeah, totally. In like five years, you're just gonna be like babysitting AI. Yeah. Just making sure to correct any mistakes it makes. Yep. Oh yeah, what have you been doing the last nine months if it's not a job? Oh yeah. I can't believe that, but like coders, like software engineers, a lot of you guys might be like just babysitting AI pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah, it should smart, man. Do things a lot faster than humans can do them too, as long as it can uh process a lot more too. Problem is it's gonna make mistakes though. It's gonna make lots of mistakes. So that's where you come in, the human. I'm like, no, that's not what I want. <laughs> Pretty crazy how advanced AI has gotten though. Like it's pretty insane. We're getting there. The question is, can AI ever become aware? Or is it not possible in the general sense because it can only uh, work within the parameters that we set for it. That's the issue. Is it alive? Oh yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. They're trying to combine the uh, human brain with silicon, trying to make something even more powerful than the human brain. And something that's more adaptable. Silicon, I think, has limitations, right? I think the main... Limit, see, the main limitation with the current AI, right, is like, they have to feed it, like, an insane amount of data for it to, like, process things to that degree. But, like, if you can get some kind of machine that can make its own inferences, you actually don't have to do that. And then you might actually get something that is a log. Yeah, a bio machine is actually something that could be Skynet, whereas the current AI could never be Skynet. People have been fired from Google for saying that's a where? I heard about that. Is that true? People trying to blow their whistle on <laughs> What about the ethics of AI and the person trapped in the machine? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Skynet's just around the corner. Let's go. I want to rewatch that one. That's a timeless classic that might have some relevance at some point. Brutal, brutal, brutal.
Well, the combination of the human brain and silicon is really the, uh... I think that's the ultimate life form right there, if you can somehow combine them. You can, you can have a perfect memory. Imagine being able to store what you have in your brain on a hard drive and then being able to retrieve it. You can augment your memory and then vice versa, you can also process things faster. I think the future in cyberpunk isn't super inaccurate. All these augmentations and stuff. Oh yeah. Once you get there, like, you gotta be able to, like, have... The problem is making the silicon communicate with the carbon, you know? In a simplistic way of speaking. It's not easy, but... Man. When you can interface with AI, what happens to games like chess and poker? Um, what happens is you only win if you're using AI. <laughs> yeah, probably. You'll probably get scanned at the entrance of a casino or something. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken game. Yeah, exactly. Like, you'll get... That's exactly what will happen. So let's say you go to a casino or even online, you'll have to do some kind of scan or some kind of uh, check to make sure that there's no uh, AI being used. Or they'll have AI allowed casinos where it's allowed to use AI. But the casino also uses its own AI, so. So they, uh, they can stack the odds even more insanely than a human ever could. So yeah, there's... It's funny to think about, but... Yeah, there's, there's actually a lot of potential things there to unpack. I have one hell run. Why am I just finding hell runs mostly? Like, this RNG is so weird. It's like code runes. Oh, whatever. I'll make another IR rune. <clears throat> but we're at that point. I have one more chip diamond. Oh, I have two more chip diamonds, so I can make two more IOs that way. And I have flawed. A couple of flawed's. Okay, yeah, we can we can make a couple of those if we want. <laughs> That's funny. Do it. Or real time solvers. Oh yeah. I mean I'm sure people make program I mean I'm sure there's been programs around in poker for a pretty long time that can literally solve your best move. Like, don't tell me people haven't already made these. I mean, I know they have. But I think AI could do an even better job, though. I can approximate it. Things like poker and chess are so easily solved with enough intelligence. At least the best probability move is most easily solved. So you can make money off of it. A spare weapon, some gold, a small gem is all I want in exchange for the equipment you'll need on whatever quest you might undertake. No, 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 don't be shy. Oh no, it will allow, it will allow a uh, AI inside. Thank you so much for 250 small gems just about there. Straight to Geed. And yeah, it will. It'll allow it inside of each of its own machines. And its own dealers will use AI. It just won't allow it inside on you. <laughs> 
They'll use it to stack the odds further. They, they, they'll abuse it, but you're not allowed to have it. That's how casinos have always been. Let's be real, it won't be any different. Casino won't ever allow you to count cards or anything, or use any of those things. Don't worry. Casino will use AI, of course. Oh yeah. They'll go out and decide though, don't worry. I guess the key will be then to hack the AI, huh? Do it undetected. Gonna hack the AI undetected. Do I have another Eldrune? I actually don't know. Is that the first Eldrune I've found? What? No way. I Man, I know Eld is really rare, but... Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Mm -mm 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 -mm. How do we get all these Dolrins cubed up? Oh no, it's it's emerald. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, we got a bunch of this too. Oh, I know. But when you're on the road from rags to riches, none of that matters. You just need to know where to find your shit. And we're not muling or anything for this, so. Just keeping what I absolutely have to. I don't know, they didn't get a Chicago hot dog, I guess. <laughs> so basically everything. Yeah, basically anything that can help you out, yeah. Exactly. A rune shrine would be cool. Mom is an AI. That's not a bad. That's not a bad game. That's not that bad of a thing. Mom being an AI. Wow! Look at that. Just found a four all resistance small term. There you go. Nice random find. Pog champ. That's actually pretty poggers. That's pretty cool. Four all resistance small turn. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, for sure. Remember how I said resistance is king, and if you can find all resistance charms, oh man. Even large charms, man. I just fork a unique there? I did, but it's not a good one. Is this normal mode? What is this? What are these items? Oh my god. Peter, Peter, cocktail. Hop it down the bunny drill. Is this game easier to understand than PUE? Oh, 100%. <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong, this game has some challenging aspects to it, but we're not talking about... And I do make spreadsheets for Diablo 2, don't mind, but, you know, it's not like uh, you need a spreadsheet for a single build. See, that's what you need in, for PoE. To understand a build, you need a spreadsheet. That's like one build. Greetings. I use them for, like, tier lists and some things, but, yeah, you don't need a spreadsheet for a single build. Thankfully. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I, I, I actually personally, I like all the end game and all the variety of things you can do in PoE, and I think that game is an excellent game. But I think the game in a lot of ways overcomplicates things, and there's like too much going on on the screen. It just has too many particles in general. 
to the point to where it's just like it ends up becoming like an amorphous blob sometimes. And you know, mechanics don't always work very cleanly too for the same reason. It's a game that isn't flawed in many ways, but it has that, you know, that 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 is a thing. I'm actually just gonna repair my stuff like this right now. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. I mean, Project Diablo 2 actually has this. I don't know, Tyrell's might. There's no exact equivalent. I think a Zod rune is pretty rare, but it's not as rare as a mirror, though. There's plenty of items that are almost as rare. <laughs> That's the thing, is every season they just pile on more stuff. Like, how is a new player ever supposed to get into that game? Hey, yay. Hey. Like, PoE is just like, they really want that depth to the point to where it's like, you can do so many different things. Thousands upon thousands of things. But at the end of the day, I, I do realize there's a lot of gamers that like that. Where they're like, you know, they like just being able to endlessly explore possibilities. But then, you gotta think the experience for the average player, does it really help their experience being able to have thousands of possible builds does it really like improve their gameplay experience it's like i don't know i mean to be fair up the game's hard man It's, it's hard. It's meant for people that are like super hardcore ARPGers that really value build creativity over everything. And being able to do a lot of really cool in-game content. Whoa, Lim! There we go. Is it really that hard, Countess? Is it really that hard? Oh. Also, she dropped a key of terror as well. I know, after about 50 runs, it finally showed up. <laughs> oh, yay. There's the key. Naughty. Yeah, there's the key. We also found the Lembrun, too, though. And that can be either wealth or treachery, so there you have it. There's there's a lem rune. Remember what I said. Let me try to make uh, some socket bases here. Remember that's perfect topaz towel full. And when you cube socket something, it'll actually attempt to roll six sockets on everything, and five and four. And if it does that, it just defaults to maximum. So anything that's less than maximum, actually no, I think on armors it maxes out at four. I think a default attempts to roll the maximum on any theoretical item of that type. So armors would be four, two handers would be six, like helms would be more. But the thing is, is like typically you'll get three sockets because of this. So we just got a three socketed mage plate. And it's literally just because it's really easy to get three socket mage plate. It's that simple. Um, like this thing is cool and all, but it's a heavy one. But we can actually roll another one if you want. I don't know if I ha how many topaz I have to mess around with here. I have quite a few though. I think we have enough to just be pretty liberal with using them. 
I have so many runes. Like, most of my stash is, like, taken up by runes now. It's actually insane. Yeah, see, there's another one. So that's two, three socketed armors. Right out the get-go. That means you can make some nice stuff. You can also do something with that, too. But likely not, because we won't get enough strength. Unless I get something to do that with. But probably not. Good day. So keys can sell for a ton early on. I think I already mentioned that, but that was a really good drop. That was a key and a lem rune. That would be some riches right there. Good day. All you had to do was kill Countess once and get lucky, right? Right? Just forget about all those other times you farmed her. It's not important. So. It's pretty interesting, right? Pretty interesting. Um, we could attempt to roll, let's see. We can attempt to roll the... Thresher here for five sockets. Let's see. That's Ral and Perfect Amethyst. We got four? Really? Well, you know what's interesting about that? We can actually upgrade the mercenary's weapon with that. Okay. We'll take that, and then we'll make five out of the other one. That's pretty sweet, actually. So, like, keeping all those white elite bases early on, you're not going to likely find an F1. Those are pretty hard to find, especially when you're really weak. So, like, pick up all those white elite ones, try to cube them up. Try to cube socket them. It's definitely something that I like to emphasize when I make these Rags to Riches videos, is that you really need to make use of all those soccer, uh, all those recipes. There's a reason why we're keeping all that garbage in the stash. It's because, like, all that garbage that you just pick up, it actually is a, it allows you to create good items. Things that are actually going to be strong, things that are actually going to allow you to do stuff. So making a stronger insight is one way to make us... Uh, be more capable of farming trap because now the mercenary can do damage with us and Particularly for a war cry approach. That's actually really good So if you want to stick with war cry you really want that mercenary to get stronger while maintaining um, uh, Meditation if possible You're gonna want to get a better insight base, so that's what we just achieved there it looks like some things are coming together now all of a sudden. See, all that good RNG usually happens in spurts. You can really use it to make a big difference when it comes to efficiently farming stuff. Now the mercenary is going to have a really strong weapon pretty soon here. It's not going to have an ethereal one yet. He has an elite. That's an elite base, though. It's a fast elite base, too. So you can life leech more effectively as well. That's my diadem. It's just a two barb skill diadem that I uh, imbued. I was showing off the power of imbues for character advancement. Okay, so if we go like this. As a matter of fact, if you uh, watch a lot of my guide videos, man, you're not going to have any problems with, like, Diablo 2. You know, there's a lot of insane info on Max Roll as well. Um.
Centurion. Let's suck if I kill it. Yeah, see, the problem caution is that if you don't farm any gear at all, like no attack speed javelins, no lower resist wand, you know, you don't have a, a rhyme shield, you're missing all that stuff, and you're in hell with the javazon, um, you're not going to be able to farm things efficiently, and that's one thing that we try to, you know, teach people in these Rags for Riches guides. Like, I don't know, maybe you want to listen to this, like, while you're doing it, but there's, you know, three parts there. Part two and part three are short, but... Uh, the uh, Javazon guide, and that's the uh, that's the Amazon Rags for Witches guide, and you can see kind of the types of farms that we do to make sure that we're hell, um, we're hell, uh, we're hell ready. You've been talking about the Amazon for a while now, and I do have an Amazon Rags for Witches guide, so you can totally check that out. Oh no. Moderator on aisle, it's just fork. We gotta, we gotta spill. All moderators to aisle, it's just fork. All moderators to aisle, it's just fork. Over the intercom. Yo! Are my moderators alive? <laughs> I mean, typically I have moderators on at this time. What the hell? I really have like none on at the moment? That's crazy. That would be insane. Let me see here. Supposedly Rose, Nimi, and Nick Blamer in my chat. Are they asleep? What the hell? Mouse hands are busy. Yeah, I see that. I see that. <laughs> well, I mean, that's not a VIP power. I do admit that VIP should probably have a bit more power, though. I don't really get the point of that designation. Supposedly it allows you to spam without being timed out more. That's like the main power of that. I can't. It doesn't really do anything. <laughs> there we go, Nimi's alive. He's probably just doing something else. Did I? No, I don't got time for this. But where the heck's Rose though? God. I didn't take any break. Your plants. Oh no. Yeah, we're gonna get at least one more level here so we have enough decks for the uh, bigger aura bow as well. Look how much health we have. Isn't Warcry Bar very awesome? Like, look at this. This gets so much health, and all I have is like basic items. I only have, t I only have two hard points in the battle orders currently too. That's it. It's two hard points. Imagine you actually wanted that, you know. Oh really? You're not killing your plants like always? They're delicate virgin eyes. Oh man. Because he really wants to be mod. Maybe. I'll do it next time. <laughs> His two spirits give you so much life. I know. Double spirit is insanely good. That's why if you have to, you can use Larzak quest just to get those two spirits because it's such a big deal. Ideally you don't do that though. Ideally you can uh find at least one four socketed sword somewhere in Nightmare or Hell. Check all the socketed swords. And you can use like you could just you could totally use rhyme single spirit for the longest time if you have to. 
Really make it really makes a huge difference though. Nice up. Wow, FL. Was this normal countess? I'm gonna find the low rune and I'm gonna find Mal and make grief. <laughs> I have a phase blade I could roll, so it's not out of the question. I might be able to make unbending will here too. I think I think the only problem with that one is we need another foul rune, which is uh, Countess is being pretty stingy on lum. I still haven't found a single lum rune. Like what? What? I found lum now and I haven't found lum. Four coes. One foul. It's ridiculous. Yeah, this is why the hell count is firm. You really aren't guaranteed anything fast from her. Typically, we don't do this in Rags for Riches this for a reason. Because you never know what's going to happen here. This is a grindy farm. It's a grindy grind. It's a grindy farm. It's a grindy farm. Five strength. Hmm. I want to hold on to that. That could be useful. <sighs> Unlikely it will be, but you never know. I heard to play the mosaic sand. You need to craft some sunglasses to make the build. Yeah. Well, or you can just do uh, claws of thunder like me, and you know not require sunglasses and still destroy everything <laughs> Rose, my queen, where art thou when thou bought? Take over the chat. Rose, your queen of the chat. It's a big responsibility. I have to take a. Uh, Take up arms against the AI overlords. AI is going to start attacking our, our Twitch chats, man. Advanced AI is going to is going to wreck us. It's all over, man. It's it's, it's all over. One of the days of human trolls. The armies are coming. And they will multiply. Claws of Thunder is definitely the way. Yeah, I mean, you see me do it. It's, I only use Phoenix Strike for things like cows. I mean, because you only... You don't need that AoE most of the time because it overlaps with your damage anyway. I mean, some people only use Phoenix Strike. You could do that too. That makes some sense, except... Can I take you? The trajectory of the attack is more unpredictable, so you end up missing a lot of monsters. It's not as uh, cool as like eight Novas, you know. Can't believe we actually found one of the Lem runes, though. That's good. So now, now it's up to Countess to drop like you know, Pull, Mal, Eth Highland Blade, you know, things like that. Yeah, I don't think we're, 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 we're nowhere close to getting oaths, so I don't think it's happening. It's okay. We don't need oath to demo a lot of cool stuff. Oath is, oath is definitely a, a mid-game thing. 
You'll get it after some trading and some grinding for sure. Ultimate life form. AI, AI trolling is going to be ridiculous. Bro, like, imagine a troll that can learn and that can pull, like, any memes imaginable from its huge database that it learned from. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, everyone thinks of the positive applications. And then there's also people that think of Skynet, but they forget about the more mundane, really annoying applications. Like, yeah, I mean, it's always possible you could get a Skynet or something, but like... It's still constrained by the fact, you know, that it can't. I can't. There it is, chat. White Monarch. Boom. I'm gonna leave it on the ground though because there aren't any many, many good applications for a white monarch early on. For a white carp, war cry bar, but there's more riches, especially if it's in the first couple days. So you're gonna find everything just doing any of these farms that we talk about in the first two parts of this guide. I don't know, man. I think that's what it's gonna be. Dink memes and as the world burns. Oh wow, okay. That's basically a lumbering right there, I'll take it. Heck yeah, two IOs. Good Countess. Good. There we go. Do something useful with your life, Countess. Memes, man. Oh, baby. Good day. Yeah, everyone always thinks of uh, like the very worst and the very best case scenarios, but there's all this other crap that will happen too. More mundane. Existence of AI. Okay, we can definitely forge one lumber rune now. We'll save some rune doing that. Where are the other I runes? Okay, we have one there. It's gonna make a. Yeah. Okay, that's basically a lumber rune, so I'll take it. And then we have two more I runes here, so that's nice. Yeah, I'll take a I'll take one lumbering, please. Yeah, that's our first lumbering. Wow. So beautiful. Can't freaking find him though. I haven't found one straight up, which is actually nuts. I think at this point it's pretty common to have already have a lumbering. At least one. Just goes to show you though, if you're playing a single player and you can't trade, your RNG can be very annoying sometimes. Uh, I don't know, Hell Countess is dropping lots of good things, but it's a matter of how quickly it drops them, right? 92 defense, I don't, I don't know how that's any useful, but okay. Made Infinity and Enigma before you found your first Shaco in single player. You know, that reminds me of uh, when I did my hardcore pluggy grill. That's exactly what happened. I did like 3,000 Trav runs, 2,000 Mephisto runs, 1,500 Andy runs. 
And like a billion LK runs, even like random clickables. And I had my Infinity and my Enigma, and I still didn't have a Shaco. And I needed that Shaco because I needed, <laughs> needed to boost my uh, my power and my MF. And I couldn't find it. And I, I even had, dude, I even had. Okay, get this. Not only did I have Infinity and Enigma before Shaco, I also had Arachnid's Mesh. I had Mara's. I had everything. I could have find Shaco. It was so stupid. And I was like wearing like a lore for like the longest time. I remember this, and I remember. I remember it clearly. The game has, the game trolled me like this before. Luckily, the first Shaco was not ethereal. Otherwise. But once I found one, they just started dropping everywhere, and I'm like, oh yeah, of course. Because I have one now. The game's not going to be evil to me anymore. It's already too late. Damage has been done. I think what happened was someone commissioned me to run, like, Mephisto ten times, and on the tenth kill I actually finally found it. So it was actually a member of chat that ended up saving saving me from tearing my hair out over that item. <laughs> good times, good times. I remember that shaker, dude. I was so like... I was looking for weeks, man. Just like, where is this crap, man? It was so weird, like, seeing someone that was fully built, and I was wearing a Tarn Helm, I think, and like... <laughs> it's like, how do you have... all this stuff... I didn't have Griffins yet, to be fair, but like, I mean, we weren't, we weren't at that stage anyway, not yet, but... It was like, how do you have all this stuff? All this crazy, all these items, I mean, I got... And you've even farmed bosses a ton. And Travancle a ton. So you would think. I'm gonna make an Oath Feral Axe chat area. This is a. Uh... Too bad this is four sockets too. If that was a Thrill, that's exactly. We could actually use that. Not for Berserk though. That would be a. Um... That'd be a Whirlwind Oath. So you can also use two-handed oaths for Whirlwind. You can use one-handed oaths for Berserk. You can use... There's just a lot of things you can do, man. The bar just... Possibilities are endless. And there's so many bases you can find that can be useful on our way. Just because, you know, you use you know, physical damage. Use weapons. Well, I've been trolled on the rack before, but like... I don't even think it was ever nearly that bad as that Shaco troll. I think that's like the biggest troll I've ever had for like a unique item. I mean, it took me forever to find Griffins, but that makes sense because that item is insanely rare. So the game can just troll you forever on that, but it's not even weird that it's doing that. Something like a Shaco, though, you'd expect. Harlequin Crest to drop. You know, at some reasonable time frame. No. Uh, no, 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 no. Not there. And again, I, I saw this other streamer. I don't know if you guys remember Yielder. I think he still streams Path of XL from now, now, and, now and again. Anyway, Yolder got trolled really bad into Shaco. So, I might have gotten trolled bad, but he found two Shakos on his hardcore Necro or whatever. This is before the Necro died. And then... Both of those first two Shakos were ethereal. Both of them. Yeah. His first two Shakos were both ethereal. 
both of them. Both of them were ethereal. <laughs> Dude, he was he was face palming so hard. He was doing like this with his face. He's like, oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Dude, the, the feeling, man. The feeling of getting the RNG. The odds of that happening consecutively, by the way, is 1 in 20 for 1 S Shaco. And so having it twice in a row is 1 in 400. So 1 in 400 times your first two Shakos will be ethereal. We're talking like 0.25% chance. <laughs> the, you know, you can get titanically bad RNG. You know, there's like kind of bad RNG, you know, where, you know, Countess here just never wants to drop the runes that she wanted to drop, or he doesn't drop the, doesn't drop the, uh, the keys or whatever. You know, that, that, that happens a lot, right? But, then there's that, and it's like, my goodness. Those are the kinds of things that make people quit the game. <laughs> like, no. You hate to see it? Oh, yeah, man. That's the thing, is it happens. Like a 26 life, though. 26 life for him. I couldn't find a single word traps all of last season. Oh, yeah, I've seen that item be really tough sometimes. Do you, do you, do you want to know the reason why word traps is tough? Specifically? There's actually a reason why word traps is tough specifically. It's because of the treasure class that battle boots fall into. So, the reason why it ends up being worse so much is because battle boots are like in a very busy treasure class. So when the game chooses a treasure class, it then chooses the base. But there's a lot of bases in that treasure class, like a ton of them. It's like in one of the most busy treasure classes. And so rolling unique on a base that already doesn't like to roll relative to like other bases like even war war boots are in a less busy so like war riders are more common because they're not as busy of a treasure class so when the game tries to choose it it's, like, it's rough it's also why alders boots are pretty tough tell that I'll be they're not as tough as friend in this Yeah, so it, it, it has to do with how the game chooses what's going to drop from something. It has to do with the... It has to do with the, um, how the drop system works. Win, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the Cult of Zane and Hello. Yeah, you found multiple gores. Yeah, it's... It's interesting, because you would think that Battle Boots and War Boots are not very far from each other, so they should have similar rarities, but they don't. Or Trabs actually end up being so much more rare. So when you find them, it's like, whoa! It's kind of impressive. Hmm, okay, so about maybe 30, 35 minutes more of this. I'm gonna evaluate what we have. And then I think we're gonna start showing you guys some other strats. If we have more time, 
the end of the video, maybe we can try to farm for some more stuff. But I'm also not going to spend forever doing this. You can spend forever. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen anything from like um to is yet. I think at this point it's possible. We have seen something in the we have seen Lem though, and Lem is also not a slacking rune. Lem is a Lem is pretty heavy. That's a good one. But like Lem can be tough to get P1 as well. So, I mean, Countess will drop these runes, of course. Eventually. We'll drop whatever rune you want eventually, and it's a lot more consistent than just farming random stuff. But she's also not the only strat for getting Mal rune. There's also Laura Cross on a barb, and there's also Travancol. So, we're going to show that off as well. So, it's not like you're doomed to farm Countess, it's not like you have to. However,. A lot of those mid-tier runes are very easy to get from Hell Countess on the board. So it makes sense to actually dedicate yourself to farming this before maybe going a bit ham on something that you're not fully equipped to take on it. Yeah, if you don't know how the game picks items, the very first thing it does is it tries to determine the, uh, the treasure class of the item. That the treasure class is basically like a bracket for like a whole bunch of base items. And there's, you know, rune treasure classes, there's normal treasure classes, there's like other classes, blah blah blah. And then of course there's no drop as well, which, you know, will determine if an item doesn't drop at all. If you can get past the no drop though, it'll determine a treasure class, then it'll pick a base item. And then, once it picks the base item, we'll determine if we can have... You know, it'll determine, uh, it'll factor your magic finding, and then it'll try to choose unique. If unique fails, it tries set. If that fails, it tries rare. It does this all in a split second, by the way. Like a very small fraction of a second. If it fails rare, it'll try blue. If it fails blue, it'll try white. If it succeeds on white, it'll check for, um, sockets and like various forms of damage and stuff there's like percentages for that the item can roll ethereal the ethereal check might go through which is about like almost five percent it's like pretty close to it it's like 4.9 percent or something and then the game We'll have a version of the item. Of course, the other thing that we'll do then is it'll then, uh, like, let's say it rolls a unique, it'll then roll the stats as well on the unique. And then the item will be dropped on the ground unidentified. It does that all in a very small fraction of a second. And calculate that very fast using tables. Like, bum, 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 bum. Well, you know what's funny is I actually found Alders on Rex to Riches Barb, so I found Alders, so... <laughs> That's the funny thing, I'm actually using Alders boots right now. Using Alders boots and String of Ears. Who would have thought I would have found those, right? Anyway. Um, those might come in handy pretty soon here. Maybe not, maybe so. It's Fire Riz and DR. I also have access to a shaft stop. I can also make smoke. So you're gonna see a lot of potential things here, and just with some boss farming and some other types of farms, you can make a build that is capable of farming Travancool. And of course, it will take nothing. Some very basic items. Problem though with Travancool though is it's pretty dangerous. Ideally, at some point you also find like a Reaper's Toll. We're probably not going to find a Reaper's Toll, I mean that's... We're also not farming bosses at the moment. I might do some more boss farming just for the heck of it. And see maybe if we can get some of those things, but... If so, I'll demo it with some uh, different approaches. Oh, 
pull rune. I can find a pull rune for me, honestly, maybe. Of course, the challenge is stacking magic find as well. But you can do that in various ways, though. You can also swap out for magic find before you fork in the beginning when you're not strong enough with the magic find. And you can also just rely purely on your mercenary for damage while you stack gold find and magic find yourself. So. Amazon found the candor as well. So interesting. Poison resistance. Don't care. Any resistance is good, but poison resistance is the least important, especially when you're dealing with travel. We don't really do poison damage. It's like actually the one resistance you really don't need any of. It's not really. What's up, Deathsbane? How you doing? Axe for Riches Barb is I up. I can already tell Part I'll one. be your best friend in this fight. Exclamation R to R Barb if you want to access part one of this journey. And then you can learn how to get the Barb going from the very beginning, which is honestly part one is the most important to get right. And to do something that approximates that. Because if you don't. Uh, or at least what I described with Double Swing, because if you don't, it's going to be hard. You don't want to make it super hard, though, on your fledgling barb, unless you're doing a challenge run. Extra strong blood of the I think after I hit 82, by the way, I'm going to stop killing anything, and I'm just going to like rush the counters for a while here. And then we're going to show you guys some of their farming approaches. Which is the point of this. Wow, 19 to 37 fire damage. That's not really useful, but it is interesting. And we're going to start making items, baby! But, for now, we're still farming Countess. Curious if she's gonna drop these things. She might not, though. At any rate, <clears throat> doesn't hurt to get some more runes we could still use for sure. Still use like a foul rune. <clears throat> could be pretty baller. Does Mana Leech work with that build? <clears throat> this build? Warcry? No. Um, Mana Leech and Life Leech and Leeches in general require. A physical melee damage attack. Io rune. Sweet. I'll take a bunch of Io runes. I mean, you know, they're a lot more common from Hell Countess. You can get them from Nightmare Countess, but. Yeah, I don't know. Real Siphon, thank you so much for the follow. <laughs> Welcome to Cold Zane and Yes. Oh no, you don't put any points in energy on the bar, man. It's something I mentioned throughout this guide playthrough. But yeah, no, it's, it, it's a physical, it's physical damage, it's a caster attack, that's what Warcry is. Once we move to some of these other physical attacks, though, like, I don't really know if we're gonna use Berserk. Might get unbending well, we'll see. I really want Countess to drop at least like a foul ring, that would be nice. But anyway, we'll see. Anyway, um Yeah, no points in energy at all. Exclamation R to R Barb if you want to start watching or uh playing along with uh Part 1 Rags to Riches Barbarian. I'll teach you a lot, honestly. And I'll show you what kinds of items are essential to making this build work. 
And then, of course, I'll also show you double throw, and then I'll also talk about how to do double swing. If you're looking to do that, I also see a lot of use of poison gas, um, poison gas potions. The barbarian is secretly the Joker. Or perhaps he's a uh, he escaped the uh, he escaped the scrutiny of the Nuremberg trials. I don't know. <laughs> he's a he's a messed up human being in his first phase of life. Those gas potions are important because he needs to do damage. Nah, he's not a good man. Very bad, bad barbarian. Cruel killer of monsters and cows alike. But alas! Yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll see, man, you'll see. He's a... Barbarian is a... He's a work in progress until... You start farming those Nightmare Countess and getting some of those rumors going. You start to see some real power, for sure. What is this? Oh! <laughs> Two auras. Oh. It's ridiculous. Man, oh man, oh man. The oh, fuck? Stop. Hit her already, man. It's just not working. That's why taunt exists sometimes. You know, it's, it's actually quite useful. Sometimes you can get all the monsters. What the heck am I doing? Oh, I'm out of missing. Aha! So. For this Countess farming build, MF isn't really important. I mean, you can find really good stuff from the Countess if you have more MF, but it's more important that I can survive and do damage, because that's going to be efficient for farming runes. Uh, one thing to note about farming runes in Diablo 2, which, you know, is something we can definitely mention here, is what that, um, is not affected by Magic Find. Magic Find actually even hurts some types of farming, such as, um, such as base farming, so farming for like reward bases, like that white monarch we found earlier, all those like mage plates, you actually want a small MF, not big MF. Now I was, I had over 200 MF when I was farming Eldritch and Pendle, and that's good, especially with fine item. And that's pretty much as much as I can get with the gear I have at the moment. But, you know, you can always put on more gear, you can always swap some more. These are always the right, right. Yeah, so what, what's interesting is MF is good if you're farming like bosses and super uniques or elite monsters and you're trying to get those magic or higher items like magic rares, sets, and uniques. When you're not trying to get those, you either don't need it or it actually hurts. So, in the case of Countess, it helps the Countess potentially drop some really good uniques, and I've talked about some of the cool things you can drop in part two, like Mars, you can actually drop that if you're really lucky. But for the most part, when you farm Countess, you're actually going for runes, and you kill a lot of minions too with it. If you're looking for bases, like you often are early on on the Barbarian, you don't want to have tons of MF all the time. It's actually not a good idea. Because one, you'll have to sacrifice damage for it probably somewhere. So you're going to be a lot slower when you kill her. It's going to be harder. Um, your, your main objectives 
are not to find uniques and sets from the Countess. I mean, you can farm Mephisto for those, or Andy, as I've demoed before. If that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing, but... Yeah. Why do you do that? Right, yeah, once you get beyond 200, it really starts getting bad. And to be honest, even the first, like, 50 MF is very impactful in finding you know, anything from blues to uniques. Which can hamper your ability to find a base item. The first 50 MF is very, very impactful. That was very impactful indeed. So, 200's nice, obviously, if you're looking for those uniques and sets, but if you're not, um, I would even stay away from 200 when you're looking for bases. Yeah, it's not terrible until you get to like, once you get to like 400, uh, you're actually really hampering your ability to find good bases and things like that. But, yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't worry about that. Oh, worry about that. And what's funny is we could also make Lobringer too. That is an option here. Um... Could, you could, you could. I wonder if that's what we should do with the Lembrin. All seriousness. Could make Lawbringer. I, 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 I like that idea, because it shows the power of Decrepify, which is something I also showed on the Druid. It's definitely, uh, definitely very impactful here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, Blood Fist is nice and all, but I don't think I'm ever actually gonna use it. Think what? It was cool to find that. Good day. I just found too many other things that are so much better. Blood Fist is cool though. We never ended up actually using it because of when we found it. It just it's too late. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not getting free items or anything. This is a, this is a guided playthrough. This is something that, it's to show how you can do everything on your own. No, it's a, it's a guide, bro. It's not about charging me. I, I don't, I don't care about that. GSP I'm rich on there anyway, so it's easy to uh <laughs> charging me for a Reaper's Toll on non ladder? What is that like? Or not non ladder. It's soft for a ladder. Isn't that like one one for one? Is a joke? Hope so. But some people will actually think that though, for real though. Like they, they watch this and they don't know what it is, so they're like, oh, I, I can give you an item. It's like, no. It's not the point, man. I do uh, thank people for their generosity though. Don't. Nani? I forget, does obedience have mana leech? <clears throat> mm, you think? I think so. Does he? <clears throat> One of those ring words does. I know the Pierre ring word does. No, it does not have mana leech. That's gonna be a problem then. Rip mana. <laughs> See, one of the problems is. Getting mana leech can be tough if you don't find a ring. 
I don't even have a mild heal, so I don't know. Like a ring or an amulet. I don't know if I should have that. I have that pure weapon that has mana leech, but I, I can't even upgrade that, I don't think. That requires a... A pull and a lump. It's unfortunate though. No, mana leech! on my gear, but I have a lot of MFs and Ultra Arms already. That's really good. The small Arms are the most free MF you can have. Insane. You know you can find jaw from a countess minion? Oh yeah. So. Alright, once we get one more level here, I'm gonna put some points in the decks and I think we're gonna be prepared for the next phase. Yeah, we'll be prepared for this next phase here. And we're gonna start showing you guys some cool stuff, I guess. Hello. Some other stuff. Oh, that's interesting, actually. A frenzy double swing is actually kind of nuts. Oh, wow. Yeah, see, look, notice how fine items are already at 48% chance and it's getting zero. It actually is better to start leveling fine potion once you hit that. Oddly enough, I should be using reward more often as well. Or not. It's not really needed, but it does make you very strong. Made me decide to do it. Um, this is a uh, this is a rags to riches guided playthrough. Uh, I don't know if you know about my rags to riches YouTube series, but we've done a guided playthrough through all the classes, and the goal is to show you guys how to farm up with nothing and from nothing. How to farm up GG gear either for trading or for using. 
Hence rags to riches. So now, it's time to leave all the random monsters alone. Put these into decks, oddly enough. Actually, not exactly sure what we should do here. do like frenzy double swing but it also doesn't matter too much obedience not yet just a second yes we have yeah sure that's fun Yeah, I can make obedience, yeah. Wow, a Lumrune drop? No way. Whoa. 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 Wow, that's crazy, actually. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. It's actually supposed to be one of the easier ones, but nope. Nope. Uh, definitely not. Insane, man. Let me actually try rolling that. Let's see. Tell. Cool. There we go. Wow, I actually got it. Wow. Um. Okay. Just saying, two sockets. Mercenary can use that. That can make a pretty decent smoke. So even like an exceptional F base, you can try to roll those too. Yep, we can do that. The mercenary can use it instead of what he's currently using, and that's good because he's gonna need more res for that anyway. It's better if he has more res, I think. Then instead, what, he'll have a lot of defense from Shout, so you should be fine without DR. And then when I farm with Obedience, I'm gonna have Shaft stop on me. That should be pretty good, having Shaft stop. I'll have Life Leech too. I don't know about Mana Leech though. That might be a problem. Some really cheap solutions for mana leech, but they're not good ones. Cheap meaning trashy solutions. To the left. Back into the left. Nice. The magic behind always finding the Countess. You of terror. <laughs> nice. Yeah, they do drop here and there. Those are awesome things to trade, of course. But. Kind of cute that we even have them. When are they just gonna walk D clone on here? I want to kill D clone. Just want to try here. I don't know if they're gonna do D clone. Why? Did, why did they get him up to stage four on sophomore and then not walk him? I don't understand. Maybe they ran out. Ah. 
I'll take the lum, I'll take the lum, I'll take all the lums. Faster run walk is really nice. But you're still gonna want the teleport staff for this. But we're gonna show you guys how to integrate harmony though into various farming approaches as well though. It's a basic armor, but we got better things than that now. We can make a smoke straight up and an F base. The mercenary is gonna have a lot of defense with with shout. Yeah. When all I need is life leash and stacked fire rods. Should also have that covered as well. We can even switch to crown of thieves if we want to. Then you'll have more fire rods specifically. That should be the ticket. And then I think between Ling of Hands and Elder's Boots, String of Ears... I get, I'm gonna have plenty of Life Leech, actually. Yeah, that's a lot of Life Leech. I think my main issue... I mean, obviously it'd be better to have, like, Lawbringer as well. Which we could also play with on an Act 5 Mercenary. There's some other approaches we can play with as well. It's always fun. Five mercs more tanky and trav for sure. All right, I think what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna do some of the more fun stuff here. Hello. Let's do some stuff. Okay, let's make some runewards. Show you guys what else is possible. Wow, look at that! Another fourteen all res ring. I have five merc is more tanky and trav. Yeah. But I might need the insight though, because I don't have mana leech, so. <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, obviously, with a bit more farming, you can get all that stuff, so it's not a problem. But, um, yeah. You can also use this too. Use four piece Saigon. Saigon. Four piece Saigon. My Merc is tanky and Trev. I don't have enough foul runes for that though. I still don't have foul rune from. Okay, I guess we'll just continue to farm Countess later and maybe see if we can get. Like, we just don't have the Berserk weapon. We just don't have it. Doesn't exist. Can't exist. Not yet. We have other things though. We do have other things. Alright, that's a pretty solid farming session, though. We will take our lumps. 
We'll make some good things out of these here. Welcome to my shop. Blessings to you. Oh wow. Actually find found something halfway decent there. <laughs> right, so I talked about this briefly a lot earlier on in the guide, obviously in like part one. But ideally you actually want to get some more three socket or two socketed flails. Make some of those rune words. <laughs> And if you're running with double swing in the beginning, some of these rune words are way more impactful. But a couple of these rune words are good, just in general. And you can get double black flail. It's actually a thing here. That's what we're going to be trying to get here. Are we even resetting here right now? Yeah, we are. Just... Doesn't seem like it. I look at that second page there for the flails. Good day. Got a one socket there. There's a three socket, okay. Mm, I believe Malice is... If uh, If L F, right? Yeah, okay. So this one's actually kind of important potentially for if you want to kill like a D clone very early with this character, it'd be really cool if we could actually demo that in the video, like we actually got on the assassin one time. Um, you could do that though. So th this one where it's actually really good for it. So I'll make it real quick so you can see what's up here. We're gonna start talking some strategies, okay? So if you want to kill D clone. What you can do is you can use Battle Cry to make it to where he has no defense. And then what you do is you put on Malice and you put on Black. And if you have any other crushing blow, like, I don't know, maybe use your Umrune to make a Duras, it's possible. If you have a Duras, actually, you have enough crushing blow to uh, just use two Black Flails. But at any rate, you can put on, like, the Goblin Toes. This is a 100% chance of open wounds, so he's constantly not healing. It's actually really useful. You can just use double swing, get him really low. And uh, you can use War Cry to finish him off, or you can just straight up finish him off with uh, something like One Point Berserk. I don't know. At any rate, there's a lot of things you can do with open wounds, really high battle cry, some War Cry, and just hitting him here with like double swing. And of course, we have One Point Double Swing, so we could do that. Um. Okay, so let's see. Are we actually gonna use this? I don't see us actually using this. We'd be more likely to use this, honestly, because deadly strike in the mana leech. Yeah. Blood tree stump some can be good though. Don't discount that item. Also not gonna use Clug Laws, but you definitely can. I think oh, actually no, I might show that off. You can also use Clug Laws as well against something like him to slow him down. So there's actually a lot of good options here. Anyway, just wanted to show that off real quick. I also want to show you guys a couple of other rune words that are pretty instrumental, including some that we don't need anymore. And remember, you can get that one from normal Countess. So that's how early you can get it, is as soon as you get to Act 3 and can farm flails from normal Farah, you can make it that early in the game. And it's main, the main function of Malice is it does decent damage early game, like for double swing, which you can do. But then of course that later in the game, you can even use that to destroy Ubers. You can use it to take out, he that was having really high level battle cry though, right? Cause you really need to get rid of their, you need to get rid of their defense. If you have to, you can put more plus skills on your offhand to make it work. Take off the uh, teleport staff, you know, put on some war cry uh, spears or put on, you know, double spirit, you know, photos, whatever. 
And then you can cast Battle Cry on your offhand and uh, on your weapon swap, and then you swap back. Get a pretty high battle cry that way. <clears throat> and they have no defense, which means you'll be able to hit them every time. So you'll be able to hit them a whole bunch. Applying open wounds constantly, applying crushing blow. And you're going to train them down pretty fast. It's very important for that particular strat. And this is another three socket flail, which means... We're actually going to make a second black. So this is another thing you can do. You can put open wounds elsewhere in the build, like you can make a, a belt. You can, uh, like I said, I actually have a numbering, but I put it in a shaft stop. But if you use it for uh, Duras, which is a three socket of armor, it's got crushing blow and open wounds. This is really good for taking down like D clone and Ubers early on. You can totally use it for that purpose. I'm going to go greedy with the shaft stop, though, in terms of like survivability and power. So, you can go this, though. Duras isn't like insanely good against like. Trav and Gull, for instance, so... Doesn't really... <clears throat> so yeah, th th this, this guy is all about farming, getting some higher level stuff, and then talking strategy. So you guys can know, like, different ways to do things on a Barbarian. Barbarian has so many tools in his kit. Way more tools than most classes have in terms of just being able to deal with difficult situations. And... Yeah, he's got a slow start. Yeah, he doesn't farm quite as fast as some things, but he has so many. He's so versatile. He can kind of do, kind of do it all. All right. So this is the second black flail that we're gonna want to make here, just for purposes of having a second black flail. Um, what this can allow us to do. Is we can we don't have to use concentrate anymore if we want we can just use double swing could you could even use frenzy to power our souls up and then use double swing double swing attacks faster though and so you can use double 40 crushing blow here and you can actually kill bosses even faster this way and you can even also respect to whirlwind and then you can actually kill bosses with double black as well um Believe it or not, that is a strat. Also using Warcry. <clears throat> so that's another good fun strat. Um, the two socket and flail, of course, you can also make steel, which is tur L in the early game, but I've already mentioned that. We're not going to farm for that, but I just want to mention that as well, which is something we didn't make for double swing. And also remember that the best use early game of a three socket flail is actually Tau 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 for 150 poison damage. Um, or uh, it's really painful. Like look at look at Tau Rune. Actually, it's not 150. It's 225. You have 225 poison damage, and that does a lot of damage. And you can kill things very fast with double swing using one of those flails. And then you can maybe use the other flail, you can stack it with elemental damage, or you can have um, steel or malice for attack rating, steel for attack speed, and you can put that in your faster weapon slot. Remember to always have the faster weapon in your left slot, we talked about that in Devil Throw. The same would go if you had like a steel for AR and attack speed. <clears throat> and then you can use double swing instead of double throw, and that's what you would do in early game. So let's go... Uh, <clears throat> let's go make some more rune words and let's uh, talk some other strategies. This could be nice. You could trade this. You could put runes in it, but we're actually not going to need it because we have access to better things. <clears throat> so this is something you can do on the mercenary. As you can see, two sockets. Ethereal doesn't break on the merc. Keep that in mind. The merc likes defense, especially when you have shout. So 700... 68 defense is bad. You can obviously get a lot higher if it was an elite base ethereal, but it's a pretty high defense. It's like almost 500 defense, two socketed armor. I'll put that to good use. So if you put on the mercenary, he has 2,000 defense. And we just rolled that using, um, and we got a random number of sockets anywhere from one to four using um, perfect topaz, Tal, Thule. It's most likely to get four actually, but we got two, which is interesting. Notice the Merc has almost, he has over 6,000 defense. So all of a sudden now, even monsters in hell aren't always hitting him. It's pretty tanky. 
Um, that's another way to make him tanky besides just having the R, of course, arguably. Uh, this has about the same amount of defense, which is nice. The difference between this and this, though, is this gives them a ton of resistances. So if we want to make the mercenary trav capable, you're going to want to give him some life leech if possible. Uh, you're going to want to stack his res at the very least, and if possible, even have uh, maximum fire resistance. And that would be like Guardian Angel or something. We didn't find that. We didn't find Kira's Guardian as well, which would stack his res with Guardian Angel. But what we did, you know, and then you can get Life Leech off like a Reaper's. Reaper's Guardian Angel Cures is like the perfect setup for a Trap Merc. But um, if you don't get that, which you probably won't by this stage, no doubt. Um, I'll put that to good use. Note that he still has max all res, but he has 231 fire res. That's really big. So if there's a conviction or a no in Trav. His fire res won't drop so low that he'll instantly die and it'll actually be possible maybe to keep him alive. If you put a socket in this and put a row, you can actually have enough to where he's unaffected by conviction completely, which is actually really good. It's a very basic way to do that. And of course, if he kills anything with this, you even get some extra gold find. And he has life leech. <laughs> if you're using Doom or Beast, what should be in the left hand? Depends, what's the faster base? Are they both, uh... If they're both Berserker Axes, it's whichever has more attack speed, which I think is Beast. Yeah, I don't think... Does Doom have attack speed? I think it does, but... I don't know, I don't always remember Doom. Doom is... <laughs> okay, so Doom... If they're both the same base, then you put Doom in the left hand, yes. Uh, it doesn't matter. It, the only thing it's checking for in the left slot is more attack speed and a faster base, so just have, being a faster base weapon in general. Uh, the Fanaticism War can be anywhere. It can even be on the Mercenary, and it will still do the same thing for you. doesn't matter where it is. Okay, um, Auras are just... It, it's a global effect, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so this back to Corbin was kind of nice. But you can actually make an insight out of a thresher, which is even better. Funny enough, we can have some really high dex pull arms because we have Crown of Thieves. So like some of these things that we found in this Rags of Riches run are actually pretty pretty incredible for the Merc, so that's nice. Um, don't always get this level of power, but remember, you can have 30 all res just by using this four socketed uh Gothic plate I showed you guys a second ago, so you, you don't need this, but this is nice. It's even better. Of course, it gives them some hit recovery too, so that doesn't hurt, and it gives them more defense typically. And then something like this. The key really is life leech though, it's fire res, and just having decent res all around, and it's having um, decent weapon damage. So this is an elite non-eth base that we rolled in the cube using Rao, yeah, perfect amethyst. Same thing. So you had Rao, Tur, Tau, Soul. This is really crappy meditation aura, but it's okay. That to good use. Honestly, what I would consider to be the most important stat is the critical strike, so he can actually help you kill things. That means he actually has a lot of chance to do double damage. And he has 431 damage, so his damage is pretty good, and he attacks pretty fast now. That's all good stuff. This thing had low ED too, and it had high crit strike, same thing. But as you can see, the damage on this is a lot higher, at least the maximum damage. And uh, it's a faster weapon base as well. This is not quite as fast. But yeah, anyway. Fun stuff. Pressure is good. So that's a pretty solid mercenary, right? And with that much res and fire res and life leech and some weapon damage, he should be surviving against the um, Travancool fairly decently. Like I said, though, something like Guardian Angel would be better, even more stacked fire res would be better. Um, there's a lot of improvements you can get there. So just keep all that in mind. You can always get more. Now what's interesting is... 
We found some really nice damage reduction items. In fact, they're so nice that... <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty solid time here. We could actually swap a lot of stuff. We need a pull rune to upgrade the weapon, unfortunately, and that's just not something we have. Otherwise, I would try that weapon, because... Believe it or not, that's a pretty solid weapon. If you upgrade it to a Cryptic Axe, that's not a bad whirlwind weapon at all. It has a Deadly Strike, it has Barbarian skills, it has Mana Leech. Um, these are things that I'd like to farm Hell Countess more for, but that's not easy. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this Forsaken camp. So nice, this is now a hardcore guide. It kind of is, honestly. Now... Now you might actually have a chance of not dying. Now what's interesting is you could also upgrade the shaft stop too and get a ton of more defense. That may make you even tankier. Um, I'm not going to use the Lemrune on that because we only have one, but I think you get the right idea. There's actually something else we're going to make here. It's kind of cool. Um, just with a bunch of runes we've been able to pick up. So we're also going to make Harmony, which is Tur If Soul Co. I know, it's kind of a weird word. Tur, Ith, Sol, Oh. Now, this is actually really key to making a lot of farms on a Barbarian, or even on any character more efficient. Usually in Rags to Riches, I actually am not able to get to even show this off, because typically, finding the four-socketed bow and the Korun doesn't typically happen within the span of one of these guides. But if you can get one of these like this, it's really sick. And of course, uh, level 20 revive is actually nice too. You can actually get some survivability in some cases. But typically what you would do, um, of course, let's see. Um, oh yeah, because you don't have the decks, that's right. Um, I could show you, though, how this would work on this, for instance. So, you might ask, Dark Humility, why would you ever want to get rid of your Teleport Staff? Well, there's... You don't have to get rid of it one. You could swap it out. You can keep it in your queue. But even if you don't do that, um, there's a lot of farms where it's actually more efficient just to run through town and then to run from place to place than constantly charging up the Teleport Staff. Also... Strangely enough, there's even one farm where you don't use your damage at all. Impossible. So you take off your damage items. And you would just use this and this. Chat, what farm do you use both Harmony and the Teleport Staff on? On a Barbarian. Let's see if chat knows. Let's see if chat can figure it out. What farm would you want to do that on? <clears throat> say you were trying to commit to a farm. Now, this is a very grindy farm, but... So you wanted to do that. Lower Kuros, correct. Yeah, so chat knows. So, chat's smart. Okay, that, that's good. I'm glad chat knows these things. But we're trying to show people these strats because a lot of people don't know how to farm things quickly, maybe. On a Barbarian. So super chess, obviously it'd be better to have a Sorceress, right? You have Telekinesis, you have FCR. But, you know, one thing that's interesting is... Well, we can actually kind of show off here, real quick. Is if you can get both Harmony and his Teleport Staff, what you can do... You can really abuse your mobility. And you're not trying to kill the monsters, you're trying to hit the chests. So you don't need damage. Um, you could just farm random clickables like this on Battle.net, but remember if you have single player... You want those uh, super chests in the two houses around the campfires. You want two sets of those right around the waypoint. And you can keep reloading your game by entering another difficulty and going back to hell to kind of reload this map and get a good map. What you do is this. So these super chests here and those super chests there. And then you just keep hitting these over and over. Oh. 
What's interesting though is even on Battle Night, you can take advantage of maybe higher player account games, like public games. And you can just sit here with your teleport staff and your harmony bow until you get GG runes. And they will happen. Clickables are very good for runes. And you can keep doing this over and over. You can do this before you farm trap and farm your grief even. And your oath, and if you don't want to do countess. You can farm insane runes that you can trade for the runes you actually need. Heck, you can even get your enigma going, you know. Um, because Sir Rune is the most common rune from any of the clickables in here, including the super chests. And so two of those is a burr. Can't get Jaws straight up, but that's okay. Maybe your Merc will kill a random monster in here and pop a jaw. That can happen. Probably not, though. Um... Yeah, see, there's a rune. This is just player's one, of course. Player's one is not super effective for this farm, to be perfectly honest. If all you have access to is player's one, to be kind of sad, this isn't super good. But even in player's one, you can uh, you can make it work. Remember, you want like player's five, player seven, depending on what rune you're looking for. Ideally, you would set that in single player, but you can also join public games and follow us uh, like chaos runs or something to do that. Either way. <clears throat> um, this is a very viable strat for getting some of those really good weapons and items, like one of those endgame items for the Barbarian. It's definitely something you should keep in mind. What else is interesting is there's a farm where you can use your damage <clears throat> in harmony instead of teleport. And typically it's actually more, e more efficient to do this, especially if you stack faster run walk. Uh, I'll kind of show you guys this a little bit here. So you get a faster run walk. Heck, you could even go, um, let's see, go, go three piece Saigons here. You can get 50 MF there. Then you can get more MF. You can just stack MF wherever else. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just put on, you know, whatever MF you can possibly get. And, uh... Yeah, we'll, we'll, lose, we'll lose some of the FCR. I'll put on the Rhyme Shield, you know, blah, blah, blah. A lot of things you can do here. And then I think... Yeah, uh, 64 faster cast rate. Yeah, that's fine. Doesn't really matter, though. Just need 63. Put on your um, magic find ring, whatever. You can get like close to 200 MF, right? Just doing that. And then what you can do, or you can get 200 MF plus whatever. You use this to run up to them. And you would kill them. And you can do this in hell, of course, too, though. But note that, look how look how good Vigor is through town. One thing Vigor can't do, or Teleport can't do, is teleport through town. It also costs gold to repair. So a lot of people would prefer this. MF does not affect rune drops, correct. And that's something we've mentioned here in part three, where we're talking about advanced farming information and strats on a uh, fledgling barbarian. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can do there. Um, and of course we're gonna show off more strats and you know, we're just showing off some basic ones real quick. And then we're gonna show off some other strats. And we're gonna make some more rumors, do some more crafting here before we do that though. I'm gonna show some basic strats first. Then I'm gonna use up more of the materials in our stash. I'll continue. Anyway though. So Note, when you load into the game and you're doing Eldritch, let's say you're doing Eldritch Shank or Eldritch Shank Pendle. When you load in the game, you start up there, you have your Harmony Bow. Harmony is very effective and you never have to worry about like recharging it or anything. You should probably bow well. Right. Okay, so, and then you go back to the Vigor Bow, and then you can just use the Vigor Bow to like more efficiently like do this. The only bad thing about this though, 
As you saw how useful teleport can be for positioning against Piddleskins sometimes. But if you run up to him really fast, sometimes it doesn't matter. So I accidentally used Harmony Bow to do that. That's you always want to weapon swap back to your uh, damage in your rhyme. Always want to do that if you're farming these for sure. Get your damage, get your MF, whatever. But anyway. So, those are some strats you can employ using a Harmony Bow. And you could even use it for Travancle, but I 100% pref I prefer Teleport uh, Source. What you could do is you could use Harmony for Travancle. Or you can use a Teleport Amulet, and then you can use like a Gold Aggers and Swap or Alibaba's and Swap for um, using Find Item to increase your chance of finding items more. That's stuff you can either trade for, or you can like farm Mephisto or something for it, but either way, or you know, Elder Shank, whatever, Elder Shank Pendle. Um, that's really good. So, yeah, no matter what you do, it, it's good stuff. Look at that though, look at all that life leech. It's incredible stuff. Okay. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do now, so we're actually gonna do some more room word creation. Now, I could make treachery for the merc, you know, that's an option for sure. And I would 100% make treachery if you had like Kira's and a uh, Reaper's Toll, because then you have your life leech and then you have to crepify. You don't have that though, so that's fine. I'm gonna want to show you guys some Act 5 strats as well, Act 5 mercenary strats and some other stuff. So, what's interesting is a lot of this is preference based, and you just really have a lot of options in the barb, so. Can I help you? It's kind of what this part 3 is all about. You, know, you don't, there's not just one way to do things. Um, really is not. So, what we're gonna do now, I'm trying to think, what should we do next? Well, we could make the obedience and get ready for it. It's an option. Where's the, uh, where's the socket quest for it, though? Also, Maybe I can try to roll this phase blue. And I guess we can try. I mean, it doesn't hurt to try, right? To some extent. See, if we can roll six sockets, we can maybe make unbending well at some point. If not... Oh, it did roll six sockets. Whoa. Dude, we just need a foul from Countess. Ugh. Goodness. That's uh actually let me see here, can I mm. Okay, so unbending will requires foul. That's really the only tough one. Uh the other ones don't seem to be that tough. Okay. So right now, it seems like we can either make Unbending Will, or, or we can make, Obedience. Yeah, right now it's an either or situation for sure. Yeah, I would need one more Ko or a Foul to make Unbending Well. So what we'll do is we'll go back to Farming Countess later. No, we'll, we'll do it later. We're, we're going to show some strats now because it's been a while of farming, and then I'll go back to Farming Countess. But what this proves, though, is that we can pretty easily get there. Um, Alright, yeah, so one Ko. Alright, that's actually really good because I have two... Right, so we're gonna make Unbending Will. So this is like a precursor. This is like literally starter territory Berserk Barb, but we're not gonna do that yet. What we're gonna do is the Whirlwind Strat first, cause it's more fun. I wanna show you guys how to do that as well. 
10 runs maximum for a foul. No, I have a foul, but it's gonna, and I also have a co, but I need all those for um, obedience. So I'm gonna make obedience first. A lot of people don't know you can do this actually on the Barbarian. I think a lot of people know about the six socketed and bending will. It's a pretty new approach. So, you know, it's pretty obvious stuff. But they don't know about um, obedience, which is Hell, Co, Thul, F, Foul. Okay. Hell, Co, Thul, F, Foul. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go socket this cryptic axe they found. Is cold damage on obedience? There is, it's true. Um, which is why this isn't insanely ideal, but there's other things you can do with obedience too, though. Um, obedience is just a great starter whirlwind approach, so it's actually really cool. But you are correct, it's also good for leap attack potentially as well. But you're right that there is cold damage. There's also cold damage on Reaper's Toll though. And Reaper's Toll is also good for farming Trav on the Barb. You can sacrifice some bodies in Trav. It's it's really when you get to an elite version, like a really built out GG Barbarian that you really want zero cold damage. When you're near at this point in the game though, you take what you can get, especially if you're just on single player, just playing a Barb from scratch. You don't... You don't be like, oh, it has a cold damage. I literally can't do it. No, that's that's not the right attitude. Yeah, you gotta sacrifice those corpses. That's right. Commercial. Well, that's that's what happens. Which plays a lot of ads. They do. Um, that's what happens. Even at a minimum, they play ads. They play ads when you come in, or they don't play ads when you come in, and then they play ads when you're here. Either way, I'm gonna get them. So we're actually gonna use a socket quest here to make a maximum of five so sockets. I could have found a five socket elite base straight up, and I could have been more patient, which is what I typically do, um, because I wouldn't just want to use my socket quest so willy nilly. People don't have ad ad blockers don't work against those ads very effectively. Alright, Hell, Co. It's really easy to mess up this room, or let's not do it. <laughs> Hell, Co. So this is this is why we can't make both room words at the moment, but I'm actually really glad we rolled that phase blade, because that's uh that's actually sick, because now we can make uh, the other room word too, so we can do the other thing. Uh, that's a tough thing to get in a Rags for Riches run, a six socketed phase blade. So. Yeah, so we go Hell. Co. <laughs> I don't know how to make this. Thul F Foul. Thul. I never make this. F. And then I have one Foul run currently, and this is the problem, is I need another one, but. We'll we'll, 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 we'll deal with it. Strangely enough, foul runes are very useful in a barbarian. Most classes, foul runes, you just make lems. You know, that's all you do with them. But um, yeah. so this is obedience. And look at that monster. That is a that is a weapon with actual damage. That also gives you huge crushing blow, enchant. Which is nice, because you can even use it to like increase your attack rating further. And attack rating is a problem. Um, until you get like Angelic. I haven't found Angelic Ami. If I had Angelic Ami, I wouldn't have to even use Battle Cry. But unfortunately, I'm still going to have to use Battle Cry, because I don't have Angelic Ami. Um, so, that is a problem with that. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, we'll repair it. Notice that it's not indestructible, so you can't do this in an F weapon if you're going to wield it. Damn, that's a beefy weapon. Yeah, so this is the easiest way to make a weapon that actually does damage on Whirlwind, unless you get full IK, basically. But even full IK, the weapon damage, if I'm not mistaken, is lower than the average weapon damage on Obedience. So obedience is crazy. 
And you're not likely to get full IK on single player. Trading for IK armor is, believe it or not, very expensive in early ladder. Um, because any bard that exists is going to want it. So, you can go full IK, but this is a super cheap method of getting a very powerful weapon for Whirlwind. It is the cheapest and most effective method to do it. And it's something to be very aware of. Um, obviously, we're also going to make a Unbending Will for Berserk, which is also the cheapest method of obtaining a Berserk possible build as well. And so... I can confirm, currently looking for IK boots and... IK. Right, correct. So, you can go for full Immortal King set, which I think a lot of people know. Even even a lot of noobs know, oh yeah, that's a good thing for the Barbarian, right? I mean, it makes sense. It's the elite set for the Barbarian. I have the IK belt right here, so I mean... You would need more, though. A lot more than that. And so, either way, it's a very powerful weapon. We're going to use that there here in a moment, or pretty soon, but not immediately. Uh, before we mess around with that, I'm going to mess around with some other things. Just to show you guys what's possible here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I could go fire is. So, what's interesting also, is you'll notice what I'm doing here is actually kind of interesting. I don't recommend going full Saigons once you get to this point in the game. But one thing you could actually do, which is surprisingly powerful, is not only is three-piece Saigons good because of the attack speed and you know life leech, the res, the life, the even the magic find, you know, an attack rating. That's all really good stuff. But surprisingly you can also add a helm to that. And if you can't for some reason get Angelic Amulet, like I haven't found it yet, <clears throat> um, four piece is actually pretty goaded. Not just three piece. Because that attack rating is insane. That's a lot of attack rating. 656. It's really hard to get that anywhere else. It's basically an Angelic Ring and Amulet right there. So you basically get the Angelic bonus just by adding that. And these items are easy to farm from Nightmare Bosses. That's where we found all these. Um, we just found them all. I mean, we just... <clears throat> it was super easy. Um, took two seconds. We just found them. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy stuff. Um, one thing to note, though, of course, is that... You know, you can always be more, though. I think a Zon is fun. A hardcore start, yes. Now, one thing to note is I threw out that four-socketed uh, gothic plate, but you can also put in perfect topazes and then use that to have a ton of MF on your armor before you kill things as well. Now, I didn't do that because I didn't want to keep it in my stash and mess with that too much, but not only can you get a 30 all res armor with that on the mercenary, you can also use it to get a ton of MF. Now you can also just go Colem Tier or whatever, Tier Lem Co or Co or Tur Colem, whichever it is for wealth, and you get a hundred MF and three hundred gold finder from that as well. But you can do that. <clears throat> so that can get you to like three hundred MF very easy if you stack that armor, because I was already hitting like two hundred. So these are all things to think about. That's also why you always keep topazes. Like these are, they're always useful. I don't, I don't care what anyone says. Um, these are always super useful. Always useful at all points in the game. Of course, you can stack MF. You could do it either way, though. I'm not gonna MF swap for this farm because I'm not gonna take it super seriously. But I'm not actually show you guys. A Mephisto farm, okay, in hell. We're gonna use a slightly different approach here. So, <clears throat> you already know that it's possible to get really high battle cry, right? And then you don't need much attack rating. You can also do this, or you can even swap out with your 72 MF helm. So remember, you can get up to 72 MF here. 
uh, just using perfect topazes. And then, of course, you can get up to 96 up here, just using perfect topazes. And then you can get MF on everything else, just with either a little bit of cow farming, or maybe even a little bit of gambling, but not much. Wouldn't take much. And if we're just picking up all, you know, all this jewelry, typically you'll find some decent MF item. Like, I'm trying to find my MF... Where's my MF Amy? Yeah, that, that, that's not a very high one, but you, you'll get the idea. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a... Um, we're gonna do a Hell Mephisto farm. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of different things here with this farm that I haven't really shown before. That are actually quite interesting. So... Mephisto can be kind of challenging and it can be kind of dangerous. On hardcore, you might want to take heed of some of these other strats as well. So, ow. well, this isn't a strat. That's a that's a dime. We're gonna go to Mephisto and we're gonna navigate the map as we've talked about many times. And I'm gonna use two black flails. So we're not going to use Concentrate, we're actually going to use Double Swing. Now, Mephisto, you can see here, I can use both of these. Now this would be a lot more effective if I had a Raven Frost, because I don't have Kanabi Frozen. But notice that I'm killing him very fast with Double Swing, and you could even charge it up with Frenzy. And here's another interesting thing you can do. Oh god, I have negative 32 Light Rays, that's gonna get me killed. And I'll need my bow gone, but I have no more Light Rays, because I took off. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You want to make sure you always have light res against Mephisto, but I'm going to be too lazy to bother with that here. Now notice that I'm attacking with Cleglaws, and notice that he's attacking slower. This slows target 25%. So that can actually stay for a while. And then he's not quite as dangerous anymore, and you just stay there like that. And you can kill him. Now, he could have dropped a Shaco actually if I uh, maybe put on my MF, but I didn't swap my MF. Also, he could have dropped Kelpie's Snare, which is a way to get 75% slow on the Mercenary. And honestly, you don't really need Insight for killing Mephisto. So if you swap on like Kelpie's Snare, it's basically an ultra powerful Cleglaws that allow you to kill bosses even more effectively. So, anyway. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, well, you know. Fist is pretty weak. But I think you guys understand kind of some of the principles here, you know. At least seeing how, yeah. This is what I was looking for from Geed the first time, by the way. Hi, MF and Rez. Actually found it, like, randomly just looking at the vendor one time. Yeah, there's a lot of options you can employ. Now, note that, you know, I used Saigons this time. Crushing Blow is really your key to killing him, so let's say instead, you know, I was just going to use this, and I can just totally do this as well. I'm going to go kill him a couple more times, and I'm going to show you this, uh, this swap out here, which is kind of, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, you can also swap in more MF, you can swap in standard MF boots, whatever you want to do. Maybe even the 96 MF armor. And this isn't really helping us too much on that particular approach. It does give us faster run walk, though, which is impossible. not bad. But note, though, I'm still a Warcry Barbarian, and all it takes is one point double swing. That's it. It's just high battle cry. That's the key. It's reducing the monster's defense by, like, as close as you can get to 100%. That's what makes you hit with these things. You don't need damage. Don't don't be thinking that 
This double swing damage needs to be high. It can be super low in hell, it doesn't matter. It's all about crushing blow, getting that defense lowered, and hitting them. It's, it's counterintuitive. You would think something like this shouldn't work. So when you think of a barbarian, you think of something that needs a high damage weapon. It's like, what am I going to do without my high damage weapon? Well, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do, but I don't know what to do. I think we just get amped again. Okay, well, whatever. Should be fun. Maybe. It might be fun. If you're ever ramped on hardcore, take it off, 100%. The light res is so bad on this particular setup, my goodness. Um, that's a reason just to use my two barb helm, honestly. At least until we get them low. That was a rare Shaco, that's why. It didn't roll unique. If we got an actual Shaco, that would have been sick, but <clears throat> obviously you don't need to. If you do though, that's just going to help out your progression, of course. Any items like any of those god tier endgame items, I mean, that's the that's the that's the real holy grail right there. You know, just to make sure our light res is good, I'm going to have this temporarily. Yeah, we need to make sure our light res is halfway decent, or at least not insanely terrible. All right, so. I'm gonna show you guys again here. But this time, I'm gonna use more crushing blow. Look how fast he dies. This is way faster than concentrate, right? The key to this, though, is you need two black blows. And then, ideally, you wouldn't get frozen like this. Ideally, you'd have a Raven Frost by this point. Then you can just be fine. But notice. Swap it out, and then you can kill him this way too. And then you can finish him off with War Cry, and you have 200 plus MF for around 200 MF. Or you, you know, if I kept the Gothic plate, I actually probably would swap that out because I'd have like, if I had enough perfect topazes, you might not want to farm like a couple more perfect topazes. Just put MF in everything, and just like use double flails. Just put MF on your swap. If you have like. Gold Dagger, you could even swap to that once you start using Warcry. You don't need the Black Flails. So if you had like Gold Daggers, um, any kind of MF swap at all, like Alibaba's, that's what you'd want to do. You'd swap to those and then you'd kill them with Warcry. And then you'd have like really high MF, uh, really high MF kills with the Barbarian, even on bosses. Of course, you can use the same kinds of strats for Pendle, Shank, and Eldritch. And of course, to some extent, they also work against Travancle, but for Travancle, you actually need to be able to survive something. Which is, uh, a little more challenging. It's not Griffins, no. <laughs> it's not Griffins at all. But, you can see the effectiveness of slow target. And what is interesting is, I could even switch to... I can, I can switch to some other modes here as well. So what I'm actually going to do now, let's see, let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's do the, uh, let's show that the only way to do this. So let's say you're, you're mostly boss farming. You don't really need insight. Insight is really huge on Warcry, right? It's really big on Warcry. Um, and notice we still haven't respect or anything, so we're still just a Warcry barb. Um, you don't, you can make your primary skill war cry so that you can farm as many things as you can possibly do. See, the magic of this build is that I can farm bosses, I can farm, I can farm Countess really well, I can farm, um, Eldritch and Shank and Pendle really well, and I can do all of those things well with the same build. That's why war cry, just having high war cry damage, having max battle cry, and then having one point mace mastery for the black flails or whatever, or then one point double swing or one point concentrate or, you know, concentrate's good because you don't get interrupted, so that's nice. And then you can also use rhyme with concentrate, so that's one of the benefits. If you want to know why, like, why not use double swing all the time with two blacks? 
Well, Ryan Shield. <clears throat> now you can swap to finish him off, of course. Gives cannot be frozen, which is nice. It also gives more res. So you don't die from his lightning attack if your lightning res sucks. And it also gives magic find on the main hand, so you don't even need to swap to anything. So there are advantages to this, and I already showed how to do this in the previous Rags to Riches parts of the Barbarian. But note that the Rhyme has definitely got good advantages. It's just, and then you would just use Concentrate instead of Double Swing. Yep. So there's yes. there's all kinds of different approaches to this, and of course you can already see Double Swing is a pretty fast attacking thing. Anyway, um, one thing you can always employ here. Oh, um, I'll put that to good use. Can I not save the barbarians in hell? I guess not. I'll put that to good oh, use. that sucks. We're gonna go back to Nightmare then. All right, so we're gonna go to Nightmare. How good is two black and whirlwind? Well, so that's something. I don't know if I can. I'm gonna be able to show that directly because. Well, there's a few reasons for that. But yeah, I'll, I'll I'll explain it. Cause you need you need mace mastery versus I could get one point mace mastery and I might be able to show that to some degree. Um, but double black is actually pretty effective on Orland. So it, it's crazy how many options you have. But the reason why I'm this like singer, one point everything and then really high battle cry approach. Is because this works against everything. What we're gonna do soon, though, doesn't always work against everything. You know? It'll work against some things better than others, and they'll be a bit more particular. Uh, this is why this is the approach I used all the way throughout um, Rags to Riches Part 2 for the Barbarian, because it always works. It's just a superior approach. And to show people the better approaches, I think, is good. Because then they won't be as frustrated with dumb things. I'll put that to good use. I'll put that to good use. All right. So, if you don't have Reaper's Toll, which is typically tougher to find anyway, one thing you can do that's almost as good um, is you can go Act Five Mercenary, which is very tanky anyway. Get Life Leech off this. Same same stuff really. Um, ideally, you'd probably have Treachery for more Decrepify procs, but I don't have multiple Lemurins, so... What I'd do here is I'd make Lawbringer. So I'm actually going to make Lawbringer just to show you guys a strat. I'm also going to show you guys a couple other strats, too. So Lawbringer, honestly... On hardcore, this is a very defensive approach. It's very nice. Um, but anyway, it is the rune word is Am Lem Co. Okay. Am Lem Co. So. Pretty sure I have another Am rune somewhere. Yeah. We'll put in the Lem rune. Okay, so. Gonna make. Amlemco. Sometimes I forget what it is, but yeah, anyway. There's Lawbringer. So Lawbringer gives the Merc life leech no matter what, which is nice. The only bad thing is the Merc can't leech very well because it doesn't have any enhanced damage on it, which means that it can't. There's nothing for the Merc life leech to work on. It has to have physical damage for that. And then, of course, the big stat is Decrepify, but it also has Sanctuary Aura when equipped, which is very effective against undead enemies. So, the Decrepify, though, is the same thing you'd get on Reapers, except it's a much higher level, but it's only 20% chance. So this is like one of those things where, ideally, you'd even put it like in a 3-socketed phase blade, and you'd have like decks from something like this. You have a really fast one, and then you have Treachery in the middle. This is a decent build, though. It's a decent setup. And um, the interesting thing about Decrep is it's like a perma slow. Now, 
There's a really cheap way to get this slow as well. I'll put that to good use. So, first we're gonna show you guys the ghetto way to do it, which is something like this. And it's kind of like kill. It's like the Kelpie snare of the Act Five mercenaries. So this is slows target by thirty five percent. So you can do this, and then you can do what we're about to do in a second. By the way, you know it, it doesn't matter. Uh, do I have a light res ring? Probably not. No. Um, we'll just put on res here. That might help a little bit with this. Anyway. Doesn't really matter exactly how you do this. A lot of ways. Okay. Uh, or one for crushing blow is nice. You don't care for damage since you have crushing blow. One point is nice. Right, right. <clears throat> right. Yeah, it well, I mean to be fair with obedience though, the damage actually can matter a bit, but yeah, I mean, for sure. But if let's say you're going like double black, then you totally could just go one point whirlwind, yeah. Like obedience is a bit of a different ballgame. So when you use this, that's uh Yeah, see that's that's something you can do. Yeah, that would work. Except you wouldn't go Yeah, that would hundred percent work. <clears throat> that would hundred percent work, Lucas, yeah. And we're we're not there yet though. You're 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 literally talking about the build that I'm gonna do for this. Don't worry about it. We're not there yet, man. Jumping the gun. Jumping right on top of it. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, you can do that too, which is rhyme black. Yeah. Wow, it actually what? It's a rune word. Night bot, what the hell? It always assumes the worst. <clears throat> tisk tisk tisk. Okay, um Yeah anyway. Yeah, but I mean you can see obedience is a monster though, Lucas, so Yeah, apparently. <laughs> That's the that's definitely what's going on, I think. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Okay. So we're actually not going to bother with an MF swap for killing Mephisto here. I'm just going to kill him. I want to show you guys, like, how this works as well. Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, you could totally do that. No, Breath of the Dying is like... <laughs> that's an endgame weapon there, right? Um, it's not as good as Double Grief, but it's one of the endgame weapons, right? And it's something you... I mean, if you got a Zod ring somehow... I mean, good luck, but... Never know. You know, it actually might be behind us. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, there's like a little thing back here. Doesn't look like it though. It's all going to the right again. Look how tanky he is with Barbo, like the. He will. The F5 mercenary is a is a beast. Well, let's say like you know you don't find Kelpie snare and you find this thing here like Crane Tivo mirror. Okay. This is better than Cloglaw's gloves. We could we could abuse this if we want. 
That's what I'm going to show you here in a second. Just got to put it on the right mercenary. It's locked. There's no crushing blow on it, so. It's locked. Can't use it for ourselves, but that's okay. It's locked! This is a bad map, dude. This is a really bad map. Uh. That's gonna take a while, I suppose. Mm hmm. All the way to the back and to the left? Is that what this is? That's what it looks like. One, there's an all the way in the back. Two, it's going left. Yeah, it looks like it's right here. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of figured. That's a that's an interesting map. Look at, look at how slow he is. It's very slow. Now what's interesting is... Now what he's gonna do... Frog Decrepify on this though. Are you gonna do it, Mercenary? I don't know. Maybe not. So I'll have to pull him down. Oh, you're, you're dead. Okay. It's locked. Mm, I don't really care. What's your take on Oath? It's very good. I've talked about trying to get Oath this whole time, but the problem is in a guide like this, I don't have enough time to farm it. it requires a really good base. Requires good runes. Yeah, it's not easy to do. What do you Oath is really good. But it requires a base that can be sometimes. It can take a little bit longer to find. It requires like Mal pull. I, I doubt we're getting Oath in this, but it does look like Unbending Will might happen because. Yeah, we, there, there's a good chance we'll get to Unbending Will, I think, in this. Always hit the super chest. Make sure you have keys on you at all times. Yeah, anyway. So, killing Mephisto on a barb, it seems challenging until you get all this crushing blow. You know, you have max battle cry. Heck, if you find like goblin toes or gore riders, I mean, you're set. And you get some attack speed on the gloves or three piece Saigons, even will help it out. Either way, it's not bad. Look, we're still using stealth, which isn't even a... It's not even a good item. As a matter of fact, we can use a shaft stop and that'd be a little bit better. So... By the way, though, you know, you can use Durial Shell. There's a lot of things you can... Durial Shell would give cannot be frozen, though. But... Crane Tivo Mirror is no joke. On an act 5 Merc, it's like Kelpie Snare, and it'll make Mephisto extremely weak and feeble. So, don't count out some of those items, make sure to check all the stats. It's kind of weird all these different strats you can do, but it's interesting. It really is interesting. I have like a lot of power here. Still have our Insight too, so we can use that on an act 2. Got lots of other things. Use treachery over anything. Oh yeah, if we can get another Lemurin, which we might when we farm Countess again. You never know. I'll definitely make treachery if we get another one. I could also make wealth though, just to stack more MF if I was, you know, continuing this run for serious. But I could also just, you know, perfect topaz it, right? It's a vomit. People think that sword sucks, but it's not. It's actually kind of good. Slowest target is an insane stat. I'm gonna cast Decrep. There we go. Decrep is, is, is crazy. The only problem though is with Decrep is it overrides Battle Cry. <clears throat> so this is something that you might not want to do 
until you at least get Angelic Room or Ami. Or, <clears throat> or if you do it with this approach. <clears throat> so this is a good approach if I do this. <clears throat> or if I put all my points into Double Swing or Mace Mastery alternatively to get enough attack rating. So you're gonna need, you're gonna have an attack rating problem when you cast Decrypt. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have at least some attack rating. Unfortunately, this isn't even enough. And, yeah. See, the thing about an Act 2 Merc is you can get, you can get a Decrep on top of Blessed Aim as well, which is actually insane. You notice Decrep is actually slowing down my clear speed here because, one, I'm not relying fully on my physical damage, and two, I don't have enough attack rating because I don't have Angelic Amy. So Angelic Amy plus Ring would fix that really easily. So if you happen to find both of those and trade for them, I just wanted to show you guys a really cool strat you can do with Lawbringer. It slows down Mephisto a ton, it makes them useless, and you can even increase your damage. <laughs> but just keep in mind there, if you use Decrep like that, it's going to mess up your battle cry and rip, so that's no good. He is making sure you have enough attack rating. Attack rating is hard with the one-pointers, right? So, yeah, also keep that in mind as well. Because uh, in Battlecry, you, you can't use Battlecry at Decrep. Decrep will overwrite it. You can use it in between, but then it's basically like you're not depending on the Decrep. So, something you have to be aware of for doing that, for sure. Oh, dude, classic. Oh, man, that stash base, bro. I know. That, that's classic stash, man. Exactly how small your stash is. You really have to ration what you put in there. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now, classic is the true hard mode. There's a there there's something right now since we don't have mana leech our mana leech solution on whirlwind can be meditation so that's good uh, and we're not going to use decrep because we don't have attack rating anyway so when we do travancle that's not going to be how we can do it with the gear that we currently have but just keep in mind there's all these other options if you happen to find other gear happen to trade for it and you know angelic ami isn't really that expensive Early ladder, it can be worth something, but I don't know. Remember, you can always just farm more uh, Endarial and Nightmare or uh, Hell, and drops very frequently that way as well. So, no, I'm not going to go within that anyway, so I'm going to throw it on the ground. You need See, you need something like this, but ideally Ethereal, and then an Oath is actually worth making. That's the problem. You're not gonna, yeah, you're not gonna do it with this stuff, not at all. Notice how we actually have more space in the stash, though, no, it's actually kind of... Anyway, I'm gonna throw that on the ground. You would actually use this over Decrep right now, because I don't have attack rating, so this would actually be better on the Merc, so this would, this would be better than the Lawbringer. But, Lawbringer's insane, and Decrepify is negative 50% enemy physical res. So when you can get attack rating, you can do so much more damage. Like something like Lobbering and Reapers plus Obedience is insane damage. That's going to make you uh, even be able to deal with higher player count um, faster on the Barbarian. Okay, so I went over a bunch of basic garbage. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to employ... We're going to show you guys how Warcry currently works with our current gear in Trab. So we're going to show that first. And then the plan is actually to make, to turn us into what's more of a war, war, uh, whirlwind barbarian. So we're no longer going to be a Warcry barbarian anymore. We're going to do whirlwind. And we can show you how with a decent weapon some crap it's actually a not bad 
to actually really sell them. But to do that, I'm going to need all your plus skills. Right now, we're just going to go back to our whirlwind build here. Nothing special. Um, going to get some fire is. If you have a dwarf star and you're farming trap, by the way, dwarf star is amazing. I don't have a dwarf star, though. Unfortunately, the best I got is all this fire is here, and that's not bad because if you can't sort it, at least make sure your fire is as maximum or close to maximum as possible. Your other resistances can be decent. If you're doing hardcore, though, they need to be good. Everything needs to be good except for poison. Um, if you're doing softcore, then most of the time you're just going to be encountering. Um, a lot of fire damage, so make sure that fire resistance is pumped up 100%. Otherwise, you're just going to be struggling, so you don't want to struggle. Struggling is bad. Greetings. Um, general. I can actually pump up my fire res even more here so that I can stack fire res against. Um, so I have a little bit more fire res he's able to find. And I can stack fire res against conviction so that conviction doesn't insta kill me. And so if you're doing war cry, what you want is high damage war cry, of course. Um, you could use grim ward, but grim ward takes up the bodies, so that's usually not a good idea. And have your good find item chance. So I think we have what is it, fifty percent, right? Yep, that's what I said is like the minimum. You want like fifty percent early on for trap farming. And then you're going to take all these basic items, these really basic items. And then you're going to farm trap. No, res is okay. We have some MF. MF, believe it or not, though, like we only have 19 on this build, is not the most important thing for trap. Um, you find so many items that you don't need much MF. Now, it's going to be nice when we can get better items and we can get more MF. Um, but yeah, and like we can get like MF swaps and things like that. Of course, you can already do that to some extent, but I'm gonna want my teleport stuff. Um, I could use Rhyme, of course, for now for like horking if I wanted to, though, so I can keep that in my cube. And then there's a couple other things, but otherwise, most part, you need to be able to survive it. And runes, remember, are not affected by MF. Charms are not affected by MF. You can find some of the godliest things from Travancool. They're not affected by MF. And with as many items as you're going to find, you'll find uniques even with small amounts of MF. So just keep that in mind that it's not the biggest deal to get tons of MF on Travancool. Your key is surviving and doing damage. I do damage, but I'm also going to want my mercenary to do damage. So we're gonna do is we're actually gonna invest in a damage I'm mercenary way, have you what didn't you see enough action here the first time I correct so if you are doing war cry your mercenary is actually very important to your damage in Travancool this is something that when I played Project Diablo 2 last season and did barb start on the actual season itself I really made sure to emphasize um, your mercenary is very key to your damage, I'll put that and War Cry place. will provide some supplementary damage. Battle Cry, of course, would help out as well. But the real key, though, here is making sure that your mercenary does damage. So you're going to give him Might Aura. He's going to need to actually do damage now. Um, a non-F Elite Pull Arm is not ideal easy. still. Ideally, it is an Elite F Pull Arm with high critical strike. The ED matters a little bit, but that's about it. Ideally, you have a really strong weapon. You could use another obedience on him, but then War Cry is going to feel pretty terrible. So, Battle Cry is also going to lower enemy defense. So, you can use that in addition to War Cry on the Travancool monsters, which will help your mercenary attack and kill them as well because it reduces their defense. So,. We have 105 FCR. We have maximum fire resistance. Mercenary has maximum fire resistance. Has stacked fire resistance, which is ideal against conviction. Has life leech. And then this is good, but 
Ideally, of course, at some point you'd get Reaper's Toll for Decrepify, because Decrepify also helps Warcry. Um, I could actually use the Lawbringer here as well. It's just that I'm going to have mana problems. You could do that, though. Uh, you'll cast Decrep, which will help out your Warcry damage. But either way, it doesn't really matter. Mercenary is gonna die because it's too much stuff down here. And no, we can still kill Travancore like this though. We can even pull them with Taunt as well if they're not going into our range. We can use the Teleport Staff to go in between the windows as well. Notice that even with really low damage war cry, okay. We're gonna use the fast work method here. So since we don't have like a magic find swap or anything, I could put this on though, of course. This can maybe increase our chance. And that's Travancle. We're actually gonna do a few uh Travancle farms here so you can see it with how it works with War Cry. Remember, the idea is to load the mercenary with as much damage and survivability as possible, especially against fire damage. And then to make sure you have decent damage yourself. Um, the negative 50% fizz res, if you can get that from Reapers, would be nice. And then you can rely more on your Merc's damage as well. You could also rely entirely on your Merc's damage and have one point war cry and just have like a lot of find item. And then you just put like a really strong weapon on your mercenary, like an Eth Obedience. Or a, um, I mean obviously Breath of the Dying once you get to like really good stuff. And then you can just stack MF, stack Gold Find, 1 Point War Cry, that works too. Of course 1 Point War Cry is going to prove very instrumental though, um, to the next type of build that we do pretty soon here. But don't worry about that yet. <clears throat> So at any rate, it's good stuff by the way. You kill them, you just find item in all of them. Using either, you know, fast forks or MF, whatever you got. And go for it. Yes. This would be a good time to swap out a uh, wealth armor as well <clears throat> after you're done killing them. And if you had more uh, FCR elsewhere, can also use that. But no, it doesn't really take much to kill Travancol in a barb. Uh, yeah, Torque's not gonna go down here. Gotta feed your mercenary potions here and there though. That's just the reality of it. Which means you might have to go farm pre-farm juves sometimes every once in a while. You can get normal juves from them, but you actually can't get full juves from Travancore. Cool. They're just the mercenary is doing a lot of damage. That's good. That's what you want. Ideally before you start farming Travancore, cool, you at least have a non-eth elite weapon that he's using. With that, you just I can already times. tell that I'll be your best friend in this. Keep in mind, even in players one, <gasps> dude, I just found the foul rune, dude. That's sick. Okay, that means we can make unbending will and do the other approach as well. Awesome. And look, we also found a unique item. So like. Trav is broken, like, Trav is just busted. It doesn't matter if you have a meth or not, or anything. The key is that you just have to be able to kill it without dying. And that's, that's really the challenge here. But you can see with the build as janky as this, though. That I am able to achieve this, to some degree. 
Right, 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 right. Dude, we have the Falrin for the Unbending Will. Okay, that's actually really cool. Nice. So I can show another early game Barb approach as well here. Like the Barb is just, he's just got so many options. I can see why people love the Barb, you know, in D2. And see why they like him in D4, I'll say that much as well. Feels very good to play. But like, by the way, it doesn't matter. Um, you know what's funny, actually? We could use this as my helmet on the Whirlwind Barb. I just realized I do have Mana Leech, actually. I could use this. I could actually use that. Yeah. So, I could show you something really ghetto here. In a, well, once we get on the Whirlwind Barb, I'm going to show you guys something really ghetto. <laughs> it works, though. That's the thing. So, it's funny how, like, just by farming some bosses, like Mephisto and Andy, maybe even Cow King a little bit, with, like, fine item. Just find him, farm him with some MF, and you'll get some rewards, right? Hero Pulk, thank you so much for the follow, welcome to the Colt Xanander say. I've noticed we've gotten some pretty dangerous spawns. These are dangerous spawns, okay? The mercenary in general is holding up for the most part. He's not holding up completely, he's, you know, he's dying slowly. Okay, so he's Fizz immune, which means the mercenary is going to die because he can't leech. Yeah, he's going to die. Okay, well. Yes. Anyway, let me uh, let me see if I can fix this real quick. So if I use Grimward, oh wait, Grimward doesn't work. Oh, it's not high level enough. I need a higher level Grimward, I think, to break that. Interesting, so I guess that's just a waste because then I lose a body for nothing. Alright, well, if you encounter Fizz Immune Ismail, which is the only one that can be Fizz Immune, not uh, Barb. Physical Immune, remember, is the only thing you really have to worry about immunity wise. Um, just skip him, just don't bother with him, just leave him alone. The bad thing about him is if the mercenary starts attacking him, he's gonna die. Because he uh you can't le you can't leech off of something that you can't do damage to, right? So remember leech is partially a function of damage. We did talk about that a little bit here. So like <clears throat> not only that, he happened to be the fanat dude. If that happens and he's attacking the Fizzimune, you can always reposition the mercenary with teleport. This is where a teleport really comes in handy, especially early game when you can't put anything better on your swap anyway. You may as well just take advantage of this. So once you once you kill them all and hork them, you just remake the game. Since you have increased speed on the barb, it's not a big deal to go to Act 4. It's not going to be faster to like do that. You have increased speed, you know, you have some faster run walk in my case. Um, you have faster run walk even on your stealth, because that's the only place I can get FCR that's sensible in this setup. Because I didn't find the GG 20 FCR circlet or something. Alright, so this is going to be another. Dude, why have we had such challenging spawns? These are hard, man! Okay. One thing to keep in mind with Trap and Cole is if the spawn feels dangerous, you can always skip it. Let's keep that in mind. <clears throat> this is a tough one, okay. This one is Conviction. Fight. This is when you might want to turn off the, uh, the sound, by the way. Notice, though, there was Conviction on it, and the Merc didn't die to it. That's because he has stacked fires. The Merc would have died to it so fast if he only had just maximum fires. 
This is why, like, Rao Helms and more Rao's if you don't have these, but if you don't have the other ones, you're gonna need more. It's very key. Look at all these items you get, though. It's kind of crazy. Also, if you didn't have a rhyme, that, that shield has like a tiny bit of a fun. It's 50% here. 50%. 14 life small charm. See, look at that. Already we're getting charm upgrades. It's really easy. We even found foul rune really fast, too. Which means we can now, you know, make a lion heart or. You can make a uh, Lionheart's Foul and Lum, or you can just make uh, just a lot. Which you know, I would use a Lionheart if I didn't have a Shaft Stop, right? That's a good word. It's Hell Lum Foul in some order. It's a three socket and armor. It's really good. Anyway, uh, I don't think we're gonna make that in this particular run, but I think you guys get the idea. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Honestly, I don't think I'm gonna bother with this extra fire is on me. Um, let's let's see if we can. That's my FHR situation actually. Maybe I can get like max FHR. That'd be kind of interesting, huh? Yeah, we could do that. Uh, make sure to mine the barbarians' faster hit recovery breakpoints. So anyway, the, the one negative though is that early game, you can see that this is kind of bleeding my juice, and it's definitely going to bleed your juice if you, uh, if you don't have, um, yeah, it's going to, it's going to be bad. I wish I had an, an angelic amulet so I could show Lawbringer with this too, because it's so strong early game. <laughs> Because even if you don't have Reapers, as long as you have attack rating and you have uh, Decrepify, Decrepify is nuts against Council. It's so strong. Uh, but alas, um, that's going to mess up my battle cry, so let's say don't have any attack rating. So we're not going to be able to do that approach, unfortunately. No, this is this is softcore. Also, this is a guide, so I'm not going to fix this. I try to show you guys just what you can do based on what you can find, and I think a lot of people find that very fascinating because a lot of people assume that if you don't have like one particular item, you know, you're, you're just screwed. You just can't do a farm or something, but that's not true. You just have to make best use of what you have, and then you have a pretty good shot. And we have an easy travancle. Okay, this one looks pretty good. Look at the lightning damage. This is why more res can be very useful, but you can get that by farming trackable, so... Make sure to bring plenty of super healing potions, everyone. You fill your bell every run if you're this weak. Or weak, so... I noticed I didn't have to use a single juve this time, that's because this is actually an easy trap. They're all kind of grouped up, and there were no, like, auras or anything. A lot of time it's kind of like this, so yeah. I mean, it's it's good. Um, yeah. Got that fifty percent fine item going on. At this point, we're definitely sacrificing damage for that, but that's okay. Mercenary does damage. I have decent war cry. It's helping. I have battle cry to help the mercenary hit. This is a build that works. 100 poison damage, small charm. That could be worth something, but normally it's not. <clears throat> um. Anyway, I think we'll do like one more kill in here just to show you guys how this works with war cry. And then I think a lot, what a lot of people have just been waiting for here for the longest time is like, when are you going to use that obedience? And, right, we need to use that obedience. So, we can show you guys some strats once you actually get the powerful weapon that Warwind can be used on. The easiest one to get, remember I just said, that actually is 
pretty easy to employ is obedience. The good thing about once you get obedience in Whirlwind, we don't need cast speed anymore, so. Person is dying to nonsense. I don't even know what he's dying to. Honestly. If you can tank the hiders from the person, right, by the way, do it. It's not easy. This is 1200 Warcry damage too, so like, if you get more plus skills, <clears throat> this approach actually gets very strong. Whole rune see- Man, I'm telling you, chat. I'm telling you. I am telling you. Look at these crazy runes that you get in here. I mean, it just did what? A few runs? Like, it's easy, you know? Crabbing pool is busted. You see how we farmed all that Hell Countess? Couldn't find a Foul rune or a Pull rune, and now it's like. It's easy. Look at all these charms you find, too. Look at that. 119 attack rating. That's actually going to be useful for when we uh, switch over to Whirlwind here. Let's see. You can just use random attack rating GCs too, if you don't have Angelic, that works. But you're gonna need a lot of them. Anyway, yes. <clears throat> so that's how you can farm Travancle on a janky Warcry Barbarian. Um, obviously, more plus skills would be good, higher damage mercenary weapons gonna make a pretty big difference. Having just better resistances across the board is going to make a better difference. Yeah, I'm taking care of my fire res, but um, having better res, you know, Dwarf Star would be nice. Then having like Viper, like Viper Magi would be huge if you can somehow find that somewhere. But, but note though, you know, you know, Hodo, once you get a Vex Rune, which you can easily get by farming Travancle, one of the best types of items you can get in there. It's all good stuff, right? <clears throat> Alright, but yeah, we're, we're draining for, through Jews. You're probably going to have to go back and farm, like, Eldritch and Pendle after you do this farm. You can kind of, like, rotate Eldritch, Pendle, and Shank, and then you can rotate back to Trab at this point. And then you can, like, put on your MF gear for Eldritch, Shank, and then you can go back to Trab. And you're going to find all kinds of crazy stuff. And all you need to do is have this build, and then you can even go to Mephisto because you just need one-pointers for it. And it's really easy. So this build's amazing, uh, but there's other approaches on the Barbarian. Once you can acquire some basic things like we were able to do here, um, things become pretty easy. Burn coming? <laughs> I wish. Holy moly. I don't even know if we need mana for this, honestly. Maybe. I don't think we will, but... Okay, I'm going to put on attack rating. Attack rating's going to be nice. So, no attack rating. Um, the rest of the stuff's all my res, right? Pretty much. Sold the good res. Yeah. Okay, so... What we're going to do now... Is we're going to switch to Whirlwind. So, Whirlwind, we have some pretty nice gear for this, actually. Don't know uh, how good the fire res is. Oh, well, you know what? The fire res might be fun. Okay, I'm just gonna die to conviction. That's not a problem. So I have crushing blow here. My, we can use elders. We have laying of hands, which is amazing against them because damage to demons that only applies on physical attack. But this item is really good if you're going physical attack type build. Um, this is literally best in slot for Zealer against Travancool, Whirlwind against Travancool, Berserk with Travancool. It, it's, it's best in slot. And you know what's the cra crazy thing is? We found two of those yesterday. So, like, they're not that hard to find. Um, sometimes you can just not find one, but it's, it's top quality there. Ah, uh, quality. 
Look how much gold you can make from trap and coal too, if you have some gold fine, just some basic stuff. Find geeds too, that'd be nice, but anyway. Probably not gonna find one like this. So we're gonna do... Ulrin's kinda nuts. I... Uh, the only real use of this Im in immediately, you know, without, you know, getting another one to make um, and then maybe like Duris or something. Or, you know, put it in your helm. But uh, we're gonna use this. <laughs> so did you know that if you want res, dual each life and mana, did you know that this helm can actually be decent for Warwind? I bet you, I bet chat didn't know that. Did you know that Tal Rosh's helm is actually pretty insane for Warwind? I bet I bet I bet a lot of you guys didn't even know that. Like no joke. I bet some of you guys are probably like, why do you use that? It's a sorceress item. Or a mercenary. Is that a Marion? That's ridiculous. So, another thing we could have done. I just realized, though. I threw out the three socketed helmet for it, though. I could make bulwark. So, what's interesting is. I have Tal's Home and Crown of Thieves, so my Merc is still covered. That's the funny part about this. I think this build's actually fine, honestly. Gaze, too. Yeah, Vampire Gaze is very good. Vampire Gaze is even better, but since we have DR on the other pieces of gear, we're actually going to be fine here. Oh, we still have our FCR rings. Oh, yeah, that's... Um... So this is where you're gonna want. See, you can use you can use Nagel Ring here because it's got attack rating. That's kind of useful. You can also put on this for more resistances. Dude, look how bad my res is. Okay, so this is definitely where we have to use the. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I need... If I had Angelics, I'd use Angelics, and then I'd use the uh, Lobbringer Mercenary, but we don't. Angelic Amy is super hard, I swear. You found all this stuff, and I can't even find an Angelic Amy. It's such a joke. Yeah, I'm probably going to go with this, honestly. Yeah, because you just need you just need res. Okay. I need Mars. No, you don't need Mars. Nobody needs Mars. Okay, our res is actually not insanely bad now. I think we're fine. Just need a like decent res stuff, kind of, sort of. And maybe some attack rating. I'm trying to see if we uh Oh wait, where is that other ring I have? I have another pretty crazy ring. It's pretty crazy, actually. You guys will, when you guys see it, you guys will be like, what? Alright, where'd you find that? Somebody's hacking. Look at all these all res rings we have, though. Oh, yeah, this thing. Huh. Yeah, this thing is, um, this thing's a monster. Actually, I think I'm gonna use this instead. Yeah. Because then I get a little bit more light res. I don't need the fire as if I have life leech anyway. Look, it's got 71 mana. I think it's pretty good. Attack rating is crap though. Yeah. 71 mana, 20 light res, 6% life leech. Yeah, this is pretty insane. And of course, any kind of leech rings, attack rating rings, and meth rings are actually pretty good just in general. Um. I guess for the sake of demonstration, maybe I can uh, not have the MF, honestly. I mean, this nasal ring is pretty bad anyway. So I can just use AR, res, res, damage. This is just a res amulet. Like, you can just make a chromatic amulet. I talked about that recipe before. So then what we're going to do is we're going to want to slap on this okay. bad boy. Now, we, you know what's funny, though? We actually have a pull rune. Which means we could upgrade the pure 
as well. So maybe we can show you guys this weapon as well. That's kind of cool. Just to show you guys a different approach to this. Just so many approaches on the barb. It, none of them are like... It, you're never going to feel like you're as insane as a sorceress, but like it doesn't matter because... Just so many good options. It's actually bonkers. How many good options there are. I couldn't find dual leech rings yet, yeah, um, uh, so I'm using soul drainers for now. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm using Tau Rosh's helmet, so don't feel too bad. It's pretty normal. Okay, so we need to respec. So we're gonna do the respec for the Whirlwind Barbarian now. And I'm gonna use this gear. Pretty good gear that we found, honestly. I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna work. So we got 83. Need a lot of strength. That's the only downside, really. And you need 83 here. Look at that obedience. What a beastly item, right? Now you already had to put a lot of points into decks and a strength to wear this. And since you're on a low level, you really don't want to put any more in. You just want to put the rest of your points into Vitality. I don't remember how much this gives, actually. Is this... Oh, no. Well... Does this give any? Uh, I guess we'd have to... Oh, okay. No, we're fine, because... Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. Uh, yeah, okay, I have ways to deal with that if that's a problem. I just thought about something. Okay, we're good. So, Barbarian. This is a real Barbarian build, that's what I'd call it. So this is a pole arm, right? So you're going to want pole arm and mastery. Now I'm also going to try to see if I can show you guys double black whirlwind, or black rhyme whirlwind, so you guys can see that. You don't even need obedience, but obedience is insane, so, like, you know. It doesn't take much, that's that's the thing about obedience. It's a really easy solution. Super easy solution. It's, um, look at our resistances now, actually, now that we can wear obedience. See, we have stacked fire res, you have light res, you have cold res. We're ready to go. Right? Right, and you can even put a second point into natural res, or even a third one, just so your res is solid. So you're actually going to have maximum res in Traving Pool. Oh man, yeah, this is this build will totally work. Yeah, this is this is doable, 100%. The only problem with this build that I don't like is that now I'm insanely slow. Like, insanely slow. Um, you don't max natural <laughs> resistance. You don't max it. Um, I think we're going to want to max pull our mastery though, so we're going to do, yeah, I think we're maxing pull our mastery, right? Yeah, because we're going to do, we're going to do full build, right? Yeah. Hmm. Now, you're going to need whirlwind, of course, so y you have to do this. Interestingly enough, though. I can also take care of that physical immune using Berserk, potentially, um, by putting one point into it. So that 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 is a thing you can do here. Uh, I think we can go one point Whirlwind, so believe it or not, putting points in a Whirlwind isn't really all that effective. Especially if you're going double black, but on this it could be a little effective. It's kind of up to you. We don't have a lot of attack rating though, so it's actually like a little bit of a problem. Remember, we're pretty much going to be relying on uh, a couple other things to have attack rating. Mercenary will give us Might Aura, which is fine, but we're going to make sure we have Battle Cry. So Battle Cry is going to save the day here. We're going to actually have to put a lot of points into that. You're also ideally going to want 
some kind of war cry. So one point into war cry, or like a couple points into war cry for a decent stun length, isn't a bad idea. And then you don't use this for travancle. It's just bad. It eats corpses. Um. However, one thing you'll note though is that you have like no find items, so that's kind of shit. So you don't have that many points at level 80. Uh, let's emphasize that. There's not. So we have 2,000 health, right? As you can see though, we have the ability to destroy things with Warwood. Well, maxing bow is definitely probably the right approach here. Um, there's a lot of approaches though, so I kind of want to talk about this a little bit. So Warcry, believe it or not, is really good. It can allow you and give you a lot of time to actually kill them without them killing you. And it can also help keep your mercenary alive. So you don't want to like max this or anything, but putting additional points into this isn't a bad idea. Um, I like having like, I don't know, two seconds stun length. I think that's kind of nice. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can just put one point into it. You can put additional points in a natural res, but we've already talked about that. And that just gives you free stacked resistances, so you don't die to things. Uh, our res is really good now though, so I wouldn't worry about that if I was you. Um, you can even put more points into this to run to Trav faster. We're looking pretty sluggish right now, so. Uh, I'd only ever put one point into Berserk. This is a backup skill. And you can use it to... be annoying. Um, interestingly enough is because we have, like, no fast run walk, one thing you can do to make this approach a little bit feel a bit better is not use Teleport. And that might get your mercenary kill, but you can like run in and out of the uh, durance, and you can run back in. And this at least gives us some faster run walk to run up to Trav with, so that's kind of nice. So, well no, I'm just talking about what a lot of people could do, so I know what I'm going to do extremists, just calm down. <laughs> Yeah, right, so you get natural resistance, right? You don't have a lot of attack rating on this approach, so you gotta keep that in mind, and that's very bad, so you need attack rating. Or, alternatively, you need battle cry. So we can have some points in here to increase the stun length. Maxing bow is a very strong approach on this, for a couple reasons. Basically... It gives you a lot of life and a lot of mana. And it helps keep you alive against Travancool. Travancool is just very high damage. So now that we have 3,000 life, it's not that bad. Yeah, we don't have any of that extremist. So what we're going to do is because we don't have Angelic... If we didn't have Angelic Ami, you don't even need to use Battle Cry if you have attack rating from Angelics. Um, or something similar. We could also go the four-piece Saigon's route and get some attack rating that way, but our attack rating is just extremely anemic. So we really need to make sure this battle cry is a very high level. Um, otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. Now, we can level up Whirlwind, but it's not going to give us enough attack rating without more anything to do anything. And it doesn't really give us that much damage, let's be real. Like, if I put one point into this, like, look at my current whirlwind damage, you know, that's, that's, that's some decent damage, as you can see. If I put one point into there, it's not that much damage, you know, even if I put, like, a, another point in there, I didn't really get much out of that. So, on a build like this, where you don't have attack rating, you actually don't really want to max out whirlwind. I put a couple points in there just to show you, but you don't actually want to do that. So as you can see, the enemy defense, you want to make it really low. Really low. So ideally, I'd have at least negative 80% here. That would actually allow me to hit them, potentially. 
So that's the idea. Ideally, you'd even get it higher than that, but we're also going to want to save points for find item so that you can actually work the bodies and make use of this build. So you'd also put a lot of points into that. No, Whirlwind doesn't start at negative damage anymore. Right, which is why Whirlwind is a much better early game approach now. And you don't have to put additional points into it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, did you know that? That was a pretty cool development. I thought that was cool. But yeah, as you can see, um, there's a lot of points you can put into this. And then you can get like at least like 48 fine item or something. I think that's what we're going to do here. Or, I don't know, 47. I don't know. Maybe we'll just get 46 and then go, like, more battle cry just in case. Really want their defense to be really low because you don't have a lot of attack rating. You have some attack rating, but you don't have a lot. So, at any rate, one thing you can do here. Oh, this is uh, already dead. That's right. Oh. So, we now have a setup that can work for this. And I can use the Harmony Bow to actually run. So I'm using Goblin Toes, which is really greedy. If you find Gore Riders, it'd be nice, of course. Okay. And then, of course, you do this. Do whatever you want, honestly. And if you kill them like this. Now, the thing I should mention is if you want the mercenary to be through with you, you have to like go in and out of here and you can actually reset the mercenary. So that's very useful. Another thing that's useful here is making sure you have some kind of source. Where's the war cry thing? Uh, Right now, I can actually have War Cry in X because I'm not using Teleport. By the way. Remember, you can't heal yourself or your mercenary. While, uh. While you're in World War as you can see though, this is really smooth. <laughs> that's that's one of the cool things about this, it's like That's not a ton of damage as you can see yet. But that's why like something like Reapers would be pretty big. Oh, that's why we can't kill them. I see why. We're wasting a lot of damage trying to kill them. Alright, so we're gonna use Berserk to kill them. Look at this. Look at this. BAM! Now what's actually really funny about that is you might notice, whoa, you killed him super fast at Berserk. And it's true, I did. Berserk is insanely strong. One thing to note about Berserk is you could actually just go Berserk with Obedience, and you don't have to go Whirlwind. You could. You could work for everything, and you can Berserk with Obedience. But see, now Berserk does magic damage, not physical damage, like every other Barbarian ability. Which means, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. Just as I get out of War Cry. Oh man. That's hilarious. Oh that's that's brilliant. There you go. And see look how look how broken this area is. You just find like everything in here. Of course it's broken because it's hard. It actually takes a lot to not die in there constantly. Killing enemies of the Berserk two-hander is devastating. Yeah, exactly. So, another build you can do, which I'm not really going to show the Hello. 
max berserk version of it, but you can see the one point berserk version of it. So you can go uh, two handed berserk. I can actually show you a trav kill like it with it though. It could be kind of fun. Show you guys how to do a. I can do a trav kill with it. I could, I could. So. As you can see though, we're not doing bad. Now, obedience, it hurt me, it hurt. Ow. I got leeches though, I got DR. So they're not killing me very fast. It's interesting though, you don't really need this much damage reduction, but you could use Bulwark if you have Mana Leech elsewhere, and you can get damage reduction almost for free, which is Io Shale Soul and a 3-socketed Helm. You can even get a 3-socketed Barb Helm. Let me show, um... Yeah, that's the cold damage exploding the body from Obedience there. That's the, uh... Wow, we got unlucky with those works. Really unlucky. Pretty much gave us nothing. But we just found some riches right there. Like, you don't need Viper Magi unless you're going the Warcry build. So imagine, like, you trading that Viper Magi. Now you have, like, half your build already. Like, it's, it's done. It's over. Yes. That's all you had to do. But anyway, even without Decrepify, you can kill them with Whirlwind as long as you have some leeches. You have at least fire reses and maybe some DR, like something like Bulwark can work too. You don't even need the boost. Fuck the mercenary. <laughs> the other thing about this build is if the mercenary has problems living, it's okay. It's gotta do some short whirlwinds here and there. Oh god, I fucked it up. They're gonna kill me eventually, I think. Is there another immune to physical one? Yeah, I can tell because I'm hitting him constantly and that's it, it's absorbing. I can all already damage. tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. You could use model heal and cap in the springs for this. Battle cry or lower their defense enough to actually do it. The problem though is that I'm not actually hitting them. Maybe as much as I could, and I think that's because I still need to lower their defense even further. Yeah, definitely. As you can see, it's not a super fast trap run. I would argue actually that the Warcry approach is a little bit faster, but once again, if you had like an Angelic Ring or something, this would be so much easier. It's so crazy to think that, like, attack rating and defense is so huge. But yeah, you might want to consider without the attack rating, put even more points into Battlecry because that's all you can do. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. The Mercenary... Mercenary doesn't even need to, sur need to survive, as you can see. So if your Mercenary doesn't have good survivability, you're sick of spending gold and reviving him. This build will also be good as well. But it's so much better when you actually have attack rating. I have a little bit of attack rating here, but... It's nasty, honestly. It's really, really bad.
attack rating is nasty. But if you start a whirlwind, does enchant work? What's funny is, <clears throat> if I can proc this when I kill one of them, the level 21 enchant, I actually have better attack rating, yeah. But it's not easy to get at all. It's just rough, you know. I'm gonna go in here in the beginning. Oh god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh shit. Wow, it didn't kill me. Yeah, if you see like Fnat like this, this might be a, a bad one. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> or you can just pull a few of them at a time, or win on the edge like this. Don't, just don't get hit by like all of them. Don't whirlwind through all of them, you know? Just do this. And just hold them on the edge. Make sure you have Battle Prey up on them for sure. Otherwise I'm never gonna hit them with this much attack rating. Yeah, I think the main problem here is I need even more negative enemy defense because his attack rating is like... <laughs> Not hitting them enough, I don't think. Notice if I hit them on the edge like this, they don't hit me that often. And I can maintain my leech, even with Amp and Fnat. So even when they have some really nasty stats, we can stay alive decently well here. But it doesn't matter though. That's pretty good. No jaw runes yet though. The heck is that? Oh. This bug man. Not bad. We're still hitting them quite a bit, but you can see though. It's kinda interesting how this strat works and you can get more though. Do you have an Angelic Ami on Hardcore? See, I don't normally take items, you know, outside of the run, but... You know, it's such a cheap item and it's typically really easy to get. And you know, we found a Viper Magic. I mean, we found all kinds of stuff. I'm not even using. Do you have an Angelic Amulet on the Softcore? Okay. Good day. On Softcore Ladder? Hmm, okay. Yeah, we could show that off a little bit. That might be kind of cool to show. It's really annoying not to have one, I guess, because, like, there's actually some really cool things you can show off a lot better if you actually have one. It's such a simple item. Anyone can say that, though. Okay. Um, you can join my game here in a second. I'll, I'll take it, I guess, just to show off what it can do. It's so hard to hit them. So, of course, we can also kill Eldritch doing this. You can kill Shank. Pendle skin with Whirlwind is kind of bad. I, I, I prefer Warcry against Pendle skin 100%. But you can do that too, though. Yeah, I feel like I'm just not hitting them. That's the, that's the issue here. I would either need insanely high Warcry, like max Warcry, or I need like... Uh, Some attack rating. Like some attack rating. Another thing to note is that cannot be frozen would be really nice here. So like having a Raven Frost would also be good. 
But you don't need Raven Frost, but it would be very nice to have for sure. It's kind of like, um. Ugh. Well, yeah, Trang's build is a tough thing to find, though, but, you know, we're, we're talking about a rags to riches run here. Angelic Ami wouldn't be too hard to farm from, like, a little bit of farming, but typically it's just really easy to trade for as well. You can show this off if you have it. Oh, I don't need that, no. I have that. I, I have String of Year, bruh. I just need Angelic Amulet. Heroes is cool. That is actually kind of cool, but I think I'll just keep Crown of Thieves on him. I would just see an Angelic Ami just to demonstrate, because I have an Angelic Ring that I found. It's pretty easy to find these. If I get one Angelic Ring and Angelic Amulet, it's like game over. Where is that, um... Strength one, yeah, there we go. Awesome, dude, sweet. Thanks. So you see how much attack rating I have now? It's just like 6,000 automatically. And that's all you need. You just need this really easy item. It's not even worth a ton, really. Most people don't go physical builds. Um, obviously... If I was still on the single player, I wouldn't have specced into a whirlwind until I at least had angelic set. So I probably would have farmed a little bit of like nightmare andy or hell andy or something. It's really easy to find those there. I don't I don't need any of that stuff, man. It's okay. Thank you, dude. I just wanted to thank you for the amulet. Just wanted to show people how this works with the amulet. It's a lot more effective just having a little bit of air. And then you also don't have to dump as many points into uh, Battle Cry. But obviously, obviously, it'd be pretty good. I still don't have enough AR though to not use Battle Cry, so I'm still not like in decrep territory. But let's say I like found like one more attack rating GC. Oh yeah, this is a lot better now. <laughs> It's like infinitely better now because I'm actually hitting them. <laughs> yeah, I either need like max battle cry, but then I don't have any fine item. <clears throat> or I need angelic amulet. Yeah, it's so bad, man. You need like negative 90 plus negative enemy defense or you need angelic amulet. It's crazy. Yeah, this is a lot better. There we go. What the fuck? That's crazy. Anyway. Of course, if you're worried about being frozen, there's always an easy solution. You can always uh, keep some thawing potions on you. Of course, uh... I have pretty good cold res, so I don't think that's a problem. Yeah, you can use Trang Belt, you can use Raven Frost in the other slot here, but I have some pretty good slots, so... Notice now, though, I don't even need Battle Cry, and it can actually hit monsters, so... It's, a uh, pretty good. Don't keep the mercenary. The mercenary has to be hitting one of them. Even if you don't decide to use the teleport staff here. Yeah, I think those points in the war cry probably didn't matter in the end. Oh, mercenary is dead. Yeah, it's a lot easier to keep the mercenary alive with a word cry approach, because, like... He, he needs a really strong weapon. He needs 
it's like uh, the max on fire is, or it's just going to be really hard. Keep guarding it. Oh my god. I feel like we're doing no damage. Like, are we doing no damage? What's going on here? What the freak's going on? I don't know. What is going on? Are they just healing each other? Yeah, if this happens, you might want to focus on like just a couple of them. This is also why being a frozen sucks. <laughs> That's alright though. Beefy, beefy, beefy. Yeah, as you can see though, for the most part, you know, it's not too bad. But I think keeping the Merc alive is a lot better if you can. I personally think that, like, against these, it's actually, like, it's... This is also, like, this is Berserk as well. Berserk's pretty strong, right? So you can also just use Berserk. Look how strong Berserk is. Berserk is insane. Why do I have... Oh, I actually procced an enchant. Oh, I got my enchant. I was like, why do I actually have attack rating? Yeah, Zerk melts him. It does. It does. And Berserk, I personally, like, when it comes to, like, Travancle at least, I prefer, um, at least with this level of items until you maybe get, like, slightly better things, I definitely prefer Warcry or Berserk for sure. But the good news is with Berserk is, we actually have some choices for that, and we can actually show you guys some really game Berserk. Of course, we will also show you guys some Berserk with that, too. It's kind of neat. Let me see this, though. This is 40. Why Why was I doing, like, no damage for a second there? I don't understand. I guess it's because... Actually, I really don't know. I don't know. Not sure. I think it's because maybe I was like whirling through too many enemies or something. That's strange. But like, with obedience, whirlwind's possible. So is the super high damage berserk. And either way, it's really nutty damage. And you can use it against a lot of things. The one thing we can do. So after we're done doing travel, I'm gonna do like travel more time here. Just with this particular approach. As you can see though, like Warcry I think is more consistent. And it doesn't get the mercenary kill. That's why I showed Warcry first. So you had something to compare it to. But once you get obedience. Good. I guess the stun length isn't low. I can stun them a little bit though to keep the Merkel alive. Also, make sure to do short whirlwinds. Try not to just whirlwind through all of them. The key to doing a lot of damage on a whirlwind guard is to make sure you're hitting like only a couple of them. And then you can do like triangles like this. Ugh. There you go. Mercenary died, but it's okay. At this point, damage is already done. 
So whirlwind works perfectly fine. As long as you execute it well. Try to keep the mercenary alive. With more life leech, with more damage, he's gonna leech better, he's gonna survive longer. If he has Guardian Angel, he has max fire is. And you can use that. I would never do Whirlwind though, personally. Um, especially after seeing that again, even with the crazy battle cry. Unless you have like maybe at least two piece angelic, so make sure you have that as well. Cause man, that was pretty rough. Hello. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. What do you need? Got harmony there. Got some other things. Okay, so believe it or not, though, we can also employ these tactics against other monsters as well. Whirlwind can be used the game over. But you can saw you can see though that that Trav fight was a lot better, right? He is short whirlwinds, keeping the Merc alive. Getting some of this gear on yourself so you don't die. The whirlwind definitely takes more gear against Travancool, because Travancool is very, very dangerous. I can't carry anymore. Uh, you're doing that on hardcore, make sure your gear is super solid. It is pretty cool that with um, just random gear we found for the most part, except for an Angelic Amy, you can do Trav pretty fast on Whirlwind. That's pretty neat. Oh god, we're gonna die. Got Conviction. But you know what's interesting now? You can kill these with Whirlwind, uh, War Cry too, of course, but as you can see, doing pretty good against this, uh, I always recommend, by the way, killing the council members before Mephisto, once you get decently strong enough to do it, because you can hork them, and they drop amazing items. It's the same loot tables as the Travancool council members, they're just bonkers. So if you can kill them like that with Whirlwind or Warcry or Berserk, whatever, it's very good. Now, I'm gonna do some short triangle runs on Mephisto. Yeah, I really don't like being just frozen. <laughs> So you can kill Mephisto this way too. Look how easy that was. He's dead. Alright, that's pretty easy. What we're gonna do though is we're gonna actually rejoin the game. Yeah, so this is this is definitely where something like okay. What do you need? Or like Raven Frost. Even like two piece death set might help with this a little bit, or at least death's uh, belt upgraded to a demon hide sash would be nice. And then like, you know, train belt, things like that. Um, if you're gonna go two handed whirlwind like this, it's kinda tougher to do it this way. But I'm about to show you guys a couple of different techniques here. So Remember, you can always use the teleport staff too, like normal. And the problem with like being frozen like this is you really have to like short worms, otherwise you're not gonna hit the wall. Ah, oh, freak! We're gonna just we're just gonna die. Yeah, uh, yeah, being frozen sucks. It's okay though. Don't be frozen. Let's see, there's another solution to this. We 
freaking hurt, man. Freaking hurt. Wait, is that one mean to fizz? Is that what's going on here? Again? Don't do it to me, man. Mercenary needs to be like a tad bit stronger for this. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. It's fun. <laughs> the loot filter for D2R? No, there's not. It's not an official one. Look how fast I can kill Torquemus by himself. Is this an Angelic enemy actually? Did I just find one naturally? No. <laughs> There's a nice Arathas though. Bollocks! Okay, anyway. You guys get the idea. Let's go try, uh... So now what I'm gonna do actually... Is we're not gonna use obedience. We're gonna pretend we don't even have something this good, honestly. We're gonna go like double black flail. Or like rhyme approach. And you might think there's no way this should actually kill them, right? No way. Well, it could. See, if you wanted to do this, you can also do it against bosses. So someone mentioned this earlier, and they're 100% correct. You don't even need any kind of damage or anything. You can also successfully do this here as well. Hello. I'm gonna have to farm more juice, <laughs> maybe. I, I, it's because uh, paddle those juice, and I wasn't able to put enough of them away. All right, here we go. Double black flu. This is a fun approach. You can also do like frenzy and do this too, funny enough. Notice how they are taking some serious damage here. Of that crushing blow. But unfortunately, as you can see, without a means to do more damage, you're pretty dangerous. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is actually kind of funny trying this. The double black flail, come on, man. This is when we tag obedience back in and say tag your it. So the problem with double black flail though, as you probably can see though, is that I can't leech. I literally just can't leech. It just can't happen. Whereas with obedience, I actually can leech health. So, obedience. <laughs> I'm actually able to stay alive with obedience. I can't do it. Double black flail. And I can kill them. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the thing is the life leech is too important. I did learn to show off though that it does a lot of damage though. Crushing blow is not to be underestimated, but... Yeah, you're not going to survive very well doing that. That's where your obedience comes in. That's why if you really are serious about doing Whirlwind without hardly any gear, that's where the non eth obedience is very strong. But... I can't. 
you might think it's crap now, but we can definitely do some pretty serious damage to Mephisto. Let's see if we can kill Mephisto with just black foils. Double black foil. Let's go. Oh, wait, this isn't double black foil. That's malice. No, 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 no. Okay. Got plenty of gold though. I'm struggling for runes. I'll make a black tyrant club for berserk swaps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good day. So you can see though, like for Warcry, like while you might want to farm a couple more plus skills if you do that approach. For Whirlwind, you know, you're going to need something at least as good as Obedience, honestly, to make it, you know, feel at least decent. And oftentimes it will take a while to kill them. You really need to hit the, the monsters on the edge. You're going to need AR, probably going to need Battlecry. And then... Short Whirlwinds, and then you can kill them pretty fast. Well, let's say you don't want to do that. It's okay. What's interesting though is that we actually have a foul rune. From the heavens. As I can show you guys a couple of uh, high tier berserk cases here. I like berserk better than whirlwind until you get more gear anyway, but. Berserk also allows you to stack more magic fine because it just does so much damage and you don't need anything on your gear. It's based on the weapon though. So the weapon, the weapon matters. The reason why people PK people with two-handed Berserk is exactly that damage you saw a second ago. It's pretty wild. Yeah, you can make a black and other things too. Absolutely, that aren't just a flail. Finding that tyrant club can be a little challenging though. I just gotta keep in mind that, uh. You don't always have interesting items like that available. Alright, so we're gonna. We're gonna kill Mephisto with two black players rolling. See? That's all you need. This is actually the, the double black fool approach is actually best against bosses. People were asking if this is effective earlier, it is. It's not gonna kill Travancool, but it'll kill Mephisto. Travancool, you're gonna need at least obedience if you want whirlwind. And even then, Obedience can also be used for Berserk, and it can be used for Leap Attack and things like that. You can also go, like, Leap Attack. <laughs> Leap Attack's interesting. Hello. But yeah, as you can see, like, Double Black Flail is perfectly fun. Against bosses, particularly. I actually think that's the fastest way to kill bosses. As you can see, that was faster than Double Swing. It was faster than um, Concentrate. So, Double Black Flail Whirlwind is actually amazing against bosses. But, heck, you could even go Ryan in Black, but... Not as many Crushing Blow procs, unfortunately. So, yep. It's kind of crazy how many different things you could do. Of course, in this guided playthrough here, though, you're also seeing some approaches that are maybe less effective than others, and others that are more effective. 
Double black against trap is funny, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's not good. Not even a tiny bit. So if I go leap attack, leap attack's interesting. Look how strong leap attack. Leap attack does so much damage. Oh my goodness! Hello. Watch. So you can also max out leap attack, interestingly enough. But... Oh, I got attack right now. Okay, sweet. It's working! Obedience is pretty good if you go full leap attack as well. Because it just does a ton of damage. I kinda wish I had enough respects to max out leap attack and show you guys how you can just like slaughter trap with it as well. So don't don't just like I said in the beginning of the guy, don't count out leap attack. Leap attack is pretty strong. And you can avoid damage too. The only problem is, is it's kinda clunky. I mean, you can kind of see that, right? It's it's a little clunky. Good day. Nah, uh, we're not trying to. It's okay. I like that. Yeah. Pretty strong. Name locking makes the barb jump over the monster. Right. That makes sense. To be fair, like, leap attack's a little new for me, too, but yeah. There's so much damage, though. I'm gonna die doing this, though. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this trap, but you know, if you have like max damage and even more damage, you crush them, man. He with leap attack is to be able to one shot, but like, man, it's so good. What do you need? Okay, anyway, stop messing around. Wanted to show off some more things with whirlwind real quick, and then I was actually gonna switch to full berserk. So. Yeah, whirlwind, strong, potentially. Can be very strong in certain areas. Let me, um. But, you know, as you can see with obedience, they killed Mephisto really fast too, but double black flail is arguably even faster of a kill. And that's just because of the crushing blow procs. Like, crushing blow is so good against a single high HP target. Whereas obedience is a bit more well rounded and you can just do more things. Yeah, bro.
I hate running this slowly. I think I'm just gonna go, uh... Just go, uh... Yeah, see, there, there's definitely some clunky aspects of this particular build here. Hello. I think the crushing blow percent is nice, but... It's not a make or break when you have obedience. Remake the game sometimes? Oh, if they have really bad rolls, you probably should remake the game, yeah. Well, not always, but... This is how a tribe farm is supposed to be done. Hurt whirlwinds. We're sort just getting wrecked though, unfortunately. Not even the longer war cry is able to save him. Make sure you only attack a couple at a time. Don't allow them to heal. They do heal each other. Okay, cool. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, that's a that's a pretty solid approach there. Like I said, the Merc is having some issues besides that, I mean you can kinda see it's it's kinda nice. Try to separate them if you can. Get a couple at a time. Warcry does better with them all grouped up, 100%. Get some short whirlwinds. That's a good trap farm with whirlwind. There, there you go. Now what we're also gonna do is so we've shown Mephisto dying. And see here though, you can also go um, something like Countess. Yeah, I don't feel like Goblin Toad is really giving us all that much here. It's nice, but you have crushing blow on the weapon. Remember, there is crushing blow here. Like a lot. Ugh. Crushing blow. Need some water walks? Yeah. You always need stuff, man. Did you guys see us find that Viper Magi in Trab, though? That was insane. Too bad we're not going Warcry again. Or Warcry would be even stronger now. Like fourteen hundred almost. We showed enough of work out of The work cry right, one point concentrate, one point double swing approach. You could even go one point whirlwind by the way, with that max battle cry, and then you can go double black foil. And that will also work against bosses. Instead of the one point concentrate that I did, or the one point double swing, just go one point whirlwind and you can have max war cry as well. You are gonna have to have one point to whatever mastery it is though, so it should be mace mastery. For basic foils. What is this crap? Oh man, that's terrible. Anyway. Need to put my faster run walk stuff back on. Oh, I see. One point berserk, baby. I could one point berserk this too. Extra strong. Don't tell me. Wait, what? Wait, huh? Uh. Hmm. Good day. Where did all my health go? 
I mean, I guess that's a try and chant archer. He must have hit me once. Yikes! Well, trying to berserk a ghost while you're getting hit by 50 archers is probably a bad idea. <laughs> I don't know, that was so much damage. Like, what the heck did I get hit by? Whoa! Good to see you. Oh, you know, that's why on hardcore you make sure you're uh, protected against that by healing early. Man, that was crazy. That was actually nuts. My goodness. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> Whirlwind is so strong for the obedience. Pretty strong. It could be stronger. I think full IK is still stronger, but you're not gonna you're not gonna mess with the full IK this early. Full damage is a shame though. It takes out my bodies. Uh, we can go see the one point leap attack is actually kind of nice here. A little tiny AoE doesn't do anything, by the way. I have no idea idea why they bothered adding it if they weren't gonna give it enough damage. <sighs> they should have they should have given that more damage. Little baby AoE. Impossible. These things are very weak against something like Warland. F Monarch? What? That could be a cool bow shield, I guess. Noise. Alright, so... <laughs> Five socket berserker. Why not? Why not a low rune and a mal rune while we're at it? You know. As you can see, whirlwind is also very effective against Countess. I'd say Warcry has a slight edge as long as her merc is decent against. Trav, and that's mostly for survivability in the early game. Once you get like a little bit more gear, or one can feel just as nice, if not nicer. And also go Frenzy, but you're gonna need better weapons for that. I recommend against Trav though, you go either the Warcrate approach, which I showed in the beginning. As you can see though, count, uh, the Countess gets wrecked by this obedience. It's very strong, but what if, what if you want to go cannot be frozen easy mode, but you also want to do berserk, and you also want to kick some egg. Well, there's a way to do it, which will show pretty shortly. Oh, they're all next to each other. Oh, this is it's gonna be scuff city. I'm hitting something. I'm hitting something, it's not good. 
This is definitely a roll you can re-roll for sure. Uh -huh. Don't die. Dude, he's getting healed, man. This stupid hair offense, man. I know they're the ones that blame for this. Yeah, they, they, they are 100% to blame for this. Gotta kill all those hair offense. Believe it or not, they heal. Council members. Oh, there's too many over there, man. To blame for this big time. Man. It's rough. Silly horror from the cell. Hey, trying, man. Trying to mess it all up. Keep in mind, Torque is always stone skin, so he's gonna be a little tougher to kill. Focusing him in the beginning might be tough. I see the I see the power. Okay, so let's continue here. Good day. Let's get Let's go berserk. Greeting. And we're gonna use another very common item you can get very early on. Farming trap will definitely be fun no matter what early on, so yeah, prepare for uh prepare for the danger. Doesn't hurt to maybe farm Oath even before you go into trap, because Oath is something that'll do even more damage no matter how you use it, so. But Oath is also something that's difficult to expect. Why are we not having enough gold? Am I not putting it in the right stash or something? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. Okay, anyway. Easy mode. All right, so what we're gonna do next. Uh. All right, so let's try to make this rune word here. Unbending will. This is another fun rune word you might want to make. Yeah, there's all these rune words we've talked about, made. This one's a big one. So foul. Let's see here. How do I how do I how do I make this thing without breaking ourselves here? Foul I O. If, I think there's if, right? L. No. Eld. <laughs> I think it's Eld first, yeah. L and hell. Unbending will. There you go. As you can see, that's a pretty high damage one's handed weapon. And so if you have this plus rhyme plus everything else on your build, you can just stack magic find to the moon. Too bad I didn't keep that four socketed uh armor I could have shown stacking some 
other things, but that's okay. We'll use this for now. What I could do, actually, is we could use... Uh, no. Anyway, we'll use Obedience as a spare. I can show you guys the power of Berserk with, like, one-point Polar Mastery. Berserk is like nuts, though. So much damage. Anyway, you go Rhyme, so you get Cannot Be Frozen. You can go on Bending Will, and then you can literally just stack a MF everywhere. And if you have, like, two-piece Angelics, you're also set. You can go Battle Cry, of course, if you're really having trouble, but... For the most part... It's pretty strong. Um, let's see, where did I put the Naggle Ring? Yeah, I'll put the Nick. Naggle Ring! Of course, you can use Defensive one, you can use Gold Wrap. Gold Wrap would be nice there. Not be frozen either way. I'm use Laying of Hands to increase her attack speed a bit. Attack speed is always good for Berserk. While you can get things like Crushing Blow, it's not insanely effective. Actually, you know what? We won't go Laying of Hands for this. I really, for Berserk, I personally prefer 3-piece Saigons. And the reason why is that we get even more MF and we get more attack rating. And we get even more attack speed. The three-piece Saigons is great for an early game Berserk build. Less MF, and then you can go MF here. This is way overkill for something that's not a trap. Of course, you can put... <laughs> if you have a four socket... Let's just pretend this is a four socketed armor. Okay, let's just pretend. Alright, you guys have a good imagination, right? Pretend I didn't throw away the other one. <laughs> so, you can go, uh... Where the heck is my... Well, that's no good, though. Oh, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, we're, we're gonna pretend we have a... I can't. This is something you can totally do, by the way. You have 72 MF armor. Of course, you can get 96 MF armor. So just keep that in mind. And then you can also go something like... You guys want to see something kind of cool for fast running to monsters? You can go... Uh, see, this is something I talked about but didn't make yet. I don't... Can we make it, actually? Shale Co-Eld. Do I still have a Co for that? Oh, I do, actually. Man, so many runes are so useful. Like it. Shale Co-Eld. I know I kept an extra Eld, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. So this is Hustle. Hustle is pretty cool. It gives you even more attack speed. It gives you evade. It gives you faster run lock. It gives you all res. So you can also use this to farm too. And if you use hustle plus, well, you guessed it, harmony. Just zooming, man. Zooming. Just uh, easy mode. Super easy. Put all the MF small trims on. Go to town. Um. Yeah. You can even put on more faster run lock if you want. Where's my other faster run lock? Do you see? I don't even know why I still have that. That's an accident that I kept that in there. That's a total accident. Yeah. Well, anyway. Excuse me. Doesn't matter, though. You can, uh... Put more faster run walk on. 
Blam, 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 blam. So now I just have like faster than walk city. And you can see how this might be useful for certain farms. I'm going to kind of try to show how this can be used. Also going to show a couple other things as well here. So you don't need that. No. So it's just like using all this janky gear that you found is just, it's, it's totally possible. Do whatever you want with it. It's actually incredible. I'll actually throw the key away for now. We're actually going to get this armor. So I'm going to abuse the fact that we have a lot of MF on this build. So we have 179. A watch. We can have 251 right now. That's all from a little bit more magic. Actually, we can have, like I said, we could have almost 300 if we had like a four socketed armor and we're just messing around with that. I actually had one earlier and I threw it out, so. It's documented there's a four socketed gothic plate. You know, the angelic amulet might be cheating a little bit, but, you know, the rest of it's fun. That's a super easy item, though. That's not. This isn't like a high caliber or anything. It's just, it's just an item. Okay, so we haven't bending will though. So what we're gonna have to do. Where's my last respec? Yeah. yeah, and so a hustle armor could be good. A hustle weapon could even be good on the merc. Let's say maybe you want it. You could even use it for, um, if you have like life leech combined with it, it could be really good. It could even help like something like whirlwind. It could even help something like berserk somewhat. But you can just use something as standard as an insight. You crepify. Because of the extra coal damage it adds, it's actually not necessary on um, on the on the mercenary. So you notice this doesn't actually have coal damage. I don't even think we have coal damage now. So we might be able to berserk proper with no coal damage. Yeah, that, that's really the dream here. Yeah, I think we got it. Yeah, no coal damage, and insight doesn't have coal damage, so. That's one of the strengths of insight. And obedience, well, we can just mess around with it a bit. So, I'm gonna do one last respec and show you guys some final str strategies. And honestly, barb rags to riches will be over. Um, even showed you guys some things that don't work for fun, and some things that are a little more challenging than others. I really like Whirlwind against things like Countess even more than Warcry, it's so strong. You can just get an Obedience. I think I think Warcry though wins against Trav when you have shit gear though, 100%. Because you stunning them up is just so big. <laughs> and getting the Mercenary to attack them is just... It's kind of like on, on PD2, what approach did I go when I started out? I started Warcry, it's the same thing. It, it always works. But we'll, we'll, we'll go Berserk too, though. We'll go Berserk as well. I think some people might, you know, not be convinced of this. But yeah, well, Janky MF gear. Super strong. I just realized something. You don't need a lot of strength for this, do you? No, this is a... This is a nice build. Wow. See, so, like, look, you only need Saigons for this. You don't even need the... Aller's boots that I have, you don't need the string of ears, you don't need the laying of hands. Um, we found those, but you don't need them. It's actually kind of remarkable how much you don't need. So we have Unbending Will here. Unbending Will is really good. As you can see, the only really main hurdle to this is that it requires a 6 augured sword, so it pretty much has to be Colossus Blade or Phase Blade. I recommend uh, Phase Blade, especially if you're trying to maintain the rest of this gear and trying to maintain Magic Find, along with all res and cannot be frozen. So, something as simple as this works on a Berserk Barbarian. That's how crazy this is. Um, I'm really glad I found the Phase Blade for this. 
uh, wasn't guaranteed, but you know, finding white phase blades isn't super tough. You can also use large six sockets for those as well. It's not like it's gonna make or break it though. But this is a sword. This is also the fastest base. You can only put this in swords anyway. But it's the fastest sword. And it's a six socket one. Don't put this in a crystal sword, because you'll get no damage and it'll be slower at the same time. That's bad. Also, dimensional blade. No, don't put it in there. It has to be a phase blade. Otherwise, there's no point. This will just uh, break your character. All right, so we have blade mastery. I'm gonna put one into polar mastery actually, just so I can show you uh, how devastating it can be with one of these. Um, to do that though, I think I'm gonna actually have to put some extra points into strength just to be able to wear it. Uh. Yeah, I need to put more than that. Yeah, okay. Should be able to wear this right. Yeah, okay. just barely. I can't. Okay, that's fine. And then, so that's a pretty decent amount of attack rating you can see here, but it's not a lot. Their key, of course, is to be maxing Berserk. Berserk. It's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage. Like a lot. A lot of damage. You can see my attack rating is really good. But magic damage increase is pretty big per level. So if you max Berserk, it's nice. Now keep in mind that the two synergies are Howl and Battle Orders. So what is the obvious one? What is the obvious one, chat? Where should we put <laughs> a lot of these points in? In bad orders, right? You know, keep yourself alive. That's a pretty obvious synergy. I can't believe they made that the synergy. I can That's already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. You can also get one point war cry. Now remember, Berserk, the whole point of Berserk is to kill monsters so you can hork them. This is even the case when you have a GG Berserk Barbarian. You don't need this because you don't do physical damage. You can have Concentration as a backup skill. But that's about it. As a matter of fact, I can use both of these here. And then I can use Fine Item there. I'll use... Yeah, that's fine. Why ain't you right? Doesn't matter. Go slam some stuff. Yeah, no. We'll go, we'll go how like there. Battle cry. How. So yeah, Berserk does a ton. But notice something here. That's a lot of attack rating. It's good though. You want a lot of damage, you want a lot of attack rating. I don't even need Angelics. That's the funny part about this. I don't even need it. I mean, I need it, of course, to... Uh, I can actually show you guys what my attack rating looks like without it. It's still 6,000. If I had, like, a couple more GCs, I'd actually be fine without it. But, obviously, Angelix is nice to have early on, even for Berserk. And then... Voila! It's pretty easy. I like one point war cry too, that can save your ass sometimes. But you can get like a pretty decent fine item here though. And it's right. And then one more, I can get 50%, so that's good. Now notice I didn't really max out all the berserk synergies, so that's kind of a shame. Uh I would need more levels for that and more stuff, but you know, I'll put a I'll put a um a cer a cer a ceremonious I even get leap. I guess I can get leap. Never mind. Okay, I won't do it. I'll, I'll get one to leap instead. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um I was gonna get a cer ceremonious one pointer into how, but I already have how anyway. At this point though, if I was leveling up, I would just put the rest of my points into how and then boom. Got high find item, 
How? It's like free, basically. It's it's free. Completely free. Uh, you might notice I have no health. That's because I didn't put any points in health yet. <laughs> okay, there you go. Sweet! Okay, so you can see I have 3,000 health. Honestly, nothing more solid than this. This is Nightmare, though, so... Look how fast I attack, too. You got three piece Saigons, you know, you got the attack speed. I can't. Super fast. 120 Paladin Circlet? What? Oh man, it's better than my plain 20 FCR Circlet. You could trade that this early in the game. Absolutely, a 120 Paladin. That's, uh, that's, that's tradable. I can't carry anymore. Well, here's the thing, man. If you ever want to uh, follow along, man, and learn how to uh, build a barb from scratch, that is a great guide. You can start following along with part one. That's what we're doing. We're actually making a guide right now. So it's a, well, it's a, not a guide. It's a guided playthrough. It's, it's too long to be a guide. Let's be real. But anyway, you can kind of see, uh, it's good. So yeah, you can stack this as well. You see, I can run at the speed of sound. There's nothing though. Zerk Barbarian. Okay. So. The only unfortunate part, though, is that Berserk can do a lot more damage if we also get the other synergy. But Berserk does pretty good damage there. You can see it's like 1600. I mean, that's, that's not bad. How may I be a right, right. <clears throat> and you can even reduce enemy defense still with one point battle cry. So the one point battle cry is very useful. There you go. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I don't know. D2 might be hard for kids these days. Who knows? Maybe you gotta show them, the, show them what's up. Honestly, you can max battle orders. But. <laughs> this Howl Radius is trash. You might want to, like, go half-half, actually. Until I get a little bit more. There's Hell Eldritch right there. The only problem with Berserk is unlike Warcry and Whirlwind, you don't have AoE, so like you're... You have one thing you can do, okay? One thing. Literally, run up to stuff. This is your one trick. This is your one trick, buddy. Okay. Notice we don't do a billion damage, so... I don't think we worked. No. Now we could use the teleport staff to get in there. And if we had a higher level howl, we could howl them as well. Afternoon. I was pretty key though. Yeah, Berserk is very much how your way to the boss. Yeah, exactly. But having battle orders points is nice too. We didn't have enough points into how though. <laughs> I mean, so so this is the thing is it, it's actually really funny, but like. <laughs> I am I am the I'm the guide writer for late game berserk bar, but like I know how it works late game, but sometimes when it comes to like 
some of these early game builds, sometimes I'm a little janky trying to like balance all these skills out. There's definitely some some other approaches you can use, but yeah, I mean, otherwise it's pretty good. <clears throat> Late game's a different one. That's when you have all your gear. Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, okay, so as you can see here, the Zerk will kill Ravenclaw. He was unbending well. But unfortunately, they keep getting healed. Why, you ask? I don't know. Same problem we're having with Lord. Nice. I can't carry anymore. So even something as weak as unbending will kill them. Here. We need healing potions, though. That's the problem. Ah, uh, no healing potions. Anyway, Greetings. so you can do that. Of course, you can't howl. Howling Travancle is bad. Normally, though, you want to howl all the minions and everything else out or away from the boss. And then you want to kill them. But the problem with Travancles, if you do that, everything is scatters that you want to kill, so. You actually can't do that here. I like make use of like one point war cry. I'm actually curious. I could. Anyway, so Berserk with Unbending Will will also kill Trap. That's the point of this. That's the whole point of this. I'm used to having more plus skills, so I thought my Howl would be strong enough. No, I don't have any plus skills at all. <laughs> I you know, can you know what's funny tell though. that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. If I messed up my MF approach, I can actually fix it a little bit. There you go. Put on some. Uh... We need a we need a slightly better howl than this. It's like two more skills. That's all right though. Trying to get too much, man. Which other synergy are you talking about more damage? Uh, how how would increase your damage more? So like if you get how here. How do you think away? That's what you want to do. And ba -doom. You do with some like some kind of enough swap if you want, but you don't have to. What the heck? It's pretty incredible how much damage it does, considering that. I see the problem. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, how about we just do that? So concentrate something you can use against magic immunes, but in the beginning of the game, like this early on, you're not going to be encountering magic immunes. You are doing something wrong. You can leap in the middle. Hell everything away. You want at least a couple more points in a how. I messed it up. I messed it up. I was thinking I had more plus skills in this build because I was thinking of the Warcry build. And, uh, yeah. My, my, I don't have any radius. <laughs> yeah, instead of some points into bad orders or even that one point to Warcry, you can just put some points into a uh, how. I think Warcry can be nice sometimes, like against Pendleskin. Like, if I try to do, uh, 
almost get there. And leave it in the middle. Oh, what the heck? You know what's actually good about this? I actually have a higher percent chance to find item right now. That's kind of nice. At your service. Slightly messed it up. It's kind of like how I slightly messed up the whirlwind build as well. Just slightly. There's so many plus skills, man. It's hard to get it like perfect. Just perfectly tuning it to the exact gear you have is actually kind of difficult. You might need a few tries. <laughs> if you find a magic find berserk, you don't. Put points in a fine potion. Uh, you do once you get to about that. Yeah, yeah, you, you do want to start putting those points in if you want more points in a fine item. But you do want to make sure how is a little bit higher, not just because it's a berserk synergy, because you need it to be have more radius and more effectiveness to disperse the monsters that are not the, the later super unique monster you're targeting. Yeah, 100%. Alright, we're a real Berserk Barb now. Let's go. Let's do what we were meant to do. I'm running, baby, I'm running. Hustle's actually kind of nuts. Hustle plus uh, Harmony is a crazy combination for speed farming. Speed farming Pendle, Eldritch, and Shank would be good with this combination. And then you switch to MF if you really want to. One thing to note too is I actually have some block because I have Rhyme and I actually have points in a dex because I'm using a phase blade so that's actually a good thing. You could actually go max block on this build too. Um, especially maybe when you get a little bit more health, you can definitely consider going max block I can. on this. You notice how I can't disperse the monsters in here? It's because the monster level is too high. But that's okay. We are we are fully equipped. I can't carry anymore. Ready to find Griffins already, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Unbending will is really strong. Very strong weapon. I think against Trav we might, we might actually want to go even more points in a dex. Yeah, that, that max block would be kind of nice. But generically speaking, you don't need it. And it actually will get you killed on Piddle Skin, so, because you won't have enough life. Hard goes through block, too. There we go. Oh my goodness. It looks like we can fear those monsters. Okay. I am It's a little bit. Damn, this how level is so bad. Impossible. It's okay. See, I'm just saying. You could use the hustle if you want, but I'm trying to figure out my hotkeys more than anything. Oh yeah. What is this? No. 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 No, not the mercenary. It's okay. We don't need him. Wasn't doing anything useful anyway.
Honestly, the Merc is mostly just kind of there as like air support on this build. It doesn't really do that much. Magic damage is too good. Oh fuck. No, 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 no. Yeah, that, that lack of dispersion is just, it's just not working. Shouldn't be so greedy with the bad orders. You know, one thing I actually want to show, okay, so... By the way, Berserk is also the best approach when you have really high level HAL against something like Nilothok as well. I have mentioned that before though, in this uh, guided playthrough. So that is indeed the case. It's really cool how much MF you can stack on this though. Yeah, as long as you get more points into HAL, you don't have to do anything. Is that 251 MF? And that's with like garbage. It's kind of incredible, honestly. Only problem though is like against Trav, you might not have enough res though. There's definitely uh, weaknesses to this. Let's see if I go. I could do Countess on this, but I kind of prefer the other types of builds against Countess, but you could do this as well. The How Isolation is really strong. That's actually a high enough level. <laughs> it, it disperses the monsters very good, and the AoE is very good as well. Okay, this is the this is the trap build. Trap build with no fire is <laughs> need like a fire is you see, just one. Fifty one! I am in his smoked. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. It's okay. But yeah. It works. <laughs> it works, you just need to... See, we, we, we showed all these different approaches, but like I don't have like every single like charm or whatever to like optimize every approach. It is cool okay. to see uh, how much damage and bending and bending will does though. It's really cool. What can I do for you? It's kind of neat. Yeah. Well, res is always a problem though. Remember though, another thing you can do for res though, is like a couple more points in a natural res could also fix that as well. Let me see if uh... So if you don't go as greedy with the MF though, I could also handle it like this as well. Then I have to use some of those cool items I found. Oh, woe is me. Must use those. It's bad. Viper Magi. Cheat. Some of you guys were thinking of like when you get a lot more plus skills as well. Like you guys are like, why not find potion? Yeah, that's something you can't do from the get-go. Find items more efficient before you get plus skills, typically. Because once again, it's like two points versus one point. Oh, 
Barb is a bit more of a complex beast, though. Yeah, I think if I did this slightly differently, I can't carry with this level of gear, I think I would... Yeah, I would go for max block, because I'm actually not too far off anyway. And then I would put more points into hell, and then it'd be fun. It's crazy how a weapon this weak, though, can do this much damage. It's fast. It's fast! The thing is, the mercenary is the only thing keeping me alive. God. <laughs> At least I have fire res now, though. That, that's an improvement. Where's my dwarf star at, man? Come on. I have one dwarf star. Got a max block here. Could tank these forever. Door star max block. That's what I recommend on my starter uh, variant on my uh, berserk barbarian guide. You need the door star. The trap. Uh. Painful, man. Painful. Painful. Yes, yeah, like... Literally just max block and door star and I'm invincible. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. But yeah, if you're using Rhyme, like, max block with Rhyme is really good. If you're consistently using Rhyme. It's just, like, you'd actually have to get a little bit more uh, levels to make use of it a bit better. So you have a decent health pool. But you get max fire res, you get door star, you get max block. Easy PK. This looks a little hard at the moment, but it won't be that hard if you have all that. Definitely wouldn't be. Hello. Right now I have like medium MF too. Let's see, do I have no. Nope, 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 nope. Greetings. Oh no, you don't go sanctuary, man. You just use that Malrune for an oath. What's with everyone in Sanctuary? You don't need sanctuary. <laughs> oh no, no. Besides, you get you get magic find off of rhyme. No, no, no. Don't don't get sanctuary. That Malrun is for if you use if you use that first Malrun on anything but Oath, I I'm I'm very disappointed in you on the barbarian. If you're rich, no, 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 no. Berserk Barbarian late game is a storm shield in there, so. <laughs> it's not nice, though. I can't carry Oh, baby. How much MF is this? Yeah, 201. You know, this pathetic ranged howl is actually not terrible against things like this. It's 
practically like It's practically not doable though. But anyway, a Berserk Barbarian, Shank, Eldritch, Pendle. Or one you could see could do pretty much everything except for Pendle. Trav, especially if you have max block, Dwarf Star would make it a lot easier too. But. Oh god. Yeah, I can't do anything about this. This is. This is rough until we get a maybe a higher level owl. But at least the block's doing something. That's good. Go obedience too though. As we're in fair and Ubers, if you got good gear, it fares just fine. As whirling with trash gear fair and Ubers, probably not good. And you gotta remember, while you can do all these different approaches on this barb here, you know, there's some that are better than others. See, this guy's got stone skin on it. Boom. Wow, that's pretty good. I don't even need hustle. Hustle is hustle is luxury. Luxury, luxury goods. I love, I love how basic this is actually. It's actually great. Yeah, one of the advantages though, like you can see that from the unique drop there of going berserk against Trav early. This is so easy to stack magic find, it just is. You can stack it with War Cry too and just rely on mercenary damage once you get like a stronger mercenary weapon. But either way. F. I need max block so badly. Man. <laughs> Jesus, yeah, I should have done that. At least for Trav. I was kind of thinking, uh, oh, wouldn't matter in general, but really need that max block with the uh, rhyme shield. I forgot though. I forgot too much stuff, man. Wasn't thinking. And now I can't respec, so. I can't respec. We're out of specs. I'd really like to fix it, though. Yeah, fixing that would be nice, though. Some things on this uh, build I gotta fix here. This approach doesn't work this early. No max block. My max block is very good. It's too late for me to be specking builds right now. Ay ay. Excuses, excuses. It's true though. What am I doing? Yeah, so, if you look at here, you gotta take some points out of Bow, into Howl. The Warcry point, you can have that, but it's not gonna help you most of the time. This is fun. Um, you, you can distribute a few more points in a fine potion, I think it might optimize it, I don't know, I don't remember what the optimization on that is. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy respec tokens. From where? Buy them? 
And a solo run? What? Crazy. Okay, anyway, um... <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, man. Some of you guys don't know what Rags for Riches is supposed to be, for educational purposes. I guess. You want me to buy a respect token for educational purposes? Oh man. That's uh that's rough. Just cause I messed up. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I need more points in the howl. I need Yeah, honestly this build's kinda messed up quite a bit. I didn't think about it when I made it, but I was like, yeah, that's a little messed up. Does anyone have a respect token on softcore by any chance? Or does nobody have those? I wouldn't be surprised if anyone didn't even have respect tokens on softcore. Like, no joke. <laughs> That's not gonna help. Unless, unless you, uh, unless, unless the one you have do you have, um, yeah, we could do it for educational purposes, I suppose. Yeah, we need a, we need max block for this to work. We need more points into Howl, so we need kind of like a 50-50 split. And then I think the optimization and find item is like 1% poor. Yeah, anyway, it's not fun. You got a token on softcore? I don't need veil essence now. I have the yellow one. I found a yellow essence farming Mephisto. The hardcore build wasn't super messed up. Like that one was actually pretty solid. But I did overput points into World uh, Warcry. I always forget that like. Putting points in a war cry this early without plus skills is still not that effective. My mind, my brain is like stuck in late game. That's the issue. And like when I do this, like when I switch from, like I know how to do war cry in early game, and then when I switch to somebody's like physical build, it's like, hey, I know how to make a berserk barb in a whirlwind barb when I have end game gear. Let's go. Let's put like one, two points in there, and then this messes it up. It's a joke. Okay, let me let me do it properly. So for the for the guided playthrough and for the sake of education here. Okay. My goodness, what a joke! All right, come in here if you can. If you have a if you have a respect token, that'd be excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Bala. I, I should show obedience, by the way, but the thing with obedience is I'd get frozen, so there's no point unless I get... You saw how much damage obedience did, though, with Berserk, though? It's actually kind of nuts. So, like, two-handed Berserk, that is a thing, actually. But it's not standard, and there's a reason it's not standard. Okay, let, let, let's stick let's stick to our guns here, okay? Yeah, we need max block. Yep. We need life. Yeah, so max block is like really good on this. You go like one. Honestly, you don't even need to get battle cry because I have um so I already kind of fucked up, but it's just one extra point. That should be fun. I'll be fine without that point. <laughs> trying to go too fast, too. It's not working. See, there's a lot of a lot of crap, man. Let's just let's just do the blade mastery. Don't worry about the polar mastery. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Now I have no life right now, but that's okay. Keep is fine. Uh, uh, 
max berserk is fine. Definitely need a max berserk, need that damage, and then we get, I don't know, something like this. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Everyone doesn't have, yeah, no one ever has BLS in this, like, what the, <laughs> no one, Bale Essence is like, yeah, that, that that's the problem, man. No bail essence. When is the inflection point on this? Is it like when I get. I actually don't know. I think it's like 45. I think it's like at 50, because it. I still get 50 no matter. I, I don't even think I fucked it up last time. I think I only fucked up the other two things. Okay, that's... halfway decent. Yeah, I, I don't... No, I... Yeah, this is... It, it, this should be better, for sure. This is a this is a bit better of a demonstration, I think, here. I mean, we're not being quite as greedy, but we still have over 200 MF. You know what's funny though, is Saigon's works perfectly fine against... Yeah, so Saigon's were perfectly fine against, like, you know, Pendleskin and stuff, which is... What that's designed for. Well, not Pendleskin per se, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it's like... I guess there's no difference between find potion and find item at a certain level. But you can prepare for that, for getting more plus skills by putting points into find potion instead. So that's something we could do. Oh wow. What is this? Is this real it's in? Um, something like that. Alright, we have our fine item, we're good. Hal's doing something. means that now we can, uh, you know, actually kill stuff without getting wrecked. As long as they don't move around, have max block, but I'm amped, so I'm scared. There we go. Alright. Yeah, this is a much better showing for this character now. <laughs> I can already feel this. This is way better. Forget how, man. Thank you for helping me fix that, by the way. That's a. Uh, that's really dumb. And we can actually howl Pendles. Oh, wow, look at that. See? 250 MF is OP. Got a giant skull. A giant skull. That nah, rolled terrible, but if that rolled good. That would be uh, be insane. Yeah, but it's still one percent per on average Afternoon. on find item until a certain point. Find potion will give you one percent too, though. I think, I think the real thing is when you get to higher levels, you want to make sure you don't put that many points in a find item because you're only going to really get... Like, you're only going to want to put like one or... somewhere between like one and five, I think, like once you get plus skills from like Torch and shit. Yeah, but... That is it, man. What the heck is this? Oh, 
I'm gonna die because I don't have the other res. Oh my god, man. So real. This is a joke. I need a key. This is a joke. We'll do it this way then. Have it your way. Just gotta pull him away from those champions, cause the rest of my resistance. Oh wait, I know why I'm dying. What? I saw my Saigons. The Saigons is for the other dude. Dude, I'm too tired, man. I am not thinking right at all. This is interesting. Ever since I started like Berserk, it's been uh, it's been painful. That's when I know it's all over. <laughs> I am overburdened. <laughs> all right. Ever since I started Berserk, I'm not thinking straight. <sighs> Why I don't know. Berserk's actually supposed to be pretty easy. Some fire is now. That's good. Got some DR. Maximum block. Okay. Yeah, let's let's farm uh, let's farm some trap with Berserk. It's a very rudimentary build here. Ideally, we'd have Dwarf Star as well, but that's okay. Dwarf Star is it's like a medium tier item. I'm gonna use the Nasal Ring though. It's gonna be pretty busted. And I'm just take advantage of 201 MF. We run pretty fast on our offhand. Our weapon slot. Oh yeah. Tank so much better with max block. Night and day. <laughs> what? Conviction and Troy and Shan? That's cheating. Yeah, I have fire res for that, but I use some nasty spawns. I decided to start cheating, chat. It's not good. Yeah, they uh, big time cheaters now. That's literally cheating. Bending will, man. What a beautiful thing. I am overburdened. Good chance to sell stuff for gold, especially if I want to keep a mercenary around. Otherwise, uh, it might be challenging. I can't. Oh, that's a J mod. Uh, well, we're rich now. Game over, chat. Found the J mod. Almost. Almost. Not bad. I can't carry anymore. I think we're out of Jeeves now, though. I have to go Eldritch and Shing farming for Jeeves. <laughs> Not gonna bother, though. Hello. You need Jews and you have health potions. A little? Oh, we got to 82. Farming a Hill Countess. We farmed a bunch of runes. Just been showing off some other strats that you can use once you get certain items. 
or with other items that we didn't use yesterday. Wait, how the heck am I frozen? I am wearing a rhyme right now. This? It's locked. What the heck Impossible. froze me? Oh, Impossible. was it because I was leaping? With... Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. No, stop healing! That's a ridiculous one. Okay, fine, I'll split him up again. Do I, do I actually need to use hell? Are you gonna force me to use hell? Okay, fine. Now, we're trying to so clean, man. So clean. I can't care. I don't have these issues with work, right? <laughs> but then again, this isn't that bad, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know how many times I tried to attack him and he healed? 50. This is why Warcry is so good though, see? This is a harmony. It's for faster run speed. It's nice. The thing about Warcry is it stuns them all too, so they can't heal each other. This is the sixth time I've been attacking this monster. And he finally dies. Oi, oi! But see, the other problem though, is you need like something like Doorstar. Doorstar would make a pretty big difference here. One Doorstar to save them all. Don't need that nature ring anyway. Way too much. Like we have way too much attack uh, attack rating. Way too much attack rating. So you don't even need that. Good day. It's okay. We will we will overcome this. This is already a lot easier though with max block though, and just modifying a few things. I guess we're gonna have to use Hal if we uh Hal's not ideal though. Because it's it scatters them. And then you can't attack them all in one spot. Oh. Need more tank for that. What's the weapon? The reef? No, it's not 22 now. Except for uh Angelic Amy, I couldn't find. Thanks. I'm gonna get you some challenging spawns. Yeah, well, what's this, man? Okay, that's good. Good job, Mercer. Oh, you're the one, Thor. 
It's unbending will, yeah. Grief would one shot them 100%. Three for one shot them. But you know, I'm bending well with Berserk isn't bad though at this level. I can't carry However, honestly I think Berserk and Whirlwind, depending on the situation, might be about the same. And like War Cry is still I think the easiest way to do this. Warcry is just super versatile too. I can't. But obviously the good thing about Berserk though. Kinda like War Whirlwind can has the potential to kill things the very fastest if you can do it right. With obedience, which is nice. The real strength of unbending will I actually think would be like Pendle Eldritch Shink farming. But you can also do travel once you get like a dwarf star. And the reason being is the real strength of Unbending Will is you can just put a bunch of MF everywhere. And... Berserk is Berserk. Berserk does damage. You don't need any kind of damage to get her anywhere else, and you will do damage. That's the thing about it. It's uh, pretty remarkable, actually. See, right there... What you have just witnessed is a 250 MF kill, a 50% magic, 50% uh, item find. Ah, oh, crap. I was greedy. I don't have any potions, so I was just trying to be greedy for potions. Dude, this is funny right now. This is, uh, is this? this is interesting. Okay. But anyway. I can't. Mercenary needs to stay alive. That's the problem. Well, mercenary stays alive unless it's a uh, traveling cool. I can't carry anymore. I can't see her. Traven Cool is a real suicide fight, but this is why this is a soft core setup. We need we need like smoke on hardcore. We need to invest into it. Well that's not bad. My volume is all the way up and you're still quiet. Is it my end? Uh... Am I quiet for anyone else or no? The game is just loud. Okay. I was gonna say, I listened to myself in my video the other day. It seems fun. As you can see, though, there's nothing more effective than Berserk for farming these particular bosses. Stacking Magic Find and just assassinating the Elite. Very effective here. Is it just work? It's funny that the game is down so low too, that's the crazy part. 
Like, the game volume is literally like 12. Hello. <laughs> I don't know. It's ridiculous! So I'm using Harmony Bow to run fast, by the way, if you don't know what this is. I've talked about it a few times before. Kex, thank you so much for launching a Zane attack against the stream. Chas, be in the Zed Zane in the chat if you guys came for him. See, these farms are like amazing for a Berserk right here. I would say that, like, Berserk is probably strongest at Eldritch Pindle Shank. Which makes sense, because you can hork, and they're super uniques, and you can get four items from each of them. I'd say Warcry is probably strongest at Trab. I mean, just being able to stun them up the whole time is like super helpful when you don't have gear. And then strangely enough, it's the Countess. You can probably do whatever you want. Like, all three approaches have strengths and weaknesses in there. A lot of rips. No. That's normal, though. Like, when you push endgame, something I've explained many times before, on software, you're gonna rip a lot. But on Hardcore, that's why on Hardcore you make sure you just go ultra defensive on everything. Like, you wouldn't have resistances like this on Hardcore. This is totally like Softcore approach. Now my, my charms could have better res, but that's not really that big of a deal. God. Isolate with Hell, you can jump into the middle of Leap, you can speed up like this. What's interesting is you can also do a Teleport Staff, so you don't have to do this approach. You do, um... If you don't like the way Leap works, you can do this instead. Let's see. Many different ways to do it. it, can all be effective. Teleport staff abuse. I am overburdened. Can't fork Shink though, I don't like Shink. So that's the thing. There's a reason why I typically stick to Eldritch and Pimple, but you can do either one. They're all really good with Berserk. Warcry is best against Trav, and like I said, like Countess, you can do whatever. Against bosses, you saw that Whirlwind is probably the most effective against bosses, especially with like double black flail. Berserk is shit against bosses, completely garbage. So like this build. Does not kill like Mephisto, for instance. This build finds godly items like Pendle and Eldritch. 200 plus MF, I Hork, good elite targeting, kills the bot, kills the super uniques faster than. Either Whirlwind or Warcry would in this scenario. Frenzy at this point in the game? See, that's the thing is like, what I'm rating here is, re is starter weapons, so. Double Spirit on Warcry versus Obedience on Whirlwind versus Unbending Will on 
Berserk. Not rating like both. Once you get like higher level stuff. That's pretty good. By the way, it's where when I was surviving in trap really well. But I needed more DR, so I needed all my DR to do it. What do you need? But Whirlwind was also like flipping through them. There's so a uh, few items that give percent PDR on D2R. Yeah, I, I guess they figured that stat was so valuable they shouldn't have it on everything. This is a great way to farm for potions too. If you want to go back to trap, you can. Ideally, you farm some juice. Cause it's gonna hurt, especially when your res is not amazing yet. I found so many charms. Just so many garbage charms, man. I think my charms would be a little bit better now. For now. Oh wow, um, that's good actually. You know what? I'll take the I'll take the extra life on that. Oh, dude, we found so many good items in this run, man. I found Viper Magi not that long ago. But yeah, anyway. Away from me. Get away from me. Let me go kill these four more times. See if I can optimize Trav with the Berserk approach here. Hello. Like, it, it's interesting how a bard with like complete garbage can even do any of this, but you know. I already know, man. I already know. Yeah, we're rich, we're rich. Look how good, but look how clean Berserk is for like. Ugh. So clean. For these particular. For like targeting the super uniques, it's so good. I'm not using Harmony Bow at the moment. Swap them out though, I'd rather have the uh, stuff in my inventory. Yeah, so th this is where Berserk really shines right here. You know, there's monsters you can port for four items, it targets them so well. Of course, with how you can do the same against Countess as well. Won't benefit maybe from the minions, but the minions rarely benefit anyway. Berserk is my favorite early game bar build, but I still recognize that Warcry has an edge for early game trap though. Warcry with a strong Merc. Pull it off. It's a little easier to pull off. I'm gonna go kill this three more times and then uh, show you guys some other things you guys can do with the uh, this berserk barb here. Can't complain anymore though because you actually spec correctly somewhat now. Even if I do die, it won't be constant. Wow, look at that. All colors in the rainbow. Is that dark blue? Oh, no, no. 
Dark Glow. It's not Guardian Angel, but... I can't. That could be good. I love Whirlwind against bosses, though. It's so good. Like, Whirlwind versus bosses, even with just double black, or like, Obedience is super strong. Whirlwind is okay against Trev. I'd say Berserk, kind of same thing. But until you get, like, Oath on either Whirlwind or Berserk, it's a little painful, as you can see. That's, once you get at least Oath, that's when, like, Trav feels good with the physical damage builds. And that's, that's the thing, is, like, in Rags to Riches, we're not gonna get Oath. Oath is Lum, Pull, Mal. And the really hard one, Horse Socketed, F, Elite, Sword. Um, ideally something like a two-handed sword, because I'm a barb, so I can use a two-handed sword as a one-handed sword. And that's, that's how you win. So like, Oath, Oath is what makes Berserk really pop off and it would also make it pop off it, same thing as whirlwind it would make whirlwind pop off against trav as well oath is just a huge power spike getting oath would be nice and that we're not even talking grief so once you get like griefs it's like the game's over everything just gets melted I could. I could do that. Hmm. Got no defense though. He's gonna get wrecked in trap, right? I don't know. He's got 80 fire res though. I'm actually curious if this makes him survive. I found a dark glow. It's like a. It's a baby. Uh. The baby guardian angel. Wait, I have an idea. Hell, shale, yeah. Boom! I'll put that to good use. I'll put that good to good use. defense. Okay. Yeah, he'll be fine. Got a baby guardian angel. Just by having like all this MF, it's good, and you could have so much more MF too. Like this could have had another di uh, perfect one in it. So that's four more. This one could have twenty-four more. Then you can have like two fifty, really easy. Of course, though, having attack speed on gloves and things like that's important. On this farm, you can have like war traps though. War traps would be nice. So, I, w I want to also show you guys, like, isolating Nilothok and Countess. So we'll do that as well. Our 
juice back fast, man. I should put my uh, three-piece Saigon set back on, then I have almost 300 MF. Ah, uh, dude. I keep forgetting to switch my gear going back from Trav Farm to this. Oh, whatever. At least now I can farm Trav, I guess, if I want to. I can't. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. I'm gonna just keep healing the web. That's the problem with him. He just gets healed all the time. It's not something that's easy to remember though. Yeah, see, he's just getting healed. This is my 200 MF trap build for this. Remember, you can find the highest high runes here. Trap is definitely worth it. And from the get go, farm it if you can, as long as you have some juice. <laughs> That is kind of weird. That kind of word there, man. That was a pretty clean trap fight, but once again, burning through Jews unless I separate them. Having Oath just makes it so much better. I actually have some juice now, so. I've played Project Diablo 2 the last six seasons. I like it. Yeah. I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Oh. Dude, you should show off all the insane items you found in this run. It's like nuts. Not just with the Warcry build, too. Warcry is super strong. Key to killing something like Millifoc easy, by the way. Scatter the minions so that he can't doesn't have anything to explode. In the middle. And then boom. If you go Berserk, Berserk by far is the best way to farm Nilofok on a barb, so. Afternoon. Yeah, I mean, Unbending Will is a little. It works really well for Eldritch Shink and Pendle, but like. And of course, it'll work for like something like Countess, but. You can see that it's not amazing. For like Trav. Trav is pushing it. Little Fox pushing it. Whereas Warcry is not pushed by Trav. Not 
not really. Thanks. It's not on softcore. On hardcore, you might want to farm other things before trap first. A lot more. But since this is a shorter, you know, it's a it's a guided playthrough. It's got to end at some point. I wanted to show you guys. Oh, max block is so good on this jam. Yeah, I can't care one more. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys like how effective it is if you just push the limits of your build with like no items. It's kind of like in uh, part one. We definitely did some limit pushing there with the throw barb. It's not a bad thing. Mm, maybe at some point business, Calimbo. I really like I really like PD2 by the way. Um, I think PD2 is the best mod for Diablo 2 ever made, and we are likely to play it again come this seventh season here. I haven't missed a season yet. You can also farm the Countess a bit if you want your Jews back. Trav's just gonna blow through Jews though. Until I, uh, unless, unless I decide to use a smoke armor, I'm gonna blow through Jews for sure. At least I have fire res, so. There is that. You like most about it. Look how clean that Countess kill is a Berserk. Boom! Berserk is just super clean versus like many bosses, super unique, things like that. I can't care anymore. And if I'm willing to sacrifice a little bit more MF against Trav. And definitely put on some more res here. The order welcomes you. Go hustle, and hustle is not. Go bar viable in D2R, or is it not possible? I need a key. Oh no, throw bar is fully viable. I did a whole hardcore playthrough all the way to the end of the game with throw bar. Only throw bar. No, no other skills. Stop healing! Oh my god, he's healing. That's why Oath is so much better, because you can kill them fast enough so they don't heal. Do more damage. That's so sad. Dude, they're just healing, man. They're just healing. It's really a pain, honestly. It's healing. Isn't that thing also like triple healing? You guys know what I'm talking about. That multi shot there. Feels like it's healing everything.
No, oh, it's really powerful. It's not just viable, it's like super strong. Once you get like GG gear on the throw bribe too, it's like one of the best bar builds. I'm not even joking, I'm like no cap of them. No cap of it is OP. Some of these trav runs be hard, man. I really wish I had a door star and like a little bit more res. Not here. Honestly, I don't think. Good day. Hustle is nice for running down, and then you can use like a teleport staff for teleporting in. So you can do that too. Now my MF is only a mere 130. Well, that's pretty good. in two seconds. I really wish I could show you guys Oath, but man, it's because you just can't farm it with it. You can't farm it that quickly. That's not realistic. Need a little bit more time. I can't carry anymore. Bending will is what we call passable. I can't carry anymore. It's passable. Trav will die eventually. Unbending Will is actually great though against like Super Uniques and Countess and Illithok though. It does plenty of damage. Trav is a different beast. Time to kill Gil at this time without him healing. Good. Challenge, man. 
This was able to find fire res items, because without fire res, this is... <laughs> oh, man. It's hard. What is that? Is that a towels belt? Yeah, it is. That is a towels belt. Wow. Witches are always coming in, man. No, it's not a bug. So, weapons are kind of different. So, stats on weapons are what's called localized in D2. Let's see if someone else in the chat knows what that means. What does that mean when a stat is localized? So, when you have two weapons... By the way, the same thing happens with... Um, it's it, it. They're localized on, on the bar. See if you have two, black flails. Some stats are localized and some aren't. Crushing blow is a localized stat. So, s damage modifiers are localized. I think. Yeah. So damage. Right. So that means it only applies to that one weapon. So. It depends on the stat, right? So let's say it's an attribute, or it's like something like dual mosaics, or it's like finishing moves have a you know twenty five percent chance to not consume charges or fifty percent, right? So a mosaic that's not a local stat. It ends up combining to make a hundred percent. There's a bunch of other stats that aren't localized as well, like strength, vitality. But there are some stats that are localized. So some good examples of localized stats are anything that has to do with damage. Attack speed's also localized, and only the left weapon counts, which is your main hand weapon. So if you put one on the right, only this one counts for attack speed. Um, but yeah, da all damage stats for the most part are localized. So like maximum damage, enhanced damage, damage to undead, that's all lo those are all local stats. Um, another example of a local stat, though, is for, is Crushing Blow. Crushing Blow is a local stat. I believe Deadly Strike is also a local stat. That means it only applies to that one weapon. So, you can have two blacks, each have 40%. But you don't have 80% Crushing Blow, you have 40% per weapon. Now, if you have Crushing Blow elsewhere, like on boots, then you have 65 per weapon. Oh no, it is worth it to go dual black. We actually showed that off earlier on. Um, that yeah, you can do that. Dude, they're healing him too fast, man. Oh my. I need damage. Someone save me from the low damage apocalypse. I'm killing all the hurricanes, so I don't care. of all the Hierophants and he's still getting max healed. Hmm. 
No, so dual black is good. With double swing or whirlwind. Because you can apply the crushing blow faster to a monster. You just get more procs, basically. As opposed to using something like, I don't know, concentration or something. That, that, that's basically it, man. What's up, Cosmic Hawk? How you doing? Hello. Warcry makes this look so easy. <laughs> Until you get Oath, that's kind of the case, honestly. And again, Obedience. It's kind of nice. Real challenge is separating them to the point that they don't just like mob you. And you're trying to slash the tires. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad. It's not good. <clears throat> Unbending will though is really good against like anything but trap though. You need just you just do more damage. Yes. Obedience does do more damage, and you can see it. So it's a little different. I imagine. Based on what I saw with Obedience, you could just go up to them and just berserk them, but... Probably die doing that as well, though. Yeah, this is fun. Mercenary is going to get railed. What's interesting is he even is using um, Dark Glow and it doesn't matter. Good day. He needs Guardian Angel. He needs Guardian Angel. ever try to berserk trav with like unbending will and a bunch of like mf gear and some fires it's interesting speaking I want to fight try with something physical you're gonna need a uh, oath or above yeah you can get by things like unbending will and obedience on them but it's tough and if you don't have those then you just go work right and work right is demonstrated to be very strong here Basically, 
I think we've shown off all the strats you can employ though, so... The varying degrees. Not all, not all strats are created equal in the barb, obviously, but... You've still proven you can crush face with any of these strats depending on what you're farming and how you're farming it. Barb starts slow, but he has incredible abilities. As he continues through the game. One thing to note here. Yeah, if you can kind of like isolate them one at a time, sort of. I don't have any jibs. Yes. Go back and heal real quick. I can't uh, play any music on this. This is actually a, it's a video. Sorry. Okay. Um. Can someone refund his points? Refund your points. All right. We'll be able to do stuff like that again when I'm just like doing real stuff. See, like, normally on a barb, you can go straight to Trav with Warcry, but if that's not your goal, you're gonna have to farm for, like, Grief or Oath through Countess, you know, LK, things like that. But if you start with Warcry, you can just start farming for, like, Low Rune right, right away here. You can use the strats that I mentioned showed off as well. I can already tell that I'll be your Lord best Cross. friend in this forsaken game. Using Harmony plus the Teleport Staff is very effective in Lower Cross for farming those super chests. In general though, I mean you can see that you can farm Trav with Obedience and you can farm Trav with Unbending Will with Berserk, but those aren't as effective until you get the stronger weapons for sure. This is interesting that you can do it though. I mean, it's not like it's not doable. It's just pretty painful. Pretty much have to revive the mercenary every time. You're gonna have to sell a lot of items to keep going. Um, you have to sustain your juice by farming. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's a lot of crazy stuff, but. A good summary though, after we kind of reviewed all these techniques though today, is that. Double black or obedience is super strong against bosses, but concentration also works, and you can also do double swing, which can be even more effective. The power of fully synergized battle cry and war cry, of course. War cry can do everything well, along with those one pointers and high skill battle cry. You don't even need attack rating, you don't even need angelics with it, and you can kill bosses. I didn't need this angelic dammy. I just employing that strat, not at all. Um, the challenge of Whirlwind, though, and other skills that rely on attacks rating, like Zerk, is you really need that attack rating. One of the easiest ways to get it, of course, is two-piece Angelics. Uh, once you can do that, the Zerk is arguably the strongest approach that allows you to stack the most magic find against Shank, Aldrich, and Pendleskin. Of course, it's also highly effective against everything else. And it only kind of just gets by in Trav, but very slowly. Um, and like with Obedience, a stronger weapon would be a lot better. It would help the mercenaries survive faster, or survive more reliably. Uh, of course, the mercenary could also use things like Kira's and Guardian Angel and Reaper's Toll for a really strong approach. But you would need a much stronger approach for that, for sure. Um, Whirlwind, of course... Proved itself insanely well against bosses like Mephisto, but also proved it could do anything else as well. Just to a slightly worse degree than some of the other abilities. 
But unbending will, obedience, and double spear are all cheap approaches. And double black, single black, rhyme. Rhyme thrown in here and there. Um, and even get max block on rhyme, especially once you get to like level 80 plus, I would say. And uh, max block does work for sure. And it's especially easy to do once you're using like a phase blade because you already have to put in all that dex anyway. Of course, Unbending Will does have negative requirements, but still, that's still a lot of dex. So pretty strong. Um, and always stack even more magic find and find sane items. But honestly, in Barbarian Racks to Riches, we found some crazy stuff over the course of all three parts of this guided playthrough. Um, today, of course, is mostly a farm and showing off some alternative strats once we acquire some different weapons and uh, showing you how these strats can be more effective or maybe just slightly less effective in some areas. Uh, it's pretty crazy how effective though the Barb can farm Trav. Even with a slow Trav farm, is still efficient than most classes when it comes to farming Trav just simply because a find item and having that 50% chance to get an additional item. I believe this was a trap baby right here. I found this. Found a pull rune from that as well. Some fouls. I have found so many good items over the course of this journey. Um, it's really quite crazy. We made a Lawbringer just to show off how good Decrepify can be. The only problem with it mainly is you wouldn't want all this cold damage for Horking, but it's not bad. And it'd be very strong against bosses. The slow is very good as long as you can get the attack rating up elsewhere. Um, if not, it can just provide a nice slow. But remember, it does interfere with Warcry. But yeah, we've made Harmony. We found all kinds of useful gear that maybe we weren't able to use, but we were able to use it. You know, we have two throw. Two socket Saigon. I mean, three uh, set Saigons. Towels. Really good. Ethereal bases. Giant skull. Towels mask. Double spirit. Goblin toes. Double black. 27 all res. Viper magi. Hustle. Two tiki's, pull, multiple fouls, multiple co's, plenty of stuff. That MF res ring, really good stuff there. Um, unbending will, decent MF stuff. String of ears, 15 DR. Alders advance, laying of hands, multiple of those actually. We just left them on the ground. We actually left a lot of stuff that was good on the ground, including white monarchs, because. Didn't have space. Afternoon. Teleport staff. Angel ring. Did find angelic ring. This is the only item we didn't find that we we're currently using. Um, we borrowed that off of someone just to show that berserk and whirlwind indeed can be solidly effective once you get enough attack rating. Got enough res. Insight, Crown of Thieves, and Dark Glow. Listen to this crazy smoke. We imbued that to Barbarian. And of course, these playing 10 FCR rings are actually the best 10 FCR rings we found. It's kind of silly. And then we found a 2 Warcry. Amulet, we have some Lice, some Ultrams. Yeah, we just have a lot of stuff in the end. Um, I don't think you can argue we didn't find riches because if you find a Viper Magi in the first couple days of a ladder, um, you will honestly with just that Viper Magi, we could get a, we can get an oath, and if we get an oath, we'll cut up Trav to shreds um, without relying on Warcry almost exclusively and struggling with Whirlwind. I'll put that to good use. A berserk to a pretty large degree. But either way, you can see though, 
lot of really good items. Multiple towels items as well. Maybe not the big ones, but it doesn't matter. Really, the keys, the keys were definitely always Eldritch and, uh, and Pendleskin. Trav played a big role, of course, towards the end as we started demoing various ways to farm it. Countess, though, was the real key. Nightmare Countess farm, you can't skip it. That is what makes the barb feel good as you push all the way through hell. We proved that as we, uh... We, we totally proved that as we uh, pushed all the way through hell. Pretty much no incident after farming Nightmare Countess. You need those basic rune words, you need those spirits, and you know, the spirit or spirits, you need the rhyme, maybe. At least the basic lore to start out. And then you'll be able to find a lot of this other cool stuff pretty quickly. So lots of valuable useful stuff it's pretty crazy we could even take down d clone we talked about how it's too bad the d clone didn't actually spawn oh there's a jab and spear skill gc i forgot about that i also forgot about this crazy rare emmy we found yeah i don't i don't know there's just so much stuff we found remember we started completely naked did that fire absorb helm? Yeah. I could do that. It has no MF, but. By the way, it's not full what you're thinking of, it's Rao. Yeah, we could we could use the um It's kind of interesting here. I don't even think I have enough to make that, do I? You can also get Kanopy Frozen on that, too. Some of those new Helms could definitely prove useful here, for sure. Um, I mean, I talked about Bulwark, for sure. I actually made Hustle, but... I talked about Bulwark, and the reason why I didn't make Bulwark is because we had all these other crazy Helms, like Thousand of Mask and Crown of Thieves, but... I think it's Shale IRL, right? Yeah. Talking about this helm, right? See, this helm has to be Rao, right? So, man, pretty sure. Yeah, Temper, yeah. Yeah, that, that could actually help a little bit there against Trav, right? At least a little bit. It's uh, it's not flat. It's not flat absorb though. I do think this helm does have some potential against Trav, but notice that I just lose a lot of MF doing that, so I'm not even sure that's worth it. And it's also not flat absorb. Like if I wanted to show that off real quick, I probably could, but. Well, the problem is the mercenary can't. I can't use that. Well, I don't have a. Put that to I don't use. have a helm you can use anyway. But you can't life leech, so like that absorb is probably not enough. It's not a bad helm though. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I don't have a life leech armor. RMG. That's interesting though. Because with the fire absorb, I can personally tank a little bit better, so that's nice. Yeah, there you go. That's actually something interesting to show people. He might be able to have slightly more success sometimes in the early game. It's like I said, I want a door starter, but you know, this will work too, honestly. There you go. 
Oh, you can't put rings on the mercenary, but yeah, we, we were talking about the mercenary. <laughs> he is look at a dwarf. Nah, it's fun. You know what's funny though is that actually works pretty well. The magic finds crap, but I guess it's like I said earlier. You don't really need magic find for. So yeah, this is good. It's never a bad thing to use to try to use for trap. Dwarf Star is still more ideal, but yeah. Also means I have more fire risk too, so I can stack against Conviction Aura. But yeah, in general, since this one, uh, this Berserk build was a max block, full vitality one. All the other builds are just put enough into uh, strength index to wear everything. The rest into vitality makes sense because there are two handed builds or two one handed builds. This was a shield build. Using the cheapest shield we can use. Zerk's got a lot of good stats. Kind of splitting how and battle orders a bit and find item. Kind of have to do that, and as you get more levels, it become less strained. That's actually beautiful though. Emperor's beautiful. See a good barb helm with it. Beautiful! Good day. I should have thought to try it earlier, but you know, I'm glad I tried it by the very end. <laughs> it's basically like a dwarf star, but on the head. You know, I'll take it. I I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Good stuff. But yeah. Anyway. Key stuff, key stuff. Yeah, we showed the equipment multiple times, but yeah, I mean. I don't have a Helm Elf. I had a Lava Gout, I think, but I threw it out. Lava Gout wouldn't have been bad, though. Yeah, I just didn't have space for... I, I had so many other items, too. It's kind of nuts. Insight, Dark Glow, Crown of Thieves. Honestly, smoke is better. That to good use. Unbending Will. I uh, destroyed my ma my magic fine helm. That's actually one reason why I wasn't making these, because I only had one three-socketed helm after I had to throw a couple other ones out. Just ran out of space. Teleports, charges. Yeah, but you can make temper, you can make bulwark. Bulwark is one that you can definitely make for like early whirlwind or something. Um, if you don't, especially if you didn't find string of yours, that'd be freaking huge. And then you can use like smoke or lionheart as an armor. I mentioned that when we played War One though. But yeah, this is a solid approach here for uh, berserk. It's all about just MF res stacks. Maybe some DR. This is the Trav build, though. Um, this build's way more effective for, like, Pendle and Eldritch. And honestly, Berserk is really strong for Pendle and Eldritch. Once you get Oath, it's going to be a lot better for Trav. But you need something that does a lot of damage for Trav uh, to make it fast. Otherwise, it's going to be at least a little bit of a struggle every time you do it. Even, even with Fire Sword... Fire Sword definitely seems to improve it quite a bit, but it's still going to be kind of rough until you get more damage. The main problem is that they outheal your damage, like here and there, so it's kind of rough. But yeah, the weapon is Unbending Will. This is a new rumor that came out in patch 2.4. It, as you can see, it can crush things. It's very strong. But yeah, we were able to farm up a lot of useful things. There you go. See how see how good Berserk is at just targeting Eldritch and honestly kicking his ass. 183% MF here. I had 
250 MF, but then I destroyed my three socketed helms, so I'd have to get new topazes to fix my MF again, but doesn't matter. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wasn't making like bulwark and temper and things like that, but. You guys are right, that does have fire sword on it. What do you need? And honestly, if you didn't want to get Kanapi frozen on this, you could even use um whatchamacallit? Uh, not temper. That's this one. Hearth. Yeah, that one. Yeah, hearth is nice too, potentially. It also, I think, gives you mana leech. Also, if you really want to stick with throw, you see this pull rune here? You can make a wisdom with it. That's the highest rune in wisdom, which is another three socketed helm. So yeah, pick up those three socketed barb helms. You know, mule some stuff if you have to on the barb to kind of, you know, optimize whatever build you're going for. There's so many build possibilities on the barb at all times that, like, I think I've struggled more with this stash than I've struggled with, like, any other class because there's just so many things you can potentially keep. It's kind of crazy. Look at that, a 120-19 helm. That's a that's a nice paladin circlet. Early game paladin circlet there. Pretty baller. But anyway. What's up David? How you doing? As you can see my res in general, it's kinda like janky. Except for my fire res. Decent cold res. Fire is this this setup doesn't have any light res, which is hard. But, you know, if you have if you have two piece angelic, this berserk barb is is beast and he crushes Pendle and Eldritch, and then of course he even crushes Countess and even Nilothok to some degree. And Trav, you know, he gets by in Trav. Some fire sword plus a max block. I'll definitely get you places. Max Blade Mastery, Max Berserk, one point leap. Split, Battle Orders, Howl, and Find Item. These two are synergies for Berserk. Of course, this is going to give you more health. This is going to allow you to have more radius and be able to send monsters fleeing away from the elite. The elites don't get scared, so they stay, and then you kill them. Uh, with council, it's a little different. You're gonna fear all the minions. Sometimes you have to fear them away though to split them up because they stack on you. It's pretty bad. But yep, that's it. This barbarian got to level 82. Really solid, thorough rags to riches there. Um, obviously, on um, Rags to Riches, we never actually get to the late game, or the riches, necessarily. But, as you saw there, there was a ton of riches in terms of insanely good early game items that we found. And, honestly, I'm pretty satisfied with this. This is good. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of Barbarian Rags to Riches. As you can see, he starts slow, but once he gets some items, he can crush hell, no problem. And it's easy to farm those things up. As long as you do the farms that we do throughout this, you'll be able to do all of this. Uh, it's really cool. It's no guarantee you find necessarily all of this in a faster run, but yeah. Is there going to be a part for it? No. This is it. This is it. There's no reason to be a part for. Um, all the other Rags to Riches guides. The goal of the guides is to get you to know how to farm for riches with minimal gear that you can farm in the game reliably. That's the whole point. Um, we even accomplished that in part two of the bar. The reason why I did a part three here is to show you that there's other things you can do, that you can do whirlwind. And that you can do berserk if you can get certain items that are also very easy to farm and that you can also 
Then we also showed you guys different tests on Travancore, which is the real test for the Barb, because that's his strongest primary, especially as he continues to get geared. You're never going to get items like Oath or Enigma or Grief in Rags to Riches, because... Um, you don't have enough time. Push through the game. I show you guys the farms. Show you guys how to do them. And then you guys can grind them out. Once you guys do those grinds, whichever grinds you prefer, you will get those GG items, but it's going to take a longer grind. That's how to do it. Part four, the search for a lower rune. <laughs> yeah, that can take days. At, at best. Yeah, we got we got a lot of good stuff. We got a lot of good stuff. Yeah, so remember guys, if you guys ever want to find my Rags for Riches videos, they are in my channel as well, not just on my YouTube. If you see that, it's just R2R. There you go, the number two. And then it says commands for DH's complete D2R, Rags to Riches, Solo B, Net, Guided Playthrough Series, all our patch 2.4 or beyond, which means they're all pretty much up to date. Quickly go from naked to rich on any of the seven classes, practically zero game knowledge required, and then there's seven commands listed. So this is when you can just go ham in the chat like this. Yeah, see, Grim's doing it. Yeah, uh, and then you can just click on those links, and those are the videos. Yeah, hundred percent. So, um, they're all done now. We just have to upload part two and part three of the Barbarian. Um, but yeah, now um, the, the the point is to show you how you can farm everything with garbage. You know, if you have oath and grief, of course you can destroy. You know, on the sorceress, if you have full towels, of course you can destroy. Did I ever have full towels in Rags to Riches Sorceress? No. You don't need it. Um, there's going to be struggles, of course, with minimal gear. And especially if you're pushing with a lot of MF and not enough res. Like, I could have put smoke armor on myself. I could have farmed another foul and Lum rune, and then I would have had a lot of res on my armor. And then my res would have been super good, and I would have never taken damage from all kinds of things. Which would have been better for hardcore. But then I wouldn't have the magic find to, you know, effectively find, like, the Viper Magi and things that we found later on. In softcore, you just want to kill stuff and push and sometimes die. And run out of potions and then farm Eldritch again <laughs> and Pendle. And then run out of gold, maybe, farm some lower Crossed or Eldritch and Pendle. On a starter barb, you know, you, you have your safe zones. You have your good farms. Hell Countess is super easy. Warcry is probably the safest barb period, just hands down, um, on hardcore. So if you're doing a barb rack to riches, I mean, you, you guys could probably see that, just how easy it was to survive on Warcry. Um, even Trav felt pretty safe for the most part. So not a lot of dying going on. You can argue that Trab took a while with Warcry here and there, but probably about as about as long, but without maybe all the dying, so it's the other builds. So it doesn't matter. Once you get beyond those early game rune words though, on any rags to riches class, that is when you achieve Nirvana. So Yeah, once you get those oaths and griefs on him. You know, Enigma and other characters. Um, Hodos. Hodos are nice. You can do Hodos for Warcry as well. There's just, you know, Reaper's Toll, you know, once you get those next level items. But what that's going to take is an actual, like, grind. See, what I did was only the minimal grinding today, so I can show you guys some more strats for some of these farms. You know, if I was serious about this getting my character grounded up, I would do just heavy everything, just like heavy Mephisto, heavy Countess. I'd get a, 
Go check for more bases. Gotta find those oath bases. Uh, th those are tough, so. And, uh. Yeah, farming traffic will get in those low runes. Honestly, I'd probably farm other things more before I start doing traffic pool, because I feel like it's still it's still a little bit too much of a struggle for a trap. I mean, it's definitely doable, as you can see, but um, it's hard to show trav farm, hell farm on a barb in a rags to riches run, because you actually have to get some damage. But I think I did a pretty good job. Yeah, 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 you can do Hodo Spirit, too. I found a White Monarch, too, so that would have been pretty easy. But, of course, Hodo requires, like, a Vex So, yeah, you can see... You can see, I mean, you're going to lose a, a point. You're going to lose a skill point doing that, but you can do that as well. There's a lot of, like, places you can definitely graduate to. It's surprising how much gear we had that was actually kind of endgame, though. It's actually, uh... Laying of hands and 15 DR string of ears is it's pretty good stuff. Like those are items you would use on an endgame whirlwind barb, like 100 percent We had we had a few endgame items we did. But without like those insanely high damage weapons, eh. It matters. It matters a little bit. Anyway. GG. Check out all the timestamps, of course. Be sure to let me know in the comments below how much, of course, what you thought about, you know, this uh, Barb playthrough. All the other approaches. Maybe some other approaches that you use that were not shown in these videos. Every time I do a Rags to Riches, there's maybe approaches I don't even talk about. So usually I'll talk about almost all of them, but there's, there's maybe a few that you might prefer that are not shown here. Of course, uh, yeah. I know this one was much anticipated, so hopefully this uh, teaches people a lot of things about how to farm, how to even go from here. The whole point of Rise to Riches is to show you how you can get rich. So you just keep getting riches from here, and whichever ones you thought would be easiest to farm, and uh, whichever approaches you think would be the most fun or interesting or effective, just remember, uh, the fastest you can farm a trav like a beast, yeah, you get some DR, maybe some uh, block, some absorb, some stacked res, and then some damage. The fastest you do that against trav with fine item, the uh, faster you're going to get rich on the barbarians. So your goal before you hit trav is to prepare yourself for trav. That does take a bit. But once you get something like Oath, maybe even Grief before Trav, some other stuff, you're going to crush Trav. But as you can see, you can still farm Trav before that as well. And Trav can give you the riches to propel yourself to get GG gears for faster farming of Trav. A value for magic could get us a full IK set, you know, first day, and that's, that's what we achieved there. If you're trading a battle net. Of course, on single player, there's a... But anyway, GG guys. I will see you guys next time. Of course, with more awesome stuff. Remember, we have tons of insane D2 guides here on my YouTube. And of course, at maxroll.gg, the premier site for the best Diablo 2 information anywhere on the web. Of course, check all of that out. And uh, see you guys in more insane playthroughs. Fun coming soon. Dark humility over now. Let's get it.